Welcome everyone. Today we're doing some Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age. Doing a new, mega, new game minus run with watching all the cutscenes. I'm Madelon and I'm joined in commentary by Blue Harvey. Hello everyone. Uh, I will be providing, hopefully, a little bit of commentary today. Um, if my voice sounds a bit off, it's because I've been dealing with a flu the last couple of days. So, if you hear someone coughing, it's most likely going to be me. Yeah. Yeah. I guess without further ado, you ready? <clears throat> yes, uh, let's start the run in 3, 2, 1. Good luck! I hope you unbound the start button. Yes. <laughs> then we can actually get to enjoy the introduction. of these holy relics, I hereby pronounce you man and wife from this time forth. May the blessings of the gods light your path for all eternity. Farah. Stand little. Navodis has fallen. Impossible! My father? I know not. I am sorry. If Navodis has indeed fallen, it is only a matter of time before they reach the borders of Dalmasca. There is nothing to halt their advance. <sighs> Secure Nalvino with all haste. I will go. And I will go at his side. Galtea, stand watch over your life. That I be considered worthy.
Blessings of the Great Father descend, and guide your bodies return to the Earth. Great Father, guide your spirits return to the Mother of All. There you shall find peace. Far on. And that's how it all began. Yeah, quite the opening. Laheos Nebradia was but one of many tragedies to befall the kingdom of Dalmasca. The air of hope that had surrounded Her Royal Highness Princess Asha's wedding was now quite lost. Dalmasca had been set adrift at the mercy of history's restless tides. At this time, two great empires struggled for dominion over Ivalice. Arcadia in the east, Rosalia the west. The invasion of the kingdom of Nebradia was Arcadia's first step in its westward march. With Lord Rosla's beloved homeland consumed by the hellfires of war, it seemed clear that Arcadia would soon meet out a like fate to Dalmasca. The fall of the fortress at Nalbana told the destruction of the greater part of Dalmasca's forces. The counterattack was mounted by the order of the Knights of Dalmasca, ever brave and faithful. But against the martial might of the Arcadian armies, they stood little chance of victory. Indeed, their defeat was to be absolute. Soon thereafter, Arcadia came forward, offering terms of peace, or, as one might rather put it, terms of Dalmasca's surrender. Lord Romanos, King of Dalmasca, and my dear friend, had no choice but to accept these terms. It was, thus, only with reluctance that he set out for Nalbina Fortress, now under Arcadian occupation, to affix his seal to the Emperor's Treaty of Peace. The King had scarce departed his royal city of Rabanasta when the remnants of the Order made their return, and not a moment too soon. What a terrible revelation awaited them. The treaty would be signed with steel and writ in royal blood. You there. Can you hear me? <laughs> 
It's as I feared. They're slowing us down. Do not say that. Not all of us are here for love of battle. He fights to defend his homeland. Your name? Rex, sir. My name's Rex. Good. Rex. You bore a few cuts, but you are still whole. Well, can you stand? <clears throat> Think you can fight? I'm fine, sir. How old are you, Rex? Seventeen, sir. Young. Family? My I have a brother two years younger. younger. He's two years younger than I, living in Rabanaster. Almost. So young. You're barely old enough to be a man. You shouldn't be forced to wield a sword. No, sir. I want to fight. For my homeland. And for my parents. It's time, Bosch. Save the discussion for later. We must reach the king before they act, or all our efforts will be in vain. I'm aware of the situation. We found them! Over there! Bosler, go ahead. I will handle this rabble. Godspeed. Steady, Rex. Keep your wits about you and you'll make it. We move! About 12 minutes in, we are finally able to play the game. <clears throat> so first, we press R3 really quickly so we can uh, skip the <coughs> camera tutorial. Then Bosch is telling you the basic stuff of the game, as in how you can walk from point A to point B and how you can interact with people and doors or gates. Like very, very general stuff. You could say that the rec section of Final Fantasy XII is basically the tutorial on how to get used to controls, battles, and everything. Here is our first enemy, but uh, we are using strategies to uh, make this fight go by faster, and it's called fleeing. We just run past it, and uh, we're now already fighting our first Captain. boss fight. It is lagging a bit. It's yeah, fine. it is lagging. <laughs> At line, this is blah blah blah. After Bosch uses his technique called the quickening. Oh, Tomberry. She'll not hold much longer. We receive you, Tomberry. Oh. You've lived to retire. Well fought. My thanks, Antlion. Tomberry disengaging. I just realized I think that's the only time they mentioned Tomberry in this game. I'm actually going to quickly fix the thing with the. I think I have some idea of what might cause in the leg, so I'm just going to. Quickly fix that before we get more of that. Okay, for it. No. Oh well. I'll just have to oh, make wow. it too. Yeah. I usually don't have it. I think maybe because 
you're streaming, you're playing the game, streaming to Twitch and streaming on Discord at the same time? Yeah, probably that. Where are you? What if Captain Azalus has fallen? Don't talk such nonsense. Vosla's laughed in the face of death far too many times for him to stop now. Men like him don't die in places like this. We must make haste to reach the king. We will take him to safety. Is his majesty unharmed? He'll agree to an unconditional surrender. They wouldn't dare touch him until the wax on his seal is dry. But if we arrive after he signed the treaty... Wait. Quickly, Rex. Yeah, they have to make haste to war. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Does it also play like that? Yes. This is already what? on my end that it looks like that. Oh my god. Was it that bad before? No. Ever. Sir, we have little time. You must go to the king. I'll handle these. Fight well. Just a quick, quick couple of attacks to uh, get rid of the enemies, and then uh, that's that. Yeah. I think at some point we also still have to explain about the uh, times four speed up. Why oh, are yeah. things going um... so fast? <clears throat> The Zodiac Age introduces a mechanic which was not present in the original, um, which is called the speed-up mechanic. The speed-up mechanic in and of itself was in the international release, but funnily enough, the international release never came out outside of Japan. And uh, they reintroduced the speed-up mechanic here in the remaster as times 2 and times 4 speed, and because times 4 is faster than times 2, we're using times 4 basically whenever we can. Also, uh, uh, listen to Bosch's voice right now. Captain, why? Our king, what have you done? The king intended all along to sell Damasca to the Empire. His majesty was a traitor. Doesn't sound like Bosch, does it? Captain, I... Also, his facial structure is different. Well, so much for peaceful Peace negotiations. negotiations. We'll never surrender to you. We are not cattle to be sold by a traitor king. But the war is over, my dear captain. You have lost. Dalmasca is the property of the Empire now. And think, we intended to let you keep some of your sovereignty. Out of respect. But now you've gone and ruined that. Haven't you, Captain? We will never bow to you. And the people of Dalmasca will hate you for it. Take the captain away. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Pretenses of peace left by the wayside. The Arcadian forces resumed their advance toward Ravanasta. Dalmasca's doom had been decided. To make resistance would serve no end. With this foremost in my thoughts, I to the people of Dalmasca. Sons and daughters of Dalmasca, I bid you lay down your arms. Raise songs of prayer in their stead. Prayer for His Majesty, King Raminas, ever merciful, a man devoted wholly to peace. Prayer, too, for the noble Princess Ash, 
who, wrought with grief at her kingdom's defeat, has taken her own life. Know also that Captain Bosch von Ronsenberg, for incitement of sedition and the assassination of His Royal Majesty King Ramanas, has been found guilty of high treason and put to his death. They who at this late hour choose still the sword are cut of the same cloth as the captain. Traitors who would lead Dalmasca to her ruin. Dalmasca's surrender without terms was soon to follow. And that's how the Mosca is ruled by the Empire. Yes, and now over to the younger brother, Van. Vaughn! Hurry it up or they'll find us! Two, three, no, <sighs> time to clean cool. house. You keep an eye out for me up there, kites. One, two, three more. Time to clean house. Oops. Oh. It the rats here are kind of like an extension <laughs> of the tutorial. Yeah. But this time with Vaughn. With a little bit different of equipment. <clears throat> and wow, yeah. Vaughn, you got them all yourself? It's entirely wrong, but something big comes along. Hey, it's good practice for the desert. I'm ready for anything now. That's enough for today. You should get back to Miguel's place, Kites. Aren't you running errands for him? Oops, <laughs> totally forgot. You should come, Vaughn. He's busy today. Might have some work for you to do, too. I've got other, um, work to do. Hey, lock this place up for me, will you? If Miguel finds out we've been down here, he'll tan our hides. You haven't paid. What? Haven't paid? Someone has played this game many times. Your luck, Hedler. Yes, sir. You haven't paid, and I what? haven't paid. Oh, 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 second thought, please, sir, take it. It's a gift. Leave the poor sod be. We don't want trouble today. Your luck, peddler. Oops, sorry. What way you're going, churl? What? My pouch! It's gone! The boy! Get out the way! To these trying times that Vaughn has to go through, he's making a, a bit of side earnings by stealing from what they stole from them. I hope not every cutscene is going to... Yeah, I hope so too. I really don't like to like that. In worst case, I just have to go through the Twitch VOD. Yeah. Yours. You've been stealing again. What happens if they catch you? Okay, I, I think yeah. I think it's better if you uh, stop the Discord stream. I'll just yeah, this... push over uh, Twitch. I think it might be better. <clears throat> Yeah, and this, uh, we don't want this lag. Hope this helps. You're no good to anyone. I hope You're it does. Oh, what? Am I the leader now? Doesn't mean that you are under the lane now, but. That'll be it. Hey, it doesn't lag anymore. <laughs> Who could have thought? 
<laughs> no one as well as I do. Yeah. Hey, Apparently that was too much. Back. What do you think you're doing? I thought that this money was the people of Dalmasca's property. The Imperials stole it from us, so it's only fair that we take it back. It's our duty as Dalmascans. Well, wasn't that what you said? Yeah, but I never said anything about taking it back from me. This is for that bread you took the other day. Just because I help Miguel out every now and then, it doesn't mean that you get to eat for free too, you know. I know that. You think I like living like this? One of these days, I'll fly an airship of my own. I'll be a sky pirate, free to go where I will. Hmm. Well, be careful. You'll never fly anything if you're rotting in a dungeon. Hmm. Oh, Miguelo had some errands that need doing. He wanted you to drop by his place. It might be a good idea to lend a hand. So this is a new game minus run, so it might also be time to at some point start explaining what new game minus actually is. Ah, Vaughn, I was waiting. Pinello said you needed something? Um, had me some packages supposed to be arriving by courier. In the morning, uh, perhaps he ran into some trouble out in the desert. Now I've no foodstuffs to prepare for the banquet tonight. So you want me to find this courier? Hey, no problem. No problem, the desert teams are in trouble. I'd be sending you to early grave, my boy. No, I've arranged for some replacement goods from Tomage over at the Sand Sea. I was explaining and I was muted. Nice. Okay, yeah, to explain what New Gavitis is. New Gavitis on the PlayStation and Switch version is uh, locked behind the Trials mode. The Trials mode itself uh, is a quote-unquote challenge uh, of 100 stages back-to-back, -back, uh, trying to uh, see if you really are <clears throat> prepared to face the hardest of the hardest battles back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back -to -back -to -back. and you unlock New Game Minus at the end of it. But on PC, I can start New Game Plus, New Game Minus, or New Game right away. There you are. What New Game Minus actually does is you do not get any EXP from any game at all. This was a popular challenge back in 07 when the original game released. And yeah, this now became an actual mode in the game. Just not get any EXP in the playthrough of the game like that. And that's why on PS2 the category is called 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, because that's the lowest level we can possibly achieve. Yeah, so it's essentially a low level run, but without having to jump through hoops on how to remain low level, the game mode takes care of that. I put up a bill, offer a reward to anyone who can knock that nasty back in its place. Now that's work. Sounds ten times better than running errands for Miguelo. That's right. Vaughn, you should give it a shot. And you should be getting back to Miguelo. Now, Kites. He was waiting for you. Oh, right, right. I forgot how long it takes to beat Rogue Tomato when you watch the cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> the cutscenes do take time, yeah. Yeah, like almost 40 minutes to get to Rogue Tomato. And here we're introduced to the hunt system, but because this being a any percent esque kind of run, we're not doing. Or wait, are you doing? A... I'm doing text around. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we are doing one extra hunt outside of Rock Tomato, which is going to be text and um, 
Dexterra will unlock a couple of goodies that otherwise would be locked behind... <clears throat> well, locked behind hunts you have to do. And, uh, yeah, the hunt system is basically a system where you have to talk to a petitioner, he's like, hey, look at this beast, uh, I want you to slay it, and when you come back to it, you told me that you've slayed it. Then, uh, I will give you a reward. Yeah, and we never get the rewards. We do. Like, there's two obligatory hunts we have to do anyway. And then there's the text around we take optionally, and we don't even do it for the rewards. Are you not even going to take the uh, teleport stone from Tomaj for uh, Rogue Tomato? We get plenty of teleport stones from jellies. That's a fair argument. Yeah, this one is obligatory to do. First on the Rogue Tomato. And now we're getting to the Eastern Sand, the first, I, I guess, first time we're in a hostile territory. I mean, we were <clears throat> in a Garam Safe waterway before, but uh, since it was more of a tutorial area, I would say Eastern Sand is more like the proper first hostile area of the game. And uh, yeah, three hits. You could drop Tomato down, and uh, it should be around another three extra hits to uh, finish off Rogue Tomato. And that is that. Rogue Tomato is luckily in this version even less of an issue than in than in the original PS2 release because of the dagger just dealing more damage than a regular Mithril Sword. Never thought I'd see him yeah, the thing, the most the thing that can go wrong is if you draw too much attention from the wolves, and if you're greedy and not throw a safety potion, then you can die by wolves. This will make a nice souvenir. Time to call it a day. A big problem can also be if uh, Rogue Tomato just loves to ram you all the time, which is an instant attack. So there is no charge time when the enemy has an instant attack, so they can do it over and over and over and over again without any pause. Now what? Huh? Open the gate. All right, out the way. Wait a second. How come you let these chocobos through the gate and not us? What of it? This is a pedigreed parader, boy. Cost tens of thousands of gil, this one did. A prettier price than a hundred of you provincials would fetch. <sighs> Keep your distance. We don't want the chocobo sticking a peasant. <laughs> What'd you say? Step aside. <sighs> right then, move them in. Well. <sighs> that does it. Ho ho ho, a fine, fine chocobo you have there. Yes, uh, see the down stock, if I'm not mistaken. Change the soil, change the chocobo, am I right? Yes, yes, different style. Fun fact for those who didn't know, Megello is voiced by John Vimaggio, who also voices Waka in FF10, Kimari also in FF10, uh, who also voices Heidegger in Seven Remake, and in my opinion, most importantly, he voices Gilgamesh in FF12 as well. You let these carts through them and close this gate is ordered. The males choked with this sand. Don't give me a scare like that. <laughs> You're lucky that ended where it did. Right, now's our chance to go through. Ah, the ceremony will be starting soon. I'd best be hurrying. 
Okay, well... <sighs> Vaughn, wait! What is it? Vaughn! I give you your new consul, His Imperial Highness Lord Vane Solidor, Commandant of the Arcadian Empire's Western Arm... Your Excellency! People of Rabanaster, is it with hatred you look upon your consul? With hatred you look upon the Empire. Spit on your empire. Spit back to Arcadia. There was little point in asking. But know this. I harbor no idle hopes of frustrating that hatred. Nor shall I ask your fealty. That is the due of your fallen king, and rightly so. King Ramanas loved his people. Strove to bring you peace. His was a rule worthy of your devotion. Even now, he remains among you, protecting you. His ardor for the peace and will of Dalmasca falters not. I would ask only that you do your king honor. Together, let us embrace the peace his majesty would surely desire. Two years now divide us from war's bitter end, yet still its shadow looms over all, Stifling the infant peace, a pall only you may cast off. Achieve but this one thing, and your hatred of me and of the Empire will grieve me not. I will stand fast. I will endure your hatred, suffer your slings and arrows. I will defend Dalmasca. Here I will pay my debt. I swear it now. Though King Ramanas and Lady Ash be gone, they stand ever at the side of their people. In honoring peace, you do honor to their memory and to Dalmasca. What I ask, I ask plain. My hopes now rest with you. Quite a speech. There is a reason why I started loving the English language after I played this game as a kid. <laughs> Localization is top tier. Oh yeah, fun fact. Uh, it is magnificent. This game is now Take so old. For instance. People who were born on the day the game released are now considered adults. <laughs> I, I just want to make you feel old. <laughs> the patron of this evening's banquet, may it please your excellency. I am the gallo, your highness. Uh, it is truly a profound honor to uh, make the acquaintance of our uh, future Emperor Highness. The people of Rabinasta join me in welcoming That's you. That's enough of Highness. Though indeed I am our Emperor's son, I am no prince. Arcadia's Emperor is freely chosen by her people. I am but an elected official and nothing more. I... I meant no disrespect. Now that I think on it, I would not have you address me as Lord Consul, for that matter. No? Henceforth, I am a citizen of Rabanaster. Why don't you call me Vane? 
I could not. That would not be right. You are overly fond of formalities. I've just the remedy for that. Tonight you will join me, and we shall drink until you call me by name. Mm. How can he stand about to him like that? Fawn, you just do not get it, do you? He's not doing it because he wants to. You know what would happen if he didn't. I know, it's just... So, what would you do different? I don't know. Well... I'd do something. Vaughn. Vaughn! You haven't heard a single word I've said, have you? This place has changed so much. It's like it's not even Rabinaster anymore. Like the Empire is swallowing it whole. Hey, Penel, that fate tonight. You think they'll let us in? Are you crazy? It's in the palace, and we don't have an invitation, if you hadn't noticed. So, how are we getting in? As if I'd know. Why not ask Magello to get you in? Or go see old Dallin in Lowtown? Why the sudden interest, Vaughn? I told you. I'm going to take back what's ours. Give back to Dalmasca. Come on. What do you think? If I find something, and it fetches a good price, how about I, uh, I buy you all dinner? Oh, please. You know as well as I do the first thing you'd buy is an airship. All hail Vaughn, Sky Pirate of Damasca. It's got a nice ring to it. Stay out of trouble. Hmm. An airship. I don't know. Maybe. But not through Magello. Time to pay old Dallin a visit. Or shadowing. We have to get our clan membership. <clears throat> oh yeah, since we're right here. You can go uh, talk to this banger to get the allowance to enter the clan hall. And once you talk to Mont Blanc, you're a part of the clan Centurio. Yes, which we do to get access to the clan professional. Shop. And members exactly. only shop. And we're doing this now because we were in the neighborhood anyway. I guess you're also getting text turn now, or are you doing that later? Later. When you get both here in front. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so now on the way to Lowtown. This is the shortest way to, to Old Talon's place. To uh, continue the story. If it isn't Van Ratsbane, come for a tip on how to secure something bigger and in armor by the East Gate? What? You already heard about that? Wise I may not be, but well informed I am. They'll get what's coming to them someday, believe me. But that's not why I'm here. Do tell. I want to know how to sneak into the palace. They've got to have some great stuff in there. Thought I'd partake. <laughs> Not one do mince words, are you, boy? The Empire protects all that's hers, and that means the palace and all the treasures inside. That's why I'm gonna do it. To take back what's ours. So, our champion of the sewers aspires to noble action. Admirable. Perhaps I can help you. Ah, now that I think on it, there was a rumor. Yes, a secret passageway into the palace walls. A door and a magic stone that opens the way. That's it. This is exactly why I came to talk to you first, Alan. So where's this uh, magic stone? Uh, oh, I've 
kept it for years if I can remember where I've tucked it away. And then he tells us that we should be getting a sunstone. But that's all we'll do next. Okay, place your bets. Will it be a 2 crystal, a 3 crystal, or a 4 crystal? For those who are uninitiated with the Final Fantasy XII speedrun, the Sunstone has to be charged. <clears throat> uh, but before it becomes a Sunstone, it's actually a Shadow Stone. And those charges are, or those, that energy that the Shadow Stone gets to become a Sunstone, is from. Uh, objects called obsidians, but uh, which is called crystals to make it easier for us. And there's a twenty five uh, chance between twenty five percent. Uh, what am I saying? You can get between twenty five percent and fifty five percent charge on each stone. If you get uh, not enough charge, you have to get you have to go to four of those crystals. If you get 50% or more on both, you only have to go to two. Also, there's a question in chat about having all the equipment for previous playthroughs. No, not at all. You don't have uh, anything. On, on NG minus, nothing carries over. And on NG+, Plus, it only carries over if you're on Switch, and maybe if you're on Xbox? On NG+, Plus. I'm not sure about Xbox, I only know about the Switch version, since that's the only one uh, I own. Well, I do own the Xbox version, but I don't want to open it. <laughs> or should I say, I don't want to cram out my Xbox One S that I have lying somewhere. That I'm not really playing anyway. So yeah, now we're going to the trials to get the uh, diamond armlet. <clears throat> so the tr first trial stage in this uh, trial has an item called the diamond armlet. The diamond armlet is a really good item to uh, get better stuff out of uh, chests. You can get more high-value items. And it also, in Zodiac Age, has the chance to make you immune to any lightning damage. However, you don't need them for neither. At least, I don't think we need them for either here. This one is just to sell. Yeah, so we're just going to sell it to get 6k 6 gil. And with that... Most of the money, if not all, is going for Phoenix Downs that will be used to farm a rare game enemy called Dustia afterwards. And yeah, in a second or two, we'll see what the crystal charge is going to be like. Let's hope it's above 45%. Yeah. Also, to go back to the question a little bit, we won't get, be able to get Sighting Grab. That's not the thing that you can easily do on PC. And yeah, no equipment from previous playthroughs, so maybe the real question is what is new game minus? It means we can't level up, we are at the lowest level the entire run. It's a low level run. I, I might have to correct you there. Uh, it is easily uh, possible to get a sight and grad, however, you have to use programs which are not really allowed for runs. Because it lets you read the memory of the game directly, and that's not something that is allowed. Yeah, it's not doable in the speed run with, because you need to read memory. Okay, through crystal it is. I mean, I'll take that over a four crystal any day. Yes. I would have believed that there's a 4 crystal for marathon luck. But it's 3 crystals, so that's like average.
thing is with Sightengrad, if you want to get lucky to get them, you first have to go there. And just going there without even knowing if you can get them or not would be a waste of time. So we're not even going there. So yeah, uh, now stuff is being sold and dark is being bought. Wait, do you not buy Phoenix Downs? No, oh, I would I need Phoenix Downs. Oh, right, duh. We're not grinding levels, we can't. Yeah, for some reason I was like, oh yeah, I know you can't uh, gain any uh, levels, but you can use the license points and the money. <laughs> There's way better ways to get license points and money in this uh, version of the game. <laughs> it's been a long time since we did anything together. Too long. I had a really good time. Now, for license points, trials is by far the way, best way to get license points. Actually, I was kind of supposed to be watching the place for Magello. And Vaughn? You don't have to take the Skyfarer. You have to go to the Aerodrome uh, to get to Pujerba. But you'd never have to take the Sky Ferry because you go to Pujerba via the Stroll okay. and not with the Sky Ferry. See you later. Sorry, Pinello. Now you'll be wanting to know how to sneak into the palace, eh? First you go to Storehouse 5. You know the one. Two doors she has. Now the right takes Ban Ratsbane to his territorial hunting grounds in the sewer bottom. But that's not the way you'll go. No, you'll take the left door down into the Garam Scythe waterway. The waterway leads to a stair. The stair to the palace cellars. That's your way in. But don't go counting your gill just yet, my boy. Getting into the palace was the easy part. The way into the treasury is carefully hidden. That's where this crescent stone comes in. The magics it bears can open the hidden door to the treasury, you see. Listen, Vaughn, for the words I shall speak are most important, and not to be forgotten. Do you understand? The signet yearns for sunstone strength to light the clouded way. Once in the palace, you'll find the signet tile, very important. Give to it the sun's power, and it will light your path. Very well. Oh, a warning. Be aware that if you're caught, you'll spend the rest of your short life rotting in the Nalbina dungeons. So, look sharp, my boy. And don't go running off before you're ready. Plans freshly hatched have a habit of tumbling from the nest straight into the hunter's stew pot. <laughs> Let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Stars, three through six are in place. They stand ready. So far, the Imperials haven't noticed a thing. Then go now and hurry the others. By nightfall, we must ensure all our men are in place. Sir. Sir. Oh, Captain Azulas. What a delight. And who could this be? Oh. Well, we will see we'll soon enough. Eat. Making our way to Storehouse 5 into... <clears throat> into the left door. Or to the left door. Taking the door will lead us, as Talon promised us, to the Garamsythe waterway.
How often have you accidentally pressed the start button? Not yet. I have unbound it to make sure, but it's, okay. it's going well. Okay, good. Good, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, you'll see a lot that when there's areas with enemies, we'll just flip past them. Exactly. I gotta say, that was... Um... That's a terribly short passage for Ravenaster Palace. I gotta say, the security team for Ravenaster Palace is a uh, <laughs> hella bad. I mean, who would left their door open to something as important as this? I get to see a glimpse of Buffy and friend already. The characters are quite like. Reja, what else does a pirate want? Oh, fear our beloved. I think, uh... I think every single person on this planet just likes Balthier. Balthier's great. Fun fact. Fun fact. Uh, Balthier in the Japanese version is voiced by the voice actor. I sadly don't know his name, but it's the same voice actor as uh, Sanji from uh, One Piece. And, uh. Find a different. If you know how Sanji is like in One Piece. Yep. And explain about, about the Hey Buckethead minigame. Oh yeah, uh... <clears throat> this is quite a... I, I would say quite a well-known uh, minigame. Because you're running around trying to get the attention of these Imperial, imperial soldiers. I'm telling them, hey, look, I'm over here. Um, and one of the lines that Vaughn says... Or should I say, Vaughn has three lines. One of them is, hello. The other is over here. over here, and the third and most important one is Hey Buckethead. Uh, it's kind of like a running gag in the community to say that the more we hear Hey Buckethead, the more, I don't know, kind of like good karma you have, or good RNG you get. This run is not like blessed at all. <laughs> hmm? Not a blessed run. Well, it's a marathon run. I, mean, I would have you like seen, to get at least seen... one hay bucket head. <laughs> have you seen a marathon run with good RNG before? <laughs> like, let's be honest. Yeah. Good RNG and Final Fantasy XII are like antonyms. But this it doesn't even help the run to get hay bucket head. Like. Why don't it, could they just give us a four crystal and then at least let us hear a hey bucket that? Maybe you will get a bush fireless fireman. I mean, on new game minus, I don't think so. Yeah, I was about to say I don't think that's really possible, but one can one can think positive for one, right? Yeah, uh, we're too low level for that. Oh, quite a performance. Who are you? I play the leading man. Who else? Fran, the Magicide. Now then, I'll take that. No, you won't. I found it. It's mine. And then when I take it from you, it'll be mine.
Exit stage right. The gods do not smile on us. I like it better that way. Vaughn stole the thing that he really wanted, uh, which is uh, something that uh, the, uh, the Empire really wants. And he now stole them from from the Empire. And he's now trying to flee, but with the Empire and both here and from close behind him, trying to take back the treasure. Well, the Empire doesn't know that yet. And it seems like the feat has turned into a fine, bloody banquet. Free, eh? And once more, they are they are at war. Impeccable timing. If I didn't know better, I'd say they were waiting all along. Stop running! End of the line. You have something that belongs to me. Damn! Go this way! Fran, let's move! <laughs> Off with you! It might be embarrassing to admit this, but I never until now realized that the Vaughn in this cutscene, in the hand that's closer to the, like, fly thing, he's holding the goddess magic side. I never noticed that before. I never noticed that before. Not many Viera where you come from, thief. It's Vaughn. Sorry. Are you getting the extra cutscene? Well... Talking to the uh, guards lying on the ground in the water. Oh, is there an extra cutscene here? Yep, there's an extra cutscene that you uh, normally never get to see unless you interact with the guards at the gr uh, on the ground, which are in the water. Can do it. I don't know if you've seen that before, but both here is like ah. Uh, Insurgents, um, if there's a battle aw uh, awaiting us at the end of this dungeon, it best have a change of wardrobe or something like that. It's a, I think it's a really like interesting, just a tiny bit of extra stuff that you can easily just run past, especially because we never see it in runs. We can do it for marathon run's sake. I mean, it's it's a cutscene for certain run. I, in every cutscene percent run I did, I always uh, watched that cutscene because I thought, hey, it's a cutscene percent run and it's a cutscene, so well, I have to watch the cutscene. Yes, makes sense. Okay, uh, while we're <laughs> waiting for um, the cutscene to happen, Bothier is currently explaining the Gambit system, which is basically a way to tell your characters, hey, if this con condition happens, execute this action. So if someone is familiar with programming a little bit, it's basically programming, if statements, if so to say. So at the first you have, oh, if there is an enemy that is uh, the nearest visible, you attack. Okay, uh, so you just have a thingy? lot of if statements. Hmm? I'll just do the menu first, I guess. But I need okay. to know where the... Uh... Uh, they're right there.
Yeah, we set up the gambits to throw potions on those below 30% HP. Okay, stay healthy and otherwise we attack the foe with the highest level. Or is there... Do I need to go back? Where is it? Oh, the, those it's, in ones. The area, it's in the area where uh, you get the gamble the explanation. Take advantage of a lax watch at the palace while the fate's on. To feed the good consul a length of steel for his supper. I should think Vane used to such hospitality. Clever. He used himself as the bait to draw them near and then sent in the air brigade. A fine bloody banquet. Hmm. I dare say I've soiled my cuffs. If a dungeon's waiting for us at the end of the night, it had best have a change of wardrobe. Okay. There we go, our cutscene. Then I kill a few enemies on the way for the license points. So, we cannot get experience, so we cannot level up, but we can still get license points for the license board, which I also need to explain at some point what that is. So the license board in uh, this game <coughs> is basically the way you uh, make your characters better in terms of equipment or allowance of equipment and stats. Uh, and spells. For every for every spell and equipment piece you have, you need to, or, or except there are very few exceptions, but for almost every equipment piece that this game has, you need to have a license. And if you don't have the license unlocked, you cannot wear that piece of equipment. At the same time, you have certain argument licenses, for instance, HP ups or magic lowers or stuff like that, that just <clears throat> makes your character better for uh, for combat and not just piece of equipment. Yeah, so, so and question with license... again. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a question with... again in chat what this new game minus. So, yeah, we are cannot level up, so level... Uh, yeah, it's not exactly level 1 because some characters are slightly lower, higher level than level 1 already. But it's the lowest possible level run. Yeah, Vaughn is level 1, Bosch and Fron are level 2, Bosch, Ash and Penelo are level 3, and the guests... Uh, come in at a uh, come based off of those levels. What's your name? Amalia. But yeah, I believe I was interrupting Amalia. you on the license nice stuff. To meet you. There were others with me. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, the licenses are just uh, there to uh, oh, develop your characters outside of uh, them leveling up. I'm afraid the jury's still out on that one. You stole that? And uh, yeah. every enemy has like a have license finished? point attached to it. I, I think there are no enemies ready. per se that don't have license us. points attached to them. I think every enemy has. Very the well. only characters that you can kill and get EXP without license points are, I think, NPC Seeks and Ravanaster Guards. Those don't have LP, but they do give What's EXP that? for some reason. But they're not considered enemies. The situation so yeah, requires you can get a uh, uh, license point find. basically from any, every enemy, and uh, yeah. I shall accompany you until we find my companion. That's how you grind your characters into a better state, other than leveling up. That's your main way of uh, increasing your character's chances of survival in a run where you cannot level up. Speaking of new stuff, something new that is already th uh, that is thrown our way again right now is something that is called a guest. Yes, that then cure. Well, what are we Helpful. So a guest character is in the original it was a character that you cannot control, but as of IZJS and TZA, you can control them. You can even change their gambits. 
but you cannot change their equipment and you cannot license anything on them. Yep, and now we make use again for the separate game option that this version has with the trial mode. This gives a lot of uh, license points, which is the main reason why we do this now. We'll get Dark and Van. I oh, actually get to see the license board. No, 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 no! I hope I didn't miss too much license points there because Van's license point requirements are somewhat tight. I think you're okay. I don't think I saw any Captoid <coughs> dying during that dark cast. Yeah, that's probably fine. Worst case, we'll have to do more trials. But maybe also explain it about... Oh well, in this fight we'll also use Dark, maybe we should say something about that. Well, basically... So Dark, yeah. Yeah, so dark is, a little, is a change that they introduced in the IZJS version. You're not supposed to get Dark in the original until <clears throat> quite a bit later. And Dark is the first area of effect uh, spell that you can get. Meaning any enemy that is in the area of effect where you cast that spell, <coughs> those uh, enemies will be affected by the Dark spell. And this is extremely useful early on, because you're usually just getting attacked by a bunch of really annoying enemies that have not too much HP, but they're there in like a group so being able to get like four or five enemies down and reduce half of their hp with like one cast is extremely powerful this early on so that's why we chose to use dark because Dark is not only an AoE attack, but it's also a really strong one for that early on. Yeah. Although New Game Minus Good. means we don't have much MP, so we cannot get as much Dark Vest as you would get in a regular any percent runs. We also only have one Dark Vest at the moment. Touch the crystal again soon, so it doesn't really matter that uh, we have a character down. I mean, you're not doing anything licenses related, so it doesn't really matter. So, and now we're on to our first actual non-tutorial boss. And this boss is called Firemane. Firemane has a really specific quirk to it where if you're going to fight the boss in the water, Fireman actually takes more damage than if you actually take it outside of the water. So one of the strategies that we utilize in the speedruns that we fight Fireman, we're actually fighting Fireman inside the water for the extra damage output. 
I think it's mostly that fire deals less damage in water, so we take less damage. If I recall correctly. Also, one other awful thing uh, about Firemain is that Firemain loves to teleport, which is really annoying for any attack that you want to land. Because anytime Firemain teleports, you just don't deal damage during the teleportation. All your damage is getting null. Also, I'm constantly running circles because that way I regenerate MP a little bit. We want fall alive for this. Once you are really close to killing Firemain and you know Firemain just does not want to go back to the water, I think it's just better to... Most of us just decide to, okay, if we just don't want to decide to come back to the water, we'll just go to the land and finish off there. Even though it's a bit riskier, or a bit more annoying. Mm -hmm. But, uh... You stand where you are. Sometimes it's the best thing to do, because Fireman just really does not want to go back to the water. Now's not the time. Yeah, I also really wanted to revive them, um, because... License, bosses can get quite a bit of give get quite a bit of license point as well. I don't want to miss them on farm right now. They think me some common thief. Better than a common assassin. These people have done nothing. Release them. What are you doing? Don't interrupt me. I'm thinking. Uh, uh. Wait! Where did you he didn't know what he was going? doing. You have to let him go. You have to. Pinello. Sorry. That dinner will have to wait. I told you. That's enough. Uh. Leave him alone. Uh. Hold on to this for me, would you? Just until I bring Van back. On your feet, you, Aria. All right, all right. Edgy, aren't we? It's poor fear, my brother. What does that Philander think he's doing? I was to kill Balthier, not those other painted Imperials. Fun fact, the guy I just heard had like this really scratchy voice. Um, this character is voiced by uh, Steve Blum. Steve Blum voiced Vincent uh, in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children and Church of Cerberus. Remember? The King. Did you? Were you really a part of it? Even if... Even if you were... Captain Bosch must have tricked you into it. You're awake. 
where are we? Prison, where else? More a dungeon, but it's really all the same. It's just a corpse. Jump at every little thing down here and you'll wear yourself out. <sighs> it's not even a proper dungeon. They just sealed off the bottom level of the fortress. Take a look around. We're not the first they've thrown down here. Where's Fran? She's off trying to find us a way out. Remember what curiosity killed? Just a friendly word of advice. This is all the water we've got. I'd save your strength if I were you. Now we're in another fortress with not that many screens, luckily. So in Albana fortress, there are two things: escaping and fighting um, three seeks, Dagwiza, Galido, and Witch, which is what we're about to do here after the cutscene here. Um, mm. uh, I guess it's just using dark and uh, regular attacks. And after that, they should be done for. And um, after that is done, Madal was getting the equipment back that was lost or taken away from the party. And after the equipment is back where it belongs, I'm sorry, <laughs> all it says was these. No, it's just these are coming. Uh, yeah. And after the uh, equipment is re to, uh, returned to its rightful order, he was defenseless. The dungeon will be fled in a different kind of way than expected. Yeah, this will be a, quite a quick fight because Dark works well. This is no dungeon, this is a sty. I said you're the one that stinks, Hamshanks. Hear me now? <sighs> you're right, Vaughn. And that was the fight.
Great. They just don't give up, do they? Now is looking like a good time for us to leave. Through the oubliette, there's a way out. Only... Only you sense the mist. Then we need weapons. What did you call me? Say that again. What? You couldn't hear? I merely said that a lot of you are incompetent fools. If you've the Sky Pirate in your hands, where is he? You'd have done better, Bagamnon. By your own words, it was the Imperial Army who caught this Sky Pirate of yours. We'd done your job for you. We don't require the assistance of filthy head hunters. The Empire will restore order here. Eh? What's that you say now? Maybe I'll wet my blade on you before I kill Bathir. That's enough, Bagamnon. <sighs> A judge. Judge? Hmm. The self-proclaimed guardians of law and order in Arcadia. They're the elite guard of House Solidor, which effectively makes them the commanders of the Imperial Army. If you ask me, they're more executioners than judges. Not a friendly lot, at any rate. What are they doing here? The Emperor is willing to overlook race for his more talented servants. However, those that do not show respect will receive none in kind. Your Honor! You travel freely through our lands because the Emperor wills it. Am I correct? <sighs> Where is the Captain? We have him in solitary, Your Honor. We're ready to begin our interrogation. This does not concern you, Bounty Hunter. Oh, he's in here somewhere. Find him! Wanji, that way! He's <sighs> going this way! Uh, what's that? Spoiler Time for the hare to follow the fox. Oh, God. Huh? The magic's binding the door to the Obliette are quite strong. Too strong even for my talents. That's why we'll get them to open it for us. How is going deeper into this What's place? What's wrong? You don't trust her. Fiera's noses are sharp. If she says there's a way out, there's a way out. Look. Ah, the prison repository of rested relics and raiments. So, our things are in here? That's what I said. <sighs> Get our stuff back. I don't know what it is about the line. Ah, the prison repository of rested relics and railments. I, I don't know why, I just love that for some reason. Or, or should I say that... It now, and he, uh, Vaughn then asks, oh, so our things are, here, are in here, and Bothers just like, that's what I said. Yeah, I don't know, I, I, just, I, just, I just, I just like that for some reason. That's what I said. Ophir's <laughs> way of speaking is quite nice. It's so good. Also, I just put a battle bit of speed on slow. So, why slow? So button speed slow is used to uh, basically just run through everything, because on button speed slow, everyone else will charge or attack way slower, which is definitely something that will be used in a low level speed run, as we don't want enemies to attack us less, f or because we want enemies to attack us less frequently or as little as possible, and the slower the battle speed, the slower the 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 charge time for enemies attacks are yeah indeed you can just 
flee past more easily if bad pace speed is slow because it also slowed out enemies. And on when we actually do combat, we prefer to have it on fast to speed things up. But this is quite a dangerous area that we'll be fleeing through, so I definitely want to have it on slow here. You've grown very thin, Bosh. Less than a shadow. Less You've than a man. Very thin, Bosh. Sentenced to death and yet you live? Why? Less than a shadow. Less than a man. Sentenced to death and yet you live? Why? To silence Hondor. How many times must I say it? Is that all? Why not ask Vane himself? Is he not one of your masters? <sighs> We've caught a leader of the insurgents. She's being brought from Rabinasta, the woman, Amalia. Huh? Who could that be? <sighs> Such a faithful hound to cling so to a fallen kingdom. Better than throwing it away. Throwing it away, as you threw away our homeland. Who's there? This the place. The mist is flowing through this room. It must be going somewhere. Hmm. You, you're no Imperials. Please, you must get me out. It's against my policy to speak with the dead, especially when they happen to be Kingslayers. I did not kill him. Is that so? Huh. Glad to hear it. Please, get me out. For the sake of Delmasca. Delmasca? What do you care about Delmasca? Everything that's happened is because of you! Everyone that's died, every single one, even my brother. You killed my brother! Quiet! The gods will hear. I'm dropping it. Pirates without a sky. Spare us your quiddities. Yeah, but but he's a... A traitor, I know. Stay here and fight if you want. If you can walk, let's go. You're taking him with us? We could use another sword arm. And you have it. Some money. Oh, and now we enter the Garheim Passage. And before a lot of stuff happens in Barn Passage, uh, a chest will be picked up with 2.5k gil in it. And the first thing we'll have to do is we have to touch the power relay. Then Balthier will be like, oh hey, uh, there's no electricity. <clears throat> Uh, if we could switch this on, the entire place would have electricity again. So we talk to Barak, which is the vendor in this place, and he will give us uh, an item that will fix uh, the power relay. So we turn on the power relay again, and then use the switch to open the gate so we can proceed to the next area. Hey, who 
turn out the lights? One of those? I've heard of these. Mimics. They disguise themselves as all manner of things, then strike when you're least wary. Some of them have a fondness for energy, I'm told. They gorge themselves on the stuff till there's naught left. So, um, what happens then? Lights out, and it's worse in the dark. Much worse. So, let them get too close to one of those conduits, and they'll suck it dry. But don't worry. It'll give the energy back if you ask nicely. Sticking it with a sword helps too. Clock's ticking. It seems nicely explains already a bit about the energy and that you can kill mimics to get it back. Yeah, basically the mimics just draw out the powers and to get the power back we're just defeating the mix. But as you can see, we're not defeating anything at the moment because it does take quite a bit to uh, defeat these enemies. And uh, we only have to, in theory, defeat one battery mimic. All we gotta do is make sure that we have enough charge to uh, switch one lever. I hope we have 30% because that's what we need and we get 53, that's really good. We have to get 50, uh, uh, 30% the very minimum to uh, switch this gate switch board to open a gate that will uh, lead us into the deeper parts of Barheim passage. And uh, looks like we got some good RNG with 53%. Ah, the Vaughn dying is not very good. But uh should still be able to uh, get through the rest without any problems. Yeah, as long as you make it to the next crystal, it's fine. But this is, can be a dangerous area to, to flee past, to take quite a bit of damage. Yeah, there is a bunch of enemies here. Yeah, and we're at the lowest level without any extra defenses right now, so... Nice moves there, Captain. You mean traitor? So they say. But I didn't see him kill anyone. My brother did. Uh, Rex. He said he had a brother two years younger. I see. He meant you. Your brother. What became of... He's dead. I'm sorry. It was you who killed him. I give you my word. That was not the way of it. Rex, sir. My name's Rex. Rex. That's all I have left, sir. He's two years younger than I. It's time, Bunch. Save the discussion for later. We found them! But if we arrive after he signed the treaty... Sir, we have no, little sir. time. You must I go to the tank. They're slowing us down. Captain and for these. my parents. Captain, why? Our king, what have you done? His majesty was a traitor. A twin brother. Fancy that. Hmm. But still, the pieces fit, I'll give you that much. And he did look like you. Yeah. It's actually giving the excuse I of... You. I didn't kill the king, it was my it twin was... brother who just looks like me. It and this time it's actually best. correct. I am sorry. My brother, he trusted you. He trusted you and he lost everything. How can I believe you? Not me, then. Believe in your brother. He was a fine soldier. He fought to the last to protect his homeland. Now, surely he fought to protect his brother. You don't know anything! Believe what you want to, whatever it takes to make you happy. What's done is done.
And with that, the cutscenes are over, and <clears throat> Adelon is on the way to defeat the next boss. I'm not entirely sure if you have enough MP to get rid of the tiny mimics that Mimic Queen spawns. Well, one poison spawn short. Yeah. Just killing one enemy then. That doesn't help. Oh, uh, that's a bunch of butter in the mix. Oops. Yeah, should have probably checked on the way already. It's fine. We got our one process <laughs> point that I was still missing to get a diamond armlet. This time we'll actually be equipping the diamond armlet because. It makes immune to thunder damage. And guess what kind of damage the next boss does? If your guess was thunder damage, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, so Van will be the one that we keep close to the enemy. And because he's immune to thunder damage, he's immune to almost anything the boss does. Except Ground Shaker, I think. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, when Ground Shaker happens, we need to throw a potion and then... We shouldn't be uh, dying. Oh, Front died, that's a bit unfortunate. Should be fine. I forgot that Mimic Queen can cast Shockstorm this early if you have 0% charge. And other shock storm, oh god. Yeah, and again, I try to run circles as much as possible to get as much dark dust as possible. Yeah, it's normal to get more cinematics attacks in, in the New Game Minus version of the fight. The best I've had is only one cinematic attack, but usually it's more. I don't think I've ever. That's like four shock storms. I don't think I've ever seen four shock storms in like the same fight before. <laughs> We're getting a lot today. World. Yeah, from that quite like, quickly. So. That is actually absurd. Oh, ground shaker. That's that's the one I'm scared of the most in any run because that one actually deals quite a lot of damage. Yeah, but Almost it won't kill from more. full HP, and after that, one of the others should throw a potion because the gambit says so. And uh, that's Mimi Queen. Also, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I, I do believe that uh, Mimi Queen and Omega have the same sound effects. Maybe that's just me. But I always thought Omega and Mimi Queen have the same sound effects. Pretty similar designed enemies, so I wouldn't be surprised. To think Dalmascan air could taste. Now, this is a cutscene I know. Where are we? There's one I can't even skip if I wanted to. Let's back to Ravenmaster before we Quickly, bind start again. Maybe you can skip yes. it now. The hour of my return <laughs> is already over late. The people may hate me, but that does not free me of my charge. The people may hate me, but that does not free me of my charge. I think we've seen that once or twice before. <laughs> so, let's back to Robin Aster. We'll actually do to the teleport, storm, teleport stone here, which not only is a quick way to go about it, but it's also nice to have the location already. Because we will be teleporting here towards here later on as well. Like this in about four hours, I would say. I thank you. Yeah. These brownish crystals are the ones you can use for teleporting, and you need to have touched them before if you, before you are allowed to do that. 
Fates will, we meet again. I would pay my respects to your brother. You're a fugitive now too. Stay low for a while. What about the stone? Do as you like. That stone's ill-favored. We feel regret. We sought that stone and found ourselves only worry. You offering it? It's mine. Then why'd you ask? Our regards to your girl. We stay in Rabanaster a while. What do you think? Can I trust Bosch? I gotta get rid of this thing. But maybe I should show it to Pinello first, so she knows I got something. She'd be at Miguel's place this time of day. Well, well, look who we have here. Heard you were sent off to Nalpina. And I got out of there as fast as I could. But it was all worth it, Dallin. Here, look at this. My, 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 quite a treasure you've got there. Well, you know, I couldn't have done it without your help. So, there is more to this gutter churl than first meets the eye. Van Ivanaren, a simple favor to beg of you. I was going to ask that kites to go, but I should think that you ought to do. No. No, I think you're just the one. There's a fellow by the name of Azalas, and I need you to bring this sword to him. That's... that's a sword of the old order. Speak my name when you arrive. That should be enough to get you in to see him. I've made a note on your map showing you where he can be found. Mind you, you are to deliver the sword to him personally. I will. Okay, hey, we're on sword delivery business now. And so it is done. But will it be enough to remind him of what the Order once meant? Then what do you make of Andor's proclamation? Are you suggesting they fooled even the Marquis? What if a judge killed the king, not the captain? That would explain everything, wouldn't it? In that case, the captain would be brother to a judge. How are we to trust such a man? Huh? Now there is the Bosch that I remember. Then will you fight again at my side? His word alone convinces me of nothing. I'd take his word over that of a mouthpiece Marquis. Then you name Rex liar with him. My brother was no liar! <sighs> Just the opposite. Rex was the witness they needed. They had to make it appear as if I killed the king. Rex bears no blame. The fates have willed it. So this is Rex's brother. <sighs> Your words may convince a child such as this, but they weigh far too lightly on the scales for my taste. Our paths will remain separate. Do you not think Amalia worth saving? I hold men's lives in my hands. I must see foes in every shadow. The night we moved against Vane, he knew. I will not chance such disadvantage again. I must treat you as I would Ondor, as I would treat any of better of the Empire. Then what will you do? Hold me here in chains. <laughs> Some things never change, do they? Listen to me, Bosh. Your cage may have no bars, but it is a cage. The eyes of the Resistance watch unblinking. Let them watch. I know something of cages.
That's right. Amalia's in the Resistance. Then you know her. Sorta. We met just before we got sent to Nalbana. I've known nicer people. Our paths keep crossing yours and mine. It's more than coincidence. It's annoying. I'm sorry. Allow me one last annoyance, a favor to ask. I want you to take me to both here. Even caged birds need wings. This makes us even. Even? For Nalbana. We couldn't have done it without you. And since now Bosch is in our party, but not as a guest, fun fact, he was a guest beforehand, and now he's actually a playable character. We will now get Fran and Valthir back into our party <coughs> by going to the sand seat. Mine, mine had already died before that. The plague took them both. I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's okay. It's been five years now. After that, I live with my friend Pinello and her family. Then... Then the war came. I am sorry. You don't have to keep apologizing. Really, it's alright. I know it wasn't your fault. I see that now. You didn't kill my brother. It was the Empire. My brother trusted you. And he was right. As I said, a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? What I am understanding is it took Pinello because of you. What? What about Pinello? Oh, Vod. They've taken Pinello. And there was a note. A note for this Balthier. Come to the Museum of Mines, it said. It's Begamnon. He was in Nalvena. If anything were to happen to that sweet child, why, I have her parents' memory to consider. You're going to go to her aid, and that's that. That's what you Sky Pirates do, isn't it? I don't respond well to orders. You do know that the Imperial fleet is massing at Bujaba. Fine, then I'll go. You at least have an airship, don't you? Just get me there, and I'll find Pinello myself. I'll join you. Huh? I have some business there as well. An audience with the Marquis, by chance? Both here. Just take us, and this is yours. The gods are toying with <laughs> us. Uh, make yourselves ready. We leave soon. Right. And now we actually take it. Well, next round. And the reason is that it improves our standing with the clan, and we had to become members of there before to get access to their to their, uh, to their special shop. And what we can buy from that shop depends on standing with the clan. We have to improve that a bit to buy what we want to. So teleporting or Moogle teleporting to the Western Sand, then immediately doing Textera. Yeah, luckily the sand isn't very far out of the way. Bosch will get the monk drop because monk gets access to a lot of HP licenses. I don't think we've explained much about job system. 
So in this stage in the game we can choose one job per character, an associated license point and later on we will get access to a second one. The job system is something unique to the uh, IZJS and uh, the Zodiac Age version, whereas the original just had one unified license board with everything that you were able to get. However, back then when the original came out, people really hated that everyone was able to get everything, and they much rather had jobs where every character had like a unique set of abilities where everyone was able to do their own kind of thing. So you had like a uh, specific healer, you had a specific damage dealer, you had a specific tank, etc, etc. Whereas the original F12 had every character being able to do the same, but you were able to skill them the way you wanted. And so they introduced the job system for the IZGS and Zodiac Age version. I do still believe that I think the original version with the unified license support did it better, but that's just me, and I think that probably comes with a little bit of bias due to me growing up on the PS2 release. Yeah, for me the PS2 release was also the first one I played, but I kind of like the idea of jobs and having characters more specialized. Wouldn't you rather see for yourself? Not right now, it's just one job per character. We got Red Battle Mage for Van earlier simply because that immediately gives access to the Dark Spell. And right now, Monk for Bashri because of the extra HP that gives us access to. And then later I, in the game, I, we'll I get still, a second job per character. I still cannot believe that this game is 18 years old. I'm not saying this to rub it in. I'm not saying this to rub it in. It's just amazes me how good this game looks for being 18 years old. Like when I think about games that are 18 years old, my mind goes to like Final Fantasy IV on the SNES and not 12. <laughs> Looking like this. This does not look like 18 year old game to me. <laughs> This goes to show that in the last 18 years, there was not that insane amount of progress in terms of graphics compared to the 18 years leading up to 12. You think you are feeding, yes? I have my brother. She eats well. See that she does. We need her alive. Balthier's bait must be fresh. I keep trying to tell you. I barely even know who Balthier is. My brother, a message come from Rabanaster. The Stral, she sets sail. She makes straight for the sky city of the Sherpa. Barely know, was it? Yet Alatracy goes bounding off for you. Tell me, how could that be? I that's what I'd like to know. I just met him that one time and that's Does it. Does that tongue never stop? What if we plucked it from your head? As for you, we need Balthier alive. His corpse fetches but half the bounty. A tender beaten, my specialty. There's no fun for it if we can't tease out a scream or two. Where are you? Not so fun, but still a fact about this cutscene. This cutscene was taken out of the original Japanese release back in 06. Because back in the day, there was like some kidnapper in Japan going around and. So they thought it was a little bit uh, unfortunate timing that this had happened and that they showed a scene with a kidnapped girl. I thought, yeah, this does not feel right to put into the game in Japan. So they cut it out in the original Japanese release. 
but uh, put it back in for the uh, North American release. Easy. No good, he's not here. Keep searching. This way. You're a dead man. Don't forget it. And no names. Of course. Yes, and no names, farm. The Lusu mines are just up ahead. Though, I do hear there's not much left there these days. You're on your way to the mines? Then please allow me to accompany you. I have an errand to attend to there. What manner of errand? What errand? I might ask the same of you. Right. Come on then. What? Excellent. Do me a favor and stay where I can keep my eye on you. Should be less trouble that way. For us both. So what's your name? Oh, I, uh, I'm, I'm Lamont. Don't worry. I don't know what's in that mine, Lamont, but you're in good hands. Right, Bosch? At least Lamont knows to, how to use a fake name. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, my name is, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> And somehow you're still doing it better than Vaughn. Why? Saying I'm Cotton Bosch is like so convincing. I mean, I am Captain Bosch von Ronsenberg of Valmaska. One of the richest veins in Ivalis. Under Imperial Guard, no doubt. Actually, no. With but few exceptions, the Imperial Army is not permitted within Bujerba. Well, shall we proceed? You will forgive me for asking, but you are diverting the purest of the Magicite. I can assure you it reaches Lord Vane most discreetly. Ha! <laughs> you wear your saddle well. Be that as it may, I have no intention of being bridled, Your Honor. Then you prefer the whip? Stubbornness will see not only you broken, Excellency, but Bujerba as well. Salim Ondor IV, the Marquis of Bujerba. The Marquis served as mediator at the negotiations of Damascus' surrender. It would appear that he is somewhat less neutral now. They say he's been helping the resistance. They say many things. You're certainly well informed. Who did you say you were again? What difference does it make? We have to find Penelo. And Penelo is your... She's a friend. She was kidnapped and taken here. Now we're welcomed into the Lusa Mines, which is an area 
where we will not stay for very long in the any percent category. We're basically just running towards the uh, story location, get to know what is happening, and then uh, we'll turn around and uh, we'll play our favorite mini game. Yep. Just running out. This is what I came here to see. What's that? It's nethersite. Manufactured nethersite. Nethersite? Unlike regular magicite, nethersite absorbs magical energy. This is the fruit of research into the manufacture of nethersite. All of the hands of the Draclaw Laboratory. So this is where they're getting the magicite. Errand all attended to, then. Thank you. I'll repay you shortly. No, you'll repay us now. We have too much on our hands to go on holding yours. So, where did you hear this fairy tale about Nethersite? And where did you get that sample you carry? What do you know about the Draclaw Laboratories? <laughs> Tell me, who are you? Balthier. You kept us waiting, Balthier! You slipped away in Nalbana. We missed you! First to judge and know this boy. The whole affair has a smell of money about it. I may have to wet my beak a little. Keep your snout in the trough where it belongs. This thinking ill befits you, Bagamnon. Balthier. <laughs> Too long have I gone unpaid. I'll carve my bounty out of that boy. Where's Pinello? We're taking her back. The girl? Why keep the bait when you've landed the fish? We cut her loose on the way here and then off she ran crying like a babe. Hey! After them! Hey, wait up! We'll not be able to take them all. Fight who we must, leave the rest. And now we're running from the gambling. In the PS2 version of the same category without the cutscenes. We're actually grinding this guy for lots of license points. Since in the PS2 version there is no proper way to grind license points without also getting EXP. But these but the gambling's minions uh, they just give LP. <coughs> They give LP without, uh, not seem they follow. you know. We've lost them. Much more running about with Bunga at my heels, and I'm apt to give up Skype. Without any EXP. So that's why they are grinded. Yeah, in this version it's much easier to get license points without the experience. Well, the experience is already prevented, but also getting license points is much easier in this version in general due to the trial mode. I see you've been out walking without the company of your cortege, Lord Lhasa. We caught her wandering out of the mines. You must take care with such undesirables about. I was kidnapped! Silence! If it is a crime to wander on one's own, then I too am guilty. Marquis. I trust that your estate can accommodate another guest. Why not? Judge Geese, I shall heed your counsel. I will not travel unaccompanied any longer. That was unexpected. Thank you, Pinello. Uh, of course. What's Pinello doing? And what's the deal with that Lamont? That's no Lamont. Lhasa Ferina Solidor, fourth son to Emperor Gramis, and brother to Vane. What? That kid? 
Do not worry. I believe he will treat her well. Nobody knows men like Fran does. Our purposes lead the same way, to Ondor. We must find means to approach him. The Marquis is channeling money to organizations opposing the Empire. We'll start there. Marquis Andor announced my execution two years ago. If news of my survival would nobody knows it, men like friends find his position compromised. The men he's been funding bear little love. I didn't know if that can be considered a compliment, I guess. She's just a great judge of character. Wait, she's a judge? <laughs> <laughs> But that is news to me. I'm Captain Bosch from Rosenberg of Dalmasca. <laughs> I'm Captain Bosch from Rosenberg of Dalmasca. Well, what do you think? That certainly qualifies as a clamor. All right, Vaughn, get to it. For the girl's sake, eh? Oh, and the more people around to witness your little performance, the better. If we're going to reach the Marquis, it's up to you. We'll be waiting here if you need us. See if we can get a two shout. The minimum we're going to need for that is two. I don't mess it up. Don't listen to Ondor's Ooh, that's... I got them. This is... Um... I'm Captain Bosch von Rotzenberg. That's correct, isn't it? No. I'm the Bosch von Rotzenberg. Oh, it's three shots. I tried. It's difficult. It's difficult to get the right position for the second one. This is the one, Havaro. Says he's Captain Bosch, he does. <laughs> he would sooner pass for the king. I knew he were no captain. That was a mean trick to be playing. If a trickery it ended, it would end well enough. But why this boy? And why Captain Ronsenberg? An explanation is due, and I will hear it. The Empire's hounds grow passing bold indeed. A shame if they learnt the Marquis trafficked with the likes of you. Agents masquerading as guides, a hideout at the back of a tavern? Not exactly earning high marks for originality, are we? Now you've done Wait. it. So Bash von Ronsenberg does yet live. So Vaughn really is all right. I didn't think I'd ever get to see him again. You will join him soon. And until then, I shall see that you are kept from harm. Thank you. I am troubled. The Rabanasto Imperial Guard appear to have overstepped their bounds. I intend to speak on this with the Consul. What? Vane Solidor, the Consul, is my brother. <gasps> the first duty of the Consul is to maintain order in Damascus. My brother... my brother is not one given to failure. Perhaps things aren't going as well as they might be, but give him a little time and he will put things to rights. Be not troubled. My brother is a remarkable man. He frightens me. Why? I'm sorry. He is your brother. It's just, you don't understand how much we lost to the war. My friends, my parents. So you fear the Empire? Listen to me. The men of my family, we are taught to place the needs of others before those of our own. I will see that you are kept from harm, 
It is my duty to House Solidor. But how? How can I trust you? Because I give you my word. My brother would do no less. I knew there must be more to it. Liar! I find you at the end of this tale? <laughs> ah, to see the Marquis's face when he learns of it. I should like nothing more. I would meet him and see for myself. How say you, my lord? There is little to be said. I shall arrange a meeting with the Marquis. We shall expect you at the estate. Sir Bosch von Ronsenberg, it was not so very long ago that I announced you had been executed. And that is the only reason I draw breath. So you are the sword he strung above my head. Vane has left not a thing to chance. And? A leader of the resistance has fallen into Imperial hands. A woman by the name of Amalia. I would rescue her, but I need your help. This resistance leader, this Amalia, she must be very important. You understand I have my position to consider. Would you let us see Larsa? He's got my friend with him. I'm afraid you're too late. Lord Larsa's cortege has already rejoined the Imperial Detachment. I am told they will depart for Rabanaster upon the arrival of the fleet this eventide. to calm down. Captain Ronsenberg, surely the exigencies of position are not lost on you. Why, indeed, you should find the enemy's chains an easy burden to bear. Wait. Sorry. Can't be helped. Summon the guard. Huh? We have to be taken to Judge Geese. Those decrepit basking fools in Arcades tie my hands, and look what happens. I tell you, this country's obstinacy knows no bounds. The insurgents in Ravanasta operate alone at present. However, should they garner external support, the situation could worsen. We have found the counter-imperial elements in Brujerba to be conspicuously well-funded. No doubt Marquis Ondor is behind this. Ondor must be reined in. By the way, the Marquis has written us a letter. He claims that he's recaptured our runaway. He's given him to Geese. He will die by my hand. Your fraternity is moving. Ah! Geese returns with Larsa. Tomorrow morning they will leave Bujerba. See him home safely, Gabranth. Now I'm expecting Dr. Sid. You may leave. We must see the real thing, to be sure. Nabadis taught us much. 
Yes, it's well hidden. They'll be off chasing after shadows, the fools. Ah, yes. The reins of history back in the hands of man. Ah, Vane. You seem to be enjoying your job as consul. I was kept waiting fully two years. What news of Arcades, our honored members of the Senate? Hard at work, as always, trying to find a dagger for your back. Hmm. <laughs> they are welcome to try. The prisoners, my lord! <sighs> Majesty. After what you've done, how dare you? You're supposed to be dead. Come now, come now. Have you forgotten your manners? This is hardly the courtesy due the late Princess Ashalia Benagin Dalmasca. Princess? To be sure, she bears no proof of her former station, no different than any mean member of the insurgents. The Resistance. His Excellency the Consul asks the Ministry of the Disthroned Royal Family in restoring peace to Dalmasca. Those who foster instability and unrest who claim royal blood without proof, they shall meet their fate at the gallows. There are no exceptions. I will not play puppet to Vane. King Ramanas entrusted me with a task. Should the time come, he bade me give you something of great importance. It is your birthright, the Dusk Shard. It will warrant the quality of her blood. Only I know where to find it. Wait! You took my father's life. Why spare mine now? You would have me live in shame! If that is your duty, yes. Stop being so stubborn. Keep on like this and you're gonna get us all killed. Don't interrupt. What? Vaughn, that stone. It, it was in the palace treasure. Well, well. <laughs> Splendid! You brought the stone with you. This spares us a great deal of trouble. Don't give it to him! Uh. Uh. You have to promise. No executions. A judge's duty is to the law. Take them away. My lord! Lady Ash is to be quartered separately. <sighs> Vain Solidor, what fascination does this hold for you? So you were carrying it all along, the fates jest. <sighs> Tell these fates of yours to leave me out. Keep quiet! There was nothing else that I could do. You know that. Oh, I understand. Honor, duty, and all that. I still can't believe that was I a said princess. keep quiet! <laughs> huh? <laughs> Marquis has been busy. 
We got Vossler as a guest. Listen. As a very nice years, technique called Traveler. He'll come in handy. I doubted friend and foe alike. I could trust nobody. You did your duty. And mine for me. I'm getting her out. I need your help. Of course. Eps. So, Traveler. Traveler is a technique that <clears throat> Vossler kindly enough carries with him, which is based off of uh, the total numbers of steps taken the last time we've casted it. But since we've never casted it, it's uh, it deals damage between uh, different uh, different kinds of damage between zero and 999 steps taken. The highest damage you deal is between 990 and 999 steps taken. That's like the only thing you know. The highest damage is dealt between 990 and 999 steps taken since uh, either the last time casted or before you casted it the first time, it's from zero between 999. Wait. A word of caution before we set out. So the goal is to get uh, between 990 and 999 steps to deal 9900 or 9990 damage. Somewhere in between that. Yeah, right now it's not that precise yet. I don't need to get maximum damage for Traveler on the next fight, so as long as I'm above 815. But not cut over the next thousands, it's good enough. But I did need to burn some steps in the beginning to get in the right range for the next fight. Also another small fun fact, uh, Vossler is voiced by uh, none other than Nolan North. One of the voice actors who has voiced like literally every other character in video games. Voice of uh, Nathan Drake, uh, Vossler, of course. Uh, David in that's The Last nice. of Us, and uh, many others. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm just going to go to save. It's a tricky situation right now. Luckily, that's a thing this game has, autosave. Autosaves are really nice. Again! Should've probably... Throw a potion at the start of the hallway. Usually it triggers the threshold tailor already, but now just that an annoying. Oh, but wait, why am I doing trials? Did I click trials? Oh, wonderful. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I just a potion, and this should be cute. Make it work. But yeah, for a moment I was too used to whenever we quit out the choosing to do trust. <laughs> Okay. And now we're fighting the judges? Fear not their yeah. the judges? Take down Travelers, the leaders and the others Travelers will going to be used. Now we just have to uh, hope with uh, grouping up. Yeah, I want to lure them to this corner because I want to be able to hit both judges with it. It's... it... It should be fine. And that's the power of Traveler. But yeah, I... I need to decide to make sure they're grouped together because I do need to hit both Judge Traveler. Traveler can hit multiple enemies. If I miss one, then I don't have a good way to kill the other.
Now I find Ash. Vossler, I... Uh... Majesty. It's nothing. I'll be fine. You. Come on, come on, let's go. What are you waiting for? Pinello's still out there. We should hurry. They won't be long. We will talk later. Oh, do a little bit of shopping. Get a bit of extra armor that Ash will wear. I'm just for safety, but what do you think? And Ash will become a bushy for now. And we'll get some extra licenses for extra HP as well as for the equipment that I just bought. Because for now she's uh, basically going to set up as the best tank we have. Trust his sword we must, traitor or no. I see no other way. We track back. Commandeer a ship and make our escape. <sighs> her Majesty cannot abide weakness, least of all in herself. We must make her confront the reality of our plight. I will use Ash for running now because she. Now clearly has the most HP of everyone, due to those extra licenses and equipments. I'm glad to be here today, just because I now have another excuse to watch all the cutscenes again. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice, it's a nice start. Also pick up some very handy chest, no not that one, those one. We pick up two reflector modes, one of which we'll be using very soon in the next fight. Because the strategy for the next fight will actually be that Van is just set up to cast spells on himself. And we'll use a reflector mode so everyone must reflect, so then that actually reflects back. And that actually works really well, because rather than Hitting the enemy once when you cast directly on them, you reflect back on you all your three party members and you end up being able to hit the same enemy three times. you ought not even to exist. That you and Captain Ronsenberg were made to appear dead is like a hidden thread laid bare. Your actions hereafter will pull at that thread and we will see what it unravels. This is our chance. We must see this through and get to the bottom of it. I believe tis for the good of Dalmasca and the good of the Empire. Very well then. Thanks, Lamont. Uh, I must apologize. Hmm. Penelo, for you. May it bring you good fortune. Thanks. Let us go. Speed too fast because we're a fight again. Oh, may it bring you good fortune, he says after giving her a deadly weapon. <laughs> but it does bring good fortune. I mean, it can basically kill them all. <laughs> yes, well, it does end up protecting them. <laughs> 
So it it works out. Such a great shame. Yeah. yeah. I must confess, I thought you Calculator. were to restore peace to Dalmasca. No matter, we hold the proof of your royal lineage. A maid of passing resemblance will serve our purposes now. As for you, my dear, the Empire requires you no more. See, it helps. The Nethersite. Your Majesty does not disappoint. Ever quick to spurn an honorable surrender, as was your father. You know nothing of my father! The arrow got mode. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I guess we'll do this way. <laughs> hope he doesn't kill himself. That would be really bad. I don't think he did. Okay, that did work as exactly as planned because Vaan died quicker than he was supposed to. So normally Vaan is supposed to cast spells on himself and that reflects back and that didn't really happen this way. So now we just kill him by hitting him in the, the old fashioned way I guess. That's fine. But yeah, the strategy does have the risk of him accidentally killing himself because he will cast arrow on your party and that will reflect back as well. And if he dies by his own arrow, then uh, you don't get the license points for the fight. Yeah, he steals the kill on himself then. Balthier, your handkerchief. I thought you might want it back. I shall wear it close to my heart. Perhaps you forget all that Ondor has wrought. I do not forget, Majesty. It was by his counsel, dangerous though it may have been, that we were able to free you. You must meet with him, Your Highness, and give ear to his words. He may act in league with the Empire, but his heart is not. It is as he says. I ought not have kept Ondor at so great a distance for so long a time. I have played the fool. You were only being cautious. Majesty, I would ask you for some time. On our own, we struggle in vain to restore Dalmasca. I must search out some other way. Until I should find it, I would have Bash remain at your side. Doubt him you may. But I measure his loyalty to Dalmasca no less than my own. I know you would not speak so lightly. Very well. Keep her well. Go to Ondor and there await my return. Like we didn't miss any license points. Oh. 
When Vostler learned my father had been killed the night of the treaty signing, he returned to Ravenaster, there to aid my escape. There was still time before Vane's reach extended too far. We thought that you could protect me. However, when I then made the announcement that you had taken your own life, I must have seemed a model citizen of the Empire. The announcement, you see, was Vane's suggestion. Of course, at the time I was reluctant, but I could not perceive his reasons. Now it is clear he meant to drive a wedge between us. Aleem, we are past all this. Bushirva must stand with us. We can stop Vane. <sighs> I once knew a girl whose only wish was to be carried in her uncle's arms. Your Majesty is a woman grown now. Then Bushirba will aid me. Suppose for a moment you were to defeat Vane. What then? You cannot simply rebuild your kingdom with the only proof of your birthright stolen. Without that, the Grand Kiltia San Boomises cannot and will not recognize your majesty as the rightful heir. You may yet be a princess, but without proof of your identity, you are powerless. You will remain with me. We do nothing till the time is right. I cannot just wait. Then what does your majesty propose we do? Uh, Uncle Halim. Incidentally, what is the going rate for rescuing princesses these days? Food would be a start. The good stuff, mind you. This can be arranged, though it will take some time. Time enough for a bath, I hope. Dirty business, you know. Ah, best bring a change of clothes, too. What are you doing? <laughs> this is Balthier's ship. I'm going to retrieve the Dawn Shard. It's the proof that I need. I know where it's hidden. I'll return his airship later. Are you crazy? This is something that I have to do. Not only for myself, but for all those who have fallen. I will not be made to hide. <sighs> I'll fight alone if I must. You still have Bosch, right? Besides, you can't just go around stealing people's ships. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to concentrate. That's quite enough, Your Majesty. What do you think? A bit over the top. In my line of work, you never know when something like this might come in handy. I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to concentrate. concentrate. Uh, uh. I'm leaving you with a Marquis. You can't! Trust me, you're better off staying here. Suppose you kidnapped me instead. You're a Sky Pirate, aren't you? Then steal me. Is that so much to ask? What do you have that I would want? The Dynast King's treasure. The Dawn Shard is but one of the riches that lie waiting in King Wraithwall's tomb. King Wraithwall, you say? Kidnapping royalty is a serious offense. It won't do much to lower the bounty on your head. How much is the price on your head these days, I wonder? Allow me to escort you in Vossler's place. Will you be joining us? What? Are you kidding? I don't want to stick around this place. Then I'm coming too. Canelo. Don't leave me here. <sighs> of course not. Then it's settled. We should leave before the Marquis realizes she's missing, like proper kidnappers.
Dr. Sid, does this set Draclaw? I have confirmed he receives funds from Lord Vane. His agency in the fall of Nabudis is also certain. Yet, with Judge Zekt, who led the assault, missing, the truth remains difficult to ascertain. The long, cold years have clouded my eyes. I cannot see my own son's heart. <coughs> my lord. This illness will claim me. So then, who is to be my successor? The Senate fears the capable Peregrine Vane. They prefer a young, fledgling Emperor. Gabranth, once in the past I laid siege to your homeland. The Republic of Landis is long since gone. My allegiance lies wholly with the Empire. Perhaps. But what of your brother? He did not accept us as you did. He fled to Dalmasca. Did you never think to follow him? I follow his every move. He is an enemy of the Empire. He will be cut down. So you would kill even your own brother for the Empire. Be that as it may, Gebranth. Your ruthlessness is not without merit. But... It must not become this way with Larsa. You must ensure that it does not. So then you ask me to be his sword, to strike where he might not. Rather be his shield. Gabranth, keep your close watch on Vane. His is the keenest blade of all. My lord. Do this for me, Gabranth. I could not... I could not bear to see my sons... <coughs> war with each other again. This come in handy often? It's tough being popular. Wouldn't want any admirers dropping in while we're away. Well now, that's as far as she goes. We'll be in Yacht from here onwards. Across the Sand Sea, to the Valley of the Dead, and to King Wraithwall's tomb below. So when you're hmm? in Yacht, Sky Stones don't work at all. That's why we gotta hoof it the rest of the way, you see? Happy you get to teach me something for a change? Well, if you want to be a Sky Pirate, you gotta know your... Hey, what do you mean for a change? Come on, At least we thought it. to bring I'm entertainment. You. Oh yeah? Says who? You wanna see what <sighs> they think about it? I wouldn't be so confident. Yeah, we have the literal sand sea. Glowing sand. Very water-like sand. Pretty cool. Fun fact about the Urutamienza that you can see here. They have the most amount of pages um, out of any enemy in the bestiary in the entire game. And I think it's 14 pages if I remember correctly. And so where exactly in there, is it is explained that 
they somehow have ties. To the west. We must first I was gonna say, in the there it is explained how the Omega Mark we 12 the came to be. An expansive desert larger still than all of Delmasca. We must pace ourselves. If you grow tired, we stop and take rest. You don't have to worry about me. I'm tougher than I look. <laughs> you are at that. Construct to draw oil from the ground. Abandoned many years now, it seems. Did Dalmaskans build this? No, the Rosarians. Their empire lies far to the west, ever at war with Arcadia. Heedless of the kingdoms caught in their midst. Dalmasca, Nebrodia, Landis. Tis the small craft's fate to watch the list of the galleons and pray for light winds. Vosla. Why are you here? Imagine my surprise when upon my return to Bojerba, I find both you and the Lady Ash have vanished. I thought you above consorting with Sky Pirates. Malthir is a man worthy of our trust, and it was the Lady Ash's decision. I am content to lend my arm. As I could not when Rasla died, when her throne was taken. Never again. I will defend her this time. You walk the knight's path. The Lady Ash? We should leave this place. Let me guess. Sandstorm? Something far worse. I see. So the Dawn Shard does lie in King Wraithwall's tomb. The Marquis sympathizes with your plight. Yet the Empire perches as a carrion bird on his shoulder. He can keep whispers of your abduction silent for only so long. Yes. Tell me, Vossler, what have you accomplished? We leave at once. This is Urutan Yensa territory, and they are unfond of visitors. So it's nice that we get Vossler as a guest again, because that means we can again get to make some use out of Traveler. Looks like we've attracted the wrong sort of attention. Let's quit this place while we still can. Move! Vossler! Have you found the means to restore Dalmasca? First, we must claim the Dawn Shard. It all begins with that. Okay, next. While well, going through this um, area, there's also some important chests to pick up. First one will be the Golden Amulet right here. The Golden Amulet is particularly useful, especially in a low level run, since it does double all the LP we get. And since LP is basically the only thing that will uh, in turn make our characters stronger due to the way we spend them on our license boards, it is basically pick it up to... Uh, speed up the process of getting their license points. And if you've seen the PS2 run before, you're probably thinking, why is Madelon going this way? So the reason why Madelon is going this way is because of a little lone spell called Reflect Beam, uh, hidden away in a chest behind those uh, little containers. And with Reflect on Golden Amulet now in our position, you know, make haste towards far to the west. Yeah, new game minus makes 
uh, especially in the mid game, quite some use out of the reflect spread of casting reflect on your spells and then casting spells on yourself that then reflect back to enemies. You need the reflect spell to do that. Now, for the next traveler cost, we actually have to be more precise because we really need that uh, maximum damage. Uh, set it up on posit position here 227. 227. So now I really need to keep track of the exact number to make sure I'm in the right range to get the maximum damage on the next fight. But 227 means that we want to hit the next enemy uh, from 217 to 226 in that range. I had to open the menu to actually see that stop number. We definitely do not want to see 227 or above that, because anything that is above that means it, it restarted the count. So if it's at 227, you will do zero damage, and at 228, it will do one damage. Because whenever you've done a thousand steps, it begins starting to count from well, zero again. And then you have to do another 990 steps to get the, the damage that you want. So 218, which was indeed in the range, but I need to remember this one as well, because I will, on the next boss we beat, we again use Traveler. Our next one need indeed want to be precise and be in a good 10 step range. Long ago, the gods granted their favor to King Wraithwall, who would oversee the subjugation of a vast territory spanning from Mordalia to Valendia. Here he forged the Galtaean Alliance. Though he is called the Dynast King, Upon establishing the Alliance, he demonstrated compassion for his people and disdain for needless war. A philosophy passed on to his successors, one that would bring peace and prosperity for hundreds of years to follow. It was during this time of peace that the city-states of Arcadia and Rosaria, each members of Wraithwall's Alliance, took root and flourished. Wraithwall left three relics signifying descent from the Dynast King. Of these, the Midlight Shard was given to what would become House Nebradia, and the Dusk Shard to my ancestors, the founders of Dalmasca. The last of these relics was the Dawn Shard. It remained hidden here, known only to those of royal blood. As though the Dynast King foresaw the very plight before us now. None save descendants of the king are suffered within. 
If we attempt to enter without proof of such lineage... There's no guarantee we'll make it out alive. Vicious beasts, fiendish traps, something like that. Mm-hmm. But you must consider the prize. The Dawn Shard lies within, and Wraithwall's treasure. And there was I, thinking this was going to be hard. And now I'm running three laps to burn some steps to get in the right range for the next fight for Traveler. Look at all this Galtean architecture. How oh, beautiful, isn't it? This is our quick tour through the two of right ones. Pretty wall textures. <laughs> Better decide fast. Well, this first one will run. The first one is quite a bit more difficult. It has three times the amount of HP and way less path. So you have way less time to actually defeat it. Together we can bring it down. Compared to the second one, which is like... I would say three times the path and only a third of the HP. That's it. So, Traveler is not quite enough to kill it, but it does most of the damage. And then after Traveler, after the Traveler cost, there was still a little bit of HP left that we just needed to get rid by attacking. Traveler does 9,100 damage and Demon Wall has a little bit over 10k. But it is what it is. Incredible. It wounds me to look on as they pillage so solemn a place. Yet without help, you and I are as nothing. Is this not so? <sighs> he thinks ever and always on his own profit. Assure him of it and he shall remain true to our cause. I do not share your majesty's trust. We will continue this later. 
Now we should concern ourselves with finding the Dawn Shard. It sleeps in waiting, somewhere deep within. How can you be certain? I can hear its call. Looks like Ash has a sixth sense. In any case, so the the quirk about Tomb of the the Tomb of Wrathful Dungeon is that to get to the the Lias fight, we have five, to five nine eight. Uh, five nine eight. We have to uh. Touch two stones, which will lower um, a certain barrier. And once the barrier is lowered, we will have access to the lower levels of Tomb of Wraithwall. And that lower level will actually house Malayas. It should not take too long to get there. It's a bit annoying since there are a lot of enemies on the way trying to kill us, and since we're quite low level. We are taking quite a bit of damage. So, and at the same time, since Metal on Use Traveler, trying to not to put, uh, waste or burn too many steps is also something that has to be kept in mind. Otherwise, it will overstep, and then you have to burn another 900 steps to, just to get back to uh, where you were before. Yeah, and it said 598 was me setting up Traveler again and noting down what step number we were on. Exactly. <clears throat> so we now should be in the 558 to 597 range uh, when we use it against the next boss, Belias. And Belias is again having more HP than we can uh, get to through Traveler alone. So what we'll do is we make sure we do enough damage beforehand so we can finish off with Traveler so we skip the worst part of the fight. You can see the mist with your eyes? Where it is thick enough, you may. The nether runs deep in this place. So is the mist dangerous? Yes, but it is also an aid. A dense mist allows the working of powerful magics. I'll keep that in mind. Can't count on Vaughn to keep track of these things. That's for sure. What Francia said is actually some gameplay logic that actually applies in Thick Mists. In Thick Mist, your uh, magic damage is actually amplified. But so is the magic from uh, enemies. And your MP recharge rate is also highly amplified when there's uh, Thick Mist. Oh yeah. Also something for this fight. Ash is the only one that has reasonable high HP, so I really want to have attention on Ash for Belias that he takes Ash and that's the reason that I will be throwing a bunch of Phoenix downs because that actually raises the enmity that Belias feels for Ash basically Belias really don't, doesn't like people that use Phoenix downs and that will keep his attention on Ash Still do a bit more damage before we can finish it off with Traveler. And that was it.
So indeed, Belize kept attacking us. And we also picked up another elixir while we were doing the fight. And that is the first Esper out of 13, or should I say, in this round it's going to be 5. But it's the first out of 5 Espers that we will get in this round in our possession. In vain glory they arose. Shouting challenges at the and guard. now, since we obtained the uh, Esper Belize, we'll also have access to, to our second job. License board. A legend yes. The what is good about having two jobs? My family tells a story of the Dynast King and an Esper. The story goes that in his youth, the Dynast King defeated a mighty Gigas for which the gods took one useful thing. Jobs. Thereafter, it was ever bound to him. And <laughs> well, one the good thing about two jobs is if you have choose two jobs and then have two license points aboard, there will actually be a bit of overlap between the two. Like some licenses will be occurring on both of them, and this will be very useful to jump around on the license board because if you have one license. You can also on only uh, activate licenses adjacent to the ones you've gotten already. But on job A, if it's adjacent to the license you got there, then maybe for job B, it's all the way over on the other side of the license board. And then suddenly you have access to that other part of license board B as well, because now you have access to what's on license board B adjacent to that license. So you can sort of jump around and get more efficiently just the licenses you need without get, having to get as much uh, unneeded ones in between. So we'll actually have to demonstrate this principle with Penelo. We immediately have her quite quickly get her second board. So she starts as Black Mage. A few licenses here. Then I make sure she gets the second boards. Bushy. And then on the bushy boards, all the previously activated licenses are active as well, and that allows me to immediately go over here. And then I get, get the license for the golden amulet, and that way I can pretty quickly already make sure she has access to the golden amulet. And I also want to immediately equip that on Penelo. So she immediately gets the advantage of now having de double license points from all the upcoming fights. But she doesn't need to be in the party for that. License points get shared by everyone, even if you're not in the party. And right now for Penelo that's going to be doubled. What's wrong? Your Majesty, we must go. What?
Another license I also got was for Arsh, where I quickly get the license to actually summon Belias, the uh, summon that we just fought. We'll use in the next fight. Such a tremendous honor to again be graced with your presence, Majesty. You left us with such great dispatch upon our last encounter that I must confess I had begun to worry that we may have given your Majesty some cause for offense. Such a heartfelt display of remorse. Now what is it you want? I want you to give me the Nethysite. The Nethysite? That is a base imitation. We seek Wraithwald's legacy, the ancient relics of the Dynast King. They affected Nethysite. Did you not tell them, Captain Azalus? <sighs> Majesty, he speaks of the Dawn Shard. That is the Nethysite. <sighs> are you mad, Vosler? If we are to save Dalmasca, we must accept the truth. I will fight this profitless battle no more. <sighs> Captain Azalus has struck a wise bargain. In return for the Dawn Shard, the Empire will permit Lady Ash to reclaim her throne, and the Kingdom of Dalmasca will be restored. Think on it. An entire kingdom for a stone, you must admit, is more than a fair exchange. And when all is said and done, your master will have another pet. Lady Ash, let us take him for the people of Dalmasca. Your Majesty wallows in indecision on peril of their heads. And his shall be the first to fall. Well, at least your sword is to the point. To think the relics of the Dynast King were dead in sight, Dr. Sid will be beside himself. What did you say? Captain Azalus, take them to Shiva. They should have leave to return to Ravanasta soon. I want you to assess its power. Did our orders not specify that we return the stone for testing? I will not chance returning with a stone that is yet unproven. When we return to Dalmasca, we can announce that you are alive and well. I will then continue our negotiations with the Empire. I believe Lars is the key. He'll listen to us. We should trust him. Who are you, Vossler, to talk of trust? A son of Dalmasca.
Our equipment here is limited, so we'll be using the ship's drive to make our assessment. Once we've connected the stone, the reaction should be easy. <laughs> Nethersite. The power of the Dynast King in my hands. <laughs> Blood alone does not an Emperor make, vain. What is this? Something's wrong. What is it? <laughs> you stand! Hold her down! Fran didn't take well to being tied up. I just never knew how much. How about you? I like Fran's idea. Let's get out of here. No farther! Sky Pirates, the future of Dalmasca will not be stolen. <sighs> we first used Bosa to get Pelias, and now we'll use Pelias against him. Bush. This struggle is futile. You must know where it leads. I do know. All too well. And now we basically just watch Belias and Vossler duel it out. And it's a very unequal duel. Vossler will do a bunch of zero damage against Belias. <laughs> okay, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the one time they actually use this summon in battle. It's quite nice to see. I just don't remember seeing him doing zero damage to the lines. That's wonderful. He's just fighting the run. Even with even with enrage and uh, ZT zero, which is charge dive, he still does zero damage. Amazing. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, he starts getting these combos with multiple hits, all zero. He's trying really hard. Look at what my chase has wrought. Did I act too quick? What are they doing down there? The the they must have returned to the end. Disengage it at once. Ash, let's go. All I have done, I've ever thought of Dalmasca first. I know you do. I would ne'er gainsay your loyalty. Look on what my haste has wrought. Did I act too quick? Or was your return too late? I can serve her no more. You must take up my charge.
The dreadnought Leviathan is sunk. The Eighth Fleet of the Arcadian Imperial Army lost. As word of the events in the Yacht sounded throughout the Empire, quit I, Bujerba, citing sudden malady, my true motive, to bring the various counter-imperial forces scattered throughout Ivalis together in unified resistance. By this time, Lady Ash had made her return to Rabanaster. She had not, however, made known her presence. Rather, she was content with keeping both her own whereabouts and those of the Don Shard concealed. Had she chosen then to go before her people, my error in announcing her suicide would be known, to the great detriment of my efforts to assemble a resistance. In such circumstance as the Lady Ash then found herself, even were she to proclaim Dalmasca restored, it would serve only to invite the Empire's wrath. <coughs> Though Arcadia had lost her Eighth Fleet, she remained, as ever, a military power with which to be reckoned. The Rosarian Empire assembles a vast host under guise of martial exercises. It is our belief they wait for the proper pretext, the sooner to make their strike against Arcadia. The loss of Leviathan and her fleet at such a time comes as a most grievous blow. Were Rosaria to invade, the battle would be hard fought. Had Lord Vane not deployed the fleet so capriciously, we would not now find ourselves in such perilous circumstance. Lord Vane shall be made to answer for his actions. It is the will of the Senate. Excellency, though he be your son, justice must be served. A convenient thing, justice. And so I must now make a choice between my throne and my son. A most lamentable situation for us all. Oh? For Lord Vane, perhaps. Yet surely Lord Lancer will make for a fine emperor. Lancer so adores his brother, and he is yet young. But he will not remain young forever. Already he busies himself unraveling Lord Vane's tangled skein. Lord Larsa has found his role to play and pursues it with some enthusiasm. Ah, yes. And who would set him at such tasks? What matter? Lord Vane himself once saw his elder brothers brought to like justice, did he not? At your Excellency's behest, as I recall. <coughs> you may put yourself at ease, Lord Gramis. So long as the Senate watches over her, Arcadia's well-being will ever be ensured. By your will, I shall bid Vane return to Arcades. Also, the background this looks like the prayer's dead plans. So, I guess they made a stop there on the way back.
I do think this is the Nabreus Deadlands. <clears throat> Not that it just looks like it, I think it actually is. Yeah. But but my question is, why are they there? <laughs> yeah. Because when you later have the option to visit it, it sounds like they get there for the first time, but apparently not. So, it was the Dawn Shard that brought down the Imperial fleet. You know your stuff. Destructive power of such force. I've seen it once before. Lady Ash, you know of what I speak. Nabudis. The capital of Old Nebradia, Lord Rassler's fatherland. At the time of the invasion, a division of Imperials entered the city. There was a mighty explosion. Friend and foe died alike. Something was there. One of the Dynast King's relics. The Midlight Shard was in Nebradia. More Nethersite. Well, no wonder they invaded. That ridiculous war. The trap at the treaty signing. All this, because Vane wanted power. He must not be allowed to claim the Nethysite. The Empire must never hold it. Oh, they already do. The Dusk Shard, most likely the Midlight Shard, too. Besides, can't they manufact Nethysite now? Very well. Then the path set before us is clear. We'll use the Dawn Shard to fight them. Dalmasca does not forget kindness nor ill deed done. With sword in hand she aids her allies, sword in hand she lays to rest her foes. This Nethysite I hold must be my sword. I will avenge those who have died, and the Empire will know remorse. You even know how to use it? I... The Gareth may know. The Gareth people live by the old ways. Matricide lore is a part of their culture. They may hear it. The cry of the Nethersite's power. Whispers of the stone's menace. Dangerous though it be, what we need now is power. Should we declare Dalmasca free without the means to defend our claim, the Empire would crush us. You must take me to meet with the Gareth. They live beyond Osman Plain. Not exactly close. Compensation, is that what you want? Straight to the point, aren't we? I like that. Compensation? <laughs> How about the ring? This? Isn't there something else? No one's forcing you. I'll give it back to you, as soon as I find something more valuable. Money. What do you mean, something more valuable? Oh, as soon as I find something I'll more valuable. Foreshadowing again. What is it you want, Vaughn? What are you looking for? Me? What am I looking for? I... I guess... Well, I... Uh, you know... This game has incredible foreshadowing. And I think the doing Gareth proper foreshadowing and, and doing it well so they do. is something to head south that makes the from a lines. decent a story to a great Giza. story. The Wadis will be swollen with the deluge. Passage may be difficult. But those same waters may also lay open new routes to us. Regardless, we must go south, yes? And now we're going to hear about the Swadis, which are swollen with a deli. Yeah, I guess that's a scene that PS2 runners will know well. I made my but for TZA, you can usually skip it. I don't think this one is skippable on PS2. Cannot live by resolve alone, princess. The Wadis will be swollen with a deli. Passage may be difficult. But those same waters may open new routes to us. And here's the clan shop. 
that I work to get access to that uh, by oil and decoy. But that was a shop he did his trouble to get stuff from. Very yeah. important to get oil and decoy. Yeah, especially decoy will be uh, used quite a bit. I and mean, it has a very good sense. Also, I mean, oil is also really good considering it triples any fire damage, which is insane. Yeah. Maybe also good to explain what decoy does then. So, decoy is the status ailment that basically makes you the number one target all the time. So, uh, and, uh, as long as you're seen, as long as you're visible, that's important to add. As long as every character is visible, the person with decoy will always be targeted. So, for single attacks, Deco is very good like that, but when it comes to AoE attacks... Yeah, this comes to AoE Deco detection is... to keep your distance from the others. Yep. Deco is still good, but it can still be annoying. Yep. Also, the symbol, the symbol for when someone has Deco on this attack, and I think that is great. Everyone just really enjoys the duck uh, icon. I touched the crystal to make sure we have the teleport location because we will need to be able to teleport here back, back here later. One teleport stone, cutting it mm. close. Well, yeah, especially new game minus means many of your characters will be very squishy. So then having sure that we only have to make turn one character into a meat shield that gets targeted, and then have decoy on that, so the right character gets damage is really helpful. <laughs> I forget this one. Basically just trying to get to the scary if that's what the dialogue is about. And we pick the pheasant Netsuke. So the main way of healing in this run is just throwing potions and then now high potions and later on even X potions and Pheasant Netsuke helps make that a bit more efficient. This Nethysite, you have used it. It was not I who used it. Indeed I had hoped you could show me how. Thus I've come. Hmm. You do not know the workings of the stone. Then we are no different. What? In ages past, the gods made a gift of Nethysite to my people. But the manner of its use eluded us. Displeased by our failure, the gods took back their stones. They chose instead to give them to a Yum king. Called the Dynast King, he used the Nethysite's power to bring peace to a troubled time. It is a curious thing. Though the blood of King Wraithwall flow through your veins, you cannot wield Nethysite. Cannot wield it? So then, am I to understand you can't tell me how to use the stone? Though it shame me so to admit. Here before me stands a descendant of the Dynast King himself, 
and I can accord her no help at all. Still, even if you knew how to use the Nethysite, you would find it of small avail. The mist collected in the stone over ages past is lost, and with it, the stone's power. It will be your posterity who will the stone in ages yet to come. This stone is devoid of power, empty, yet full of thirst, a terrible longing to drink the world dry. The power of men and of magic, of good and of evil. It is often those who desire Nethysite whom the Nethysite itself desires. <sighs> Larsa? To Baromi says. I say we ought leave tomorrow. I was going to wait for my escort to return, but meeting you here has presented a great opportunity. This terrible war can be stopped, but I will need your help to do so. A war? You know the Marquis Ondor leads a group of insurgents. Your pardon? He leads a large resistance force against the Empire. Lady Ash, neither of our countries can afford this now. The Rosarian Empire would stir. They would aid the resistance and use this aid as a pretext to declare war on Arcadia. And Arcadia would have no choice but to answer. Lady Ash, let us go to Bur Omasace. With the blessing of his grace, the Grand Kiltius Anastasis, you may rightly wear your crown and declare the restoration of the Kingdom of Dalmasca. As queen, you can call for peace between the Empire and Dalmasca and stop Marquis Ondor. For peace? How dare you say that? The Empire attacked us, stole all we hold dear. And you would have me save them from war? Damasca would be the battlefield. What if Nethysite were used on Rabinaster? You know my brother would do this. <sighs> Forgive me. I presumed over much. I could think of no other way to avoid bloodshed. If you cannot trust me, then... Please, take me as your hostage. Rustler. You saw him, didn't you? Like at the King's tomb. So you did see him too, but why? It's strange. Before, I didn't even know what you looked like. And the prince? I barely knew there was a prince. Who knows? Maybe the person I saw was my brother. Bosch told me about him. He enlisted right at the end. But for what? He knew he couldn't win. To protect something. How can he protect anything when he's dead? Was it different from Prince Rassler? Did that make sense? Hating the Empire, getting revenge, it's all I ever thought about. But I never did anything about it. I mean, I realized there was nothing I could do. It made me feel hollow, alone. And then, I'd miss my brother. I'd say stuff like, I'm gonna be a sky pirate, or some other stupid thing. Just anything to keep my mind off it. I was just... I was running away. I needed to get away from his death. That's why I followed you. You know what? I'm through with it. I'm through running. 
I'm ready to find my purpose. To find some real answers. Some reasons. If I stick with you, I think I will. I wish I knew. I'll find them. I will accompany you to Mount Boromises. I had hoped you'd say yes. I'm glad. My heart is not set. I still have questions. I hope to find answers along the way. I had other reason to invite you. There is someone I'd like you to meet waiting on Boromises. Who is that? An enemy. And an ally also. You will just have to wait and see for yourself. That Larsa likes his secrets. He does not mean ill by it. He's not bad. At least for an Imperial. Holy Mount Buromi Seis stands at the northern end of the Yagd Ramuda. Once we're in Yacht, we need not fear pursuit by their airships. Don't get your hopes up. You remember the Leviathan sailed straight over the Yacht Yensa, right up to Rathal's tomb. Skystone that works even in Yacht. You know, Nethersite's behind it. Little wonder they're so keen on the stuff. And what is it you're after, Balthier? You're a welcome hand and a great aid, but why? Worried I'm out to steal the Nethersite, eh? Can't say I'm unaccustomed to people doubting my intentions. Nothing could be further from my mind. Shall I swear by your sword or some such? Apologies. But I needed to know where you stand. Her Majesty depends on you. And you seem to have an interest in the stone. I'm only here to see how the story unfolds. Any self-respecting leading man will do the same. Can we get a curved crossbow as a parting gift? That you will sell for much. Yeah, Gil, Gil, and Gilligan. Whenever we can, we go ahead. Whenever we can, we want to travel by Chocobo, which is just the fastest way to go about things. Yeah, the only weapons we actually are going to need or use in the run are staves to increase magic damage and guns to well have melee damage but me tis the only course. We because must avoid a weapons the deal cost. damage Yet I fear which I is not based off of your levels you will do the same damage no matter which level you are which is perfect for, for this me and for you. run but for Dalmasca, this hope. yeah this game has all sorts of different <laughs> weapon types with all sorts of different properties and guns are the ones that are non-level dependent and they're great for a run like this where you're all low level never did i forget my nightly vows but that's still much later in the run. But now we're on uh, using lots of magic. Any shame, I would bear it proudly. I could not defend my home. What is shame to me? My people hate the Empire. They will not accept this. There is hope. All right. Don't Hope for a future where we can join that, hands I as brothers. <laughs> Larsa, please. This is serious. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be Larsa. Somebody's got to put him in his place.
The Senate may play at intrigue, but Lord Vane is not one to be brought down easily. The entire military waits upon his orders, from the War Council down to the rank and file. What better blade than he to strike down the enemies of the Empire? Your Honor reminds me of Zet two years since. He, too, put his trust in Lord Vane's strength, and what became of him? Gone without a trace since Nabudis. I will not hear you malign, Judge Sect. He was a noble warrior. Or do you think his trust in Lord Vane ill-placed? Vane took two of his own brother's lives. He is ruthless beyond contempt. Ruthless, you say? Would he were more so? He gives traitors no quarter, be they of his own blood. How fitting for one who would bear the burden of empire. But could we bear him? Zagabath, what of you? Surely you do not believe his brothers were traitors? So found his excellency, Lord Gramis. You would do well to mind your tongue, Drace. That matter is long past. Your Honours, a summons. Lord Vane has arrived at the palace. We come at once. Lord Larsa has left for Boromises. He hopes to enlist the aid of the Grand Kiltius in stopping the insurgents. I doubt this will be enough to deter Ondor, but even a slight hindrance to his operations would be welcome. This will delay the Rosarian invasion, and we will have bought much needed time to shore up our defenses. Just as His Excellency had hoped. No matter the result, I'm pleased with the young Lord's progress. I can already see the stunned faces of those mud-witted senators. The fools think a child emperor's strings easy to pull from the shadows. But they will find that Lord Larsa is no puppet. Yes, the senators would be most pleased with a puppet for an emperor. Recall, Drace, how the Senate fears and despises Lord Vane's ability. When they realize the truth, that Lord Larsa is no docile lamb to be shepherded, they will bare their teeth and devour him. You're right. I shall speak on this matter with His Excellency at once. Gabranth, it falls to us to protect Lord Larsa. Are we agreed? Aye. What is it? The jungle denies us our passage. What have we done? We? No. I. What's that mean? How are we supposed to get through that? Making an appearance. Come on, I am... I'm talking over here. I thought you'd left for good. Hey! Our choices are few. Friend? Both here! This is as much for you as it is me. Oh? You are ill at ease. The Nethersite troubles you. You've let your eyes betray your heart. Right. What are you doing? Soon you will learn. Whoa. Get to visit the Viera. We go to seek aid of the Viera who dwell ahead. 
I bet they'll be glad to see you after so long. I am unwelcome, an unsought guest in their wood. In the village ahead, you will find her, Yern. Bring her to me. She will know why you call her. My impression is that Viera name convention is just pick four letters and then figure out how to pronounce it afterwards. That thought actually never crossed my mind, but you're right. <laughs> Fran, Mieren, Yote. Yeah. And if you have names of Mieren, then it's like, well... It doesn't look very pronounceable, but if those four letters are chosen, you just make it work. At least Fran and Yote are... Worked out pronounceable. You think Mieren is not pronounceable? <laughs> Yet I am pronouncing Mieren. Yes, but it's still like. It is certainly a day. Hey, Mieren lives here, doesn't she? We're here to see her. You would leave at once. It is not allowed for humans to walk on these grounds. We'll go as soon as we've seen Mjern. If you can find her. We're not leaving until you let us see her. Hmm. Fine then. We'll look for her ourselves. Ah. I've heard the voice of the wood. She says Mieren is not in the village. Jyote, where has she gone? Why do you ask? The wood tells us where she has gone. Or can you not hear her? You cannot. Your ears are dull from hearing their harsh speech, I think. Viera, who have abandoned the wood, are Viera no longer. Mjörn, too, has left her embrace. And you forsake them in turn? It is the will of the village. Viera must live always with the wood. So is the green word, and so is our law. We'll let you worry about keeping your laws. Just do us a favor and stay out of our way. We'll find her ourselves. Our sister has left the wood and gone west. She wanders warrens among men who hide themselves in clothes of cold iron. Thus to me has the wood spoken. The Viera may begin as part of the wood, but the wood is not the only end we may choose. The same words I heard fifty years ago. What? 50 years ago? No way!
Not bad, Vaughn. Didn't think we'd get any information out of that one. So then, what was she saying about men in a warren? The Henomagicite mines. Maybe that's what she meant. They lie in Bancor, south of the Osmoan Plain. The entire region is a colony of the Arcadian Empire. There would be soldiers. Is that a problem? Let's move. Fran. Yes? I was wondering what Yote said, you know? About how you said the same thing 50 years ago? Your point? Uh, how old were you again? Uh, nice fun. Oh, surprisingly rude. Try to grow up, please. In defense of Vaughn here, I believe everyone was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But everyone uses him as a punching bag. Everyone wanted to ask the same question. So, cut him some slack. Also, he's a teenager. Come on. Every one of you who judges Juan was probably once worse than him. Yeah. Alright, now I'm buying some mage setup with Tandara. It's time for the trial grind. Oh. <laughs> and Nella will be one of her mages, so I now make sure she can wear the equipment I just bought for her and actually cast Tandara, which is also a spell I just bought. And the storm stuff, which works well in combination with thunder damage. What's really good about trials is that the trial of the stages all include enemies that give a incredible amount of license points, which means you can grind license points really, really fast. Yes, and both here I just set up to uh, steal stuff, so we also hopefully get some money that way. Use that auto save to go into trial mode. Well, yeah, the main damage will come from Panello Custom Tandara right now. Oh, yeah, uh, as a little thing, I didn't uh, touch on this the other times Madeline was in trials before. But uh, being able to take stuff with you from Trials is something that is unique to the Zodiac Age. Because in the original, once you were in Trials, you were unable to get back out of it. Uh, so, in other words, once you started Trials, you were stuck in Trials in the original. Or, it, not in the original, in the ICJS release. As in the original, the Trials mode didn't even exist. However, in Zodiac Gauge, since you have autosaves after every single stage, you can just load the autosave from the from a regular save file, and then everything you've taken from the trial mode, you've taken into the main game. Yeah. Also got some extra lights on Penel that make her even more capable as a mage, so stuff that makes her spells more powerful, the magic lures is that, and then also um, licenses that say that you get back MP if you either damage enemies or kill enemies, which really helps because we don't have that much MP, MP due to being low level, so it really helps that we gain it back during the battles as well that way. And now I also Make sure I have enough equipment to also start setting up Ash as a mage soon. I 
She will also become a black mage. Right now she doesn't have the license points yet to fully set her up. So we'll make sure she starts getting more license points by now having it be her turn to wear the golden amulet. But I quickly give her the licenses. I got before for Prunello as well. To make sure Ash can now wear the golden amulet. And I switch it over to Ash. So now Ash's license points again will be doubled from these trials. Also, the first trial stage, we always pick up the diamond armor because it six, sells for 6,000 gil. That's which is quite a lot. And on the third trial, we run over back here for this enemy because that one gives a lot of license points. Now we start also setting up Ash as a mage as well. So essentially get the same license that we got before for Penelo, where she can now wear, wear the proper mage equipment. Storm stuff as well. Yes. Learn the Tandara spell. And War Mage, which gives back some MP when she deals damage. And grip all that stuff on her. And set up her gambit to be casting Tandara. So now we have two mages dealing damage. Well, above here still tries to steal some stuff. And with two mages we can even do the seventh stage of trials, which will be the last one we do in each of these sets. Between trials, I'm making sure I create a new outfit for the next set of trials and also touch the crystal to make sure all our MP is back. And now I also get some license on Bash, will be our tank of this run. And to do this properly and get all the licenses he needs, he will need a bunch of license points, which is why we now want to switch over the golden amulet to him. So I now get the licenses, so he can wear the golden amulet, so his uh, license points will be doubled for the rest of the trials that we do. I already start setting up a bit of what we get for him. Mostly right now a bit of uh, extra HP licenses. So now go now close to Bosch. Touch the crystal to get back MP for our mages. And now we have four more sets of trials to go. So these four will, will be pretty much the same thing. And that will basically give us uh, enough license points to work with for the rest of the round. Pick up the diamond armlet because it's worth 6,000 gil. Here I go to the enemy in the back because that one is one that gives particularly many license points.
So yeah, these trials go down pretty quickly because we have two of these mages set up. Of course, the buff here only there for the steals. And Larsa is quite handy to have as a guest at this point. Because he is basically taking care of healing duty. Three more. Just with Dark Dark, Dwarf Seeds of Skill. Go to the enemy in the back. So stuff that Bob here is hopefully stealing in the meanwhile is mostly stuff that we sell, right? Actually, I think all of it is well, some items as well, but mostly we're hoping for stuff to, uh, for equipment that we then just uh, can sell for money. Okay, two more to go. One of the most valuable things that you can steal if you're lucky, very lucky, is the Kalkada. That's only 3% chance per time we do this trial thingy. Which is on the third stage. And this round we won't be able to use it, though it's a powerful weapon, but it still sells for 10k gil. But it would be a lot of money. Okay, only one more set to go. And then we're fully done with trials for the entire one. Get our 6k kill. this back Done. 
Okay, and sell those 5,000 terminals we got from those trials. Some equipment. By nuclear intent, which cures Confuse. Gold needles cure uh, Petrify. This will be best if I'm only hit the potions. And then we actually teleport our way back to Jahara. This will be both the most convenient way to go to the next location, but also I want to do a little bit more shopping here. Essentially, we buy the rest of the equipment we want for our characters. Main Lush for Bosch. Flame stops for the mages once they start using fire damage. Pink red. Ice shield for Bosch for our tank. Scap. And I want to have some high potions on hand. That's the main way of healing is high potions right now. And now I want to spend all those license points I got from all those trials. And Van will be our reflect caster. He also gets a little bit of equipment uh, license there because we want to have an equipment that slightly raises his MP so he actually has enough MP to cast reflect on everyone. But his job is just cast reflect on everyone before a fight. Now Balfir Fran will be uh, mostly used in the late game, so we'll not see the quite of much of them yet. But they will be our gun users. And the good thing about guns is that their damage does not depend on level at all, which makes them very useful for a run like this. And right now, take the license I get for of here are just equipment he needs, so the license for the guns he will be using later, and the armor will be using later. So we use a machinist job for that. And then he has the second job, Shikari. That gives him access, among other things, to the swiftness licenses, which uh, makes actions take less time, so it makes it a little bit faster. Uh, yes, this should be another swiftness. And also, a very handy license we get is the adrenaline ability, which makes him deal more damage if he is low HP. So, we'll deliberately have our gun users in low HP to get this damage boost from the adrenaline license. And for Fran, I basically get the same licenses again. She will also be a gun user. We'll also start using Adrenaline. This all looks very similar just to what we saw for Buff here. She also gets these swiftness licenses to make her faster. You're also really using this jumping around there. If you have a license activated on one board, it also becomes active on the other, and then you can on the other board also activate the licenses adjacent to that. Again, get a tournament for her as well. And Bosch will be our tank for the run. And he will need lots and lots of HP for that, which is why he has the monk job. Which gives some license that gives really big uh, HP boost. So after this menu, he will be around 2500 HP, even though he's still a level 3 character. And we also want him 
to set them up better as a tank, we also have the Shikara job, which gives access to the main gosh, which helps uh, blocking zones, but also just shields. So we got the ice shield, we got the licenses to improve the ice shield. We have uh, these shield block licenses with the increases block chance. So we will be a proper shield user. He also gets potion lures 1, 2, and 3, which uh, makes potions resort by, uh, more, more uh, to heal better. Because the main thing that Bash does is he'll uh, throw potions on himself to keep himself alive. So it's just a meat shield that throws potions on himself. Oh, this one. And then there's Ash and Penelo, who we already saw in action during the trials as mages. Basically, we now I'm improving how good Ash is as a mage. So get this, all these different magic lore licenses which increases her magic. Serenity makes her deal more damage when she's uh, max HP. Just something Penelo has as well. So, the lices between Arsh and Penelo look very simpler with some small differences. We also get few swiftness licenses for the mages to help them be a little bit more fast. And we also get Spellbounds, which increases the duration of status effects, which help increase the duration of Reflect in particular, to make sure Reflect lasts long enough. Or the fights where we use that strategy. That was very similar. Also get more magic lures. That's also channeling, which reduces MP cost of spells a little bit. We also get that for both of them. Also a slight bit of extra HP to help them be a bit more uh, resilient. And Penelo will also learn to cast the spell Decoy. She will be the one to cast Decoy on Bash, which is the spell that makes enemies target Bash if he has Decoy. I'm having suspiciously much by spoils still. What am I forgetting? Oh, this one. Of course. We also need Spellbound, yes. But yes, you can also cast Decoy, which you will do on Bash. Equipment. A lot of equipment on Bash, which we bought. And then set up their Gambits. So... Uh, one's job is to cast Reflect on people. Nello should be casting decoy on Bash, which turns Bash to the target for enemies. And we also have a gambit for throwing Nukai Sands. Nukai Sands curves Confuse. We'll be fighting enemies that can cause Confuse soon, and then it's useful to have and it's set up for that to cure that. The bar should also cure anyone who has confused with the new guy's end. Otherwise, he should also throw high potions on those that are a bit low on HP. And if he isn't busy with that, we want him to cast potions on Penelo and Ash. Um, on high health. For each of them. Preferably the mages are in max health because they, do, they have a license that makes them deal more damage when they are in max health. And that's the full setup. So that was a big menu. Now we can... So you have the story, finally. Make our way to the mines. <sighs> hmm. 
researchers from the Draclaw Laboratory. What were they doing here? Research. Also, when we run through uh, areas, we typically only have Bosch in the party because he's the one that has actual HP. So, like, one way to prevent enemies from targeting, uh, from attacking anyone besides our tank is by having the tank be the only person there. But that's why it's useful to run through with the tank only. He, he, he can take the ten tanks. Last I cannot take the attacks. It's fine. I expect him to die on this part. We will revive him soon once we're actually here. We're doing a little bit of grinding here actually. And the reason is for money. There's enemies here. The jellies. We have quite a bit of uh, good drops that we can sell for quite a bit of money. Especially when the chain is high. So this game has this chain mechanic where if you kill multiple of the same enemy, the chain increases like you see in the bottom right. You first want the chain to get very high to get the best drops. So how good your drops are depending on the chain level. Right now I don't have high enough chain level left to get good drops. So it actually for some reason the chain level will increase faster if you pick up less uh, of the stuff that's already there which is why I'm not picking up drops yet as much as possible first want to have the max chain level which you can see by the color of the chain number so here again more jellies and once I see sort of orgy numbers do I get max drop chain level? yes now I have max chain level with orange numbers now I can pick up everything now I should be getting good drops and it's mostly money but uh, I also get some teleport stones from this which yeah every time you teleport from one crystal another it takes a stone so we need a few of those it's mostly the yellow liquids I'm looking for which is uh, the ones that sell for about 500 gil per piece quite a bit at least especially I have a lot of them I usually like to revive Larsa just because he helps with the healing. Mostly the mage is dealing with the damage. And every time I do a room like that, I need to be uh, one extra room away before they can respawn, which is why I have to sometimes flee past the dinosaurs, even though that can sometimes be scary. The dinosaurs can sometimes kill you. And you lose chain if that happens. But that's bad. Want to chain high. It's the mages that really deal all the damage. You have to kill all these many jellies quickly and really kill many jellies at once and get all the drops from them, which is a bunch of money. Each time you need to be one extra room away. Then go back to the room and once you activate the switch, more jellies will appear. We grind it for money. Also, jellies is the last time you see us do any sort of grinding in this run. After that, we're fully set up and good to go.
Daily grinding is also done in the regular. 20% version of the run there. It also gives a bunch of levels and is good for that as well. But we don't get any experience, so for us it's purely the money. Overall, the time difference between new game minus and regular new game is not even that big. It may be 10 to 15 minutes. But overall, not being able to level is much less of a handicap than you might think. Which I think is pretty cool. But quite a nice run. The tactics are very different between 20% and new game minus here and there, but time difference is not that big. But it's, it adds a nice extra challenge to not be allowed to level up. It's a run I quite enjoy. Okay, what's the chain at now? I think after this I check the menu to see how many drops we have and see if we have enough gear to go for the rest of the run. Chain is quite high already, so we should have already. Loot, 84 yellow liquids, uh, I want slightly more. I think I do one more room and then we can continue and then all the grinding is done. And for the last room I decided to go back the non-dinosaur way. I have returned. You have timed your lunch break well. You just skip <laughs> skip the grinding parts and then be there for uh, most of the story. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that was be really well typed because there was not, or at least for my part, too much to explain for strategies and whatnot. <clears throat> Since uh, most of the uh, grind is just the same. Yeah. That was the jellies for money. <laughs> can actually continue. No more grinding. I mean, the grinding is my least favorite part of the run because it's a bit. Better. Look at the magicite. These mines much resemble the ones at Lusu. Of course. Draclaw must be searching for new sources of ore. Should the resistance forces move, the rich veins of Magicite and Bujeba will be forever beyond their grasp. <gasps> so the next boss coming up is quite a dangerous one. Is it her? What is this mist? Mostly hope to not see this elk. <laughs> This stench of humes. This stench of power. What's wrong with her? Stay, Stay away, away, power needy power hume. Needy hume. The way Miren just walks away is so... I don't know. Yeah. Van will be casting Reflect on everyone. That's his job. Canelo casts Decoy on Bash, so he gets to be the target of things. Uh, uh, and at this party of our mages, let's Reflect and... And we do the casting spells on self now. So the idea is to do the reflect thing again, where party has reflect on them, and so the characters cast reflect on ourselves, which hits all four characters, and this makes the four copies, so to say, of the spell all reflect back to this boss Tiamat. 
to sort of quadruple our damage that way. But this buff can be quite dangerous, mostly because it can also cause Disable Ga, which makes characters unable to act, which is a problem. So, see if he does it. Ooh. It, only on Larsa. I don't care about Larsa. Larsa doesn't need to do stuff. That went well. But yeah, once Disable hits the, the casters, then you might be under damaging before Reflect kind of turns out of and Or if it hits Bosch, then he might not be able to throw high potions on himself to keep him alive. So it can go really wrong if the wrong character gets disabled, but right now it was only on Larsa, and Larsa is not doing anything besides being an extra Reflect to cast off of. But it was fortunate. That was kind of a nice tier mod. I've seen it way, way worse. As in, him behaving way, way worse. Yeah. There was also the breath going on, that's just a subtle thing where sometimes you try to be away from the rest with Bosch when breath happens, so breath doesn't hit everyone. Right now, I think breath still had hit uh, Gossers as well, so. Didn't do it that exactly properly, but luckily the disabled guy missed. Except for Larsa. Disabled guy is the, the scary thing that TM does. I've definitely died on this fight before. That thing inside her, what was it? Is it you? <sighs> when the Hume soldiers came to the wood, the village took small heed of them. So long as the wood herself is safe from harm, the Viera give little care to goings on beyond her. But in me, an uneasiness stirred. I had to discover why they had come. So you came here hoping to find something out and got yourself caught. You're as foolhardy as your sister. They took me then and set close beside me a stone. They said its mist would be drawn into me, that the Viera well suited this end. I saw the light coming from the stone, and then... We have seen this. On Leviathan, the mist released from the Dawn Shard drove me too into such a rage. She was taken not by the Dawn Shard. Manufactured Nethocyte. Then that means... Panella, the stone I gave you. Do you still carry it with you? Sure, it's right here. <laughs> this is a thing more dangerous again than I had imagined. I should never have given it to you. Forgive me, I, I didn't know. I'd always thought of it as sort of a good luck charm. And even if it is dangerous, on Leviathan it kept us safe. There is a place for all things, even danger such as this. I hope you're right about that. I heard the woods whispers. Take it. Lente's tear is a permission. Pass through the wood and leave. Two other places go. That cannot be all. I saw it when I left the village. Ivalice is changing. How can the Viera stand and do nothing at all? 
Evil East is for the Humes. The wood alone is for us. But that is wrong! How can we just hide here in the trees, when all the world outside is on the move? I too wish to live freely. To leave this wood. Do not do this. You must remain away from the Humes. Stay with the wood. Live together with the wood. This is your way. But Fran, my sister... I am no longer of you. I have discarded wood and village. I won my freedom. Yet my past has been cut away forever. No longer can my ears hear the green word. This solitude you want, Mieren? Sister. No, Mieren. Only one sister remains to you now. You must forget my existence. <laughs> I am sorry to make you do this. She goes against the laws of the wood. I threw down these laws. It is better that I do this. Better I than one who must uphold these laws herself. I have a request. Listen to the wood's voice for me. I fear... I fear she hates. The wood longs for you, for the child gone from under her boughs. A pleasant lie, that. Be cautious. The wood is jealous of the humes who have taken you. I am as them now. Am I not? Goodbye, sister. I personally think that Fran just really wants Mjorn to be safe, and right now the village is much more safe than going outside. I think that's quite... I think that might have to do why she says what she says against Mjorn. Especially in the mines, Mjorn didn't look that safe. Now, so, make haste to Mount where Omer says. Yes. Usually, you would have to go through a a boss fight called the Elder Worm. But luckily, there is a way um, around the Elder Worm. You can circ circumvent the Elder Worm by going through the Feywood, which will also link back to the Perimeter Rift. And this way you can skip one of the most annoying bosses. <clears throat> yes. By just taking a little detour. Indeed. I don't even know how I would fight that boss with my current setup. So to be able to skip it is quite nice. Like Tiamat is also like a worm type enemy and those have quite a bit of HP. So to handle that with the current magic strats, like at some point you run out of MP. And on Tiamat we can... Kind of just make it work. 
But then that other worm is getting even more HP, I think. That would be get quite tricky. Empires parade down city streets while refugees walk barefoot through the snow. And so I sue for peace, to stop short war and ease their suffering. My father will choose peace. Will he now? You sound sure of yourself. You can never know another, even your father. Don't take it the wrong way, okay? Uh. This crisis would not end were I gone. The Senate hates the very fact that House Solidor exists. By necessity, we must find reason to silence them. Necessity? Ah, yes, necessity. Does that word free you, I wonder? You show no hesitation to solve matters with blood. The sword of House Solidor cannot be left to rust in doubt. It was you, Excellency, who tempered that sword. Is this your idea of vengeance? It is my idea of necessity. <sighs> if we do not act now, it is not only our future you imperil. So, you would dirty your hands to keep his clean. My hands are stained with blood. I see little reason to stay them now. <sighs> so they are. And so how solid all lives on. Is he sleeping? No, my child. Whoa. I do not sleep. I dream. For reality and illusion are a duality. Two parts of a whole. Only the mirror of dreams reflects what is true. Anastasis, your grace. I am Lay a Shelia. Lay down your words. 
Ashalia, daughter of Ramanas. I have dreamt your dream. Who better to carry on the Dalmascan line than she who bears the Dawn Shard? Your dream of a kingdom restored is known to me. Grand Kiltius, then give us your blessing. Grant the Lady Ash her I accession to the... This is something you might reconsider. My little emperor in waiting. You called and I have come. Uh, this is the man I wanted you to meet. Believe it or not, he is a member of the noble house Margrace, rulers of the Rosarian Empire. I am but one of very, very many. Try as I might, I could not stop this war alone. Thus, I came seeking Lars's assistance. I'll seat Margrace at your service. To think I stand before the Lady Ash, it is truly an honor. Uh. I see it is true after all. Uh, stunning is Dalmasca's desert bloom. Uh. In Arcadia, Larsa. In Rosaria, Al Cid. They dream not of war. Should Empire join with Empire, the way will open for a new Ivelis in our time. <laughs> Grand Kiltius, you speak much of dreams, but in the real world, war is upon us. Grand Kiltius, I was told my coming here would prevent this war. I was to assume my father's throne and announce the restoration of Dalmasca, treat with the Empire for peace, and persuade the Resistance to stay their hand. I have not come all this way to be asked to reconsider. A word from you and the Resistance would stop cold, and Rosario's pretext for joining the war scattered off to the four winds. This was what we had hoped. Alas, circumstances change. A full two years have passed since your reported death. Were it to become known you are still alive, I fear it could only worsen our current situation. Because I am powerless to help. Uh, nay, in fact it has little to do with you. Then what? If Lady Ash were to extend her hand in friendship, perhaps I could then persuade the Emperor. His Excellency will solve things peacefully. The Emperor Gramis is no more. His life was taken. Father. What possible cause could we have to lay hand on our emperor? A deception and an outrage. The Senate will not stand for this. A viper amongst our senators? Is Chairman Gregoroth as its head. With what dignity remained him, he confessed to the poisoning and passed his own sentence. A viper with many tails. Much of the Senate is culpable. We had no choice but to strip the Senate of authority and assign powers of autocracy to myself until such time as order... Spare me your lies! I see the serpent coiled here before me! Grace, you speak too freely. Zargabath! Do not tell me you join in his mama's farce! With Rosaria poised to invade at any moment, our leader must have a free hand. <sighs> The once great House Solidor is now reduced to myself and my dear brother Larsa. Surely you would not go so far. Vain Solidor! As Judge Magister and upholder of the law, I hereby place you under arrest. You misunderstand. Vain did not make himself autocrat. It was the very Ministry of Law which you serve. Do you see it now, Drace? When you bared your sword at His Excellency, you bared your sword at the law. You wear the mummers motley well, Bergen. Strength. 
Inhuman. <sighs> Zargabath, take the Alexander. You will accompany Bergen and bring Larsa back to me. Sire. Your Excellency, Lord Larsa was placed under my charge. Oh? Perhaps you mistook your orders, then? I can see no other explanation for why you were reporting and conjecturing on my doings to my late father. Your Excellency. A hound begging for scraps at the Emperor's table. Would you serve another master, hound? You may fulfill your duty as Judge Magister before us all. She has been tried and found guilty. Your Excellency, I beg you reconsider. Do it. I care not. Live, Gabranth. Protect the young lord. Protect Larsa. Forgive me. Pray be quick. And so, how Solidor lives on. Let us suppose you approach the Empire with a peaceful resolution. The late Emperor Grammys would have lent you his ear, that much is certain, but we are dealing with vain Solidor. Should the princess return, he would claim her an imposter, or to tempt the resistance into battle. Vane wants this war, that much is certain. As our ill luck would have it, the man is a military genius. The dreams have told me thus. To reveal yourself would imperil us all. I see war, and Vane's name writ bold on history's page. Arcadia's banners fly high. They are making ready for the coming war. According to our latest reports, the Western Armada prepares for war under Vane's command, no less. The newly formed 12th Fleet has already been deployed. Oh yes, the Imperial First Fleet sends ready. They'll be underway as soon as the Odin's refit is complete. And there is more. The second Caravan Expeditionary Force is being called in to replace the missing eighth, so there will be no gaps. The largest force ever seen! And then, the Nethocyte is the coup de grace. Grand Kiltius, your grace. I spoke to you of my succession. Let us put that aside. Should I become Queen of Damascus now, powerless as I am, I can protect nothing. With a greater power at my disposal, perhaps then. It is the Nethesite of which you dream? I require something far greater. To wield power against power. Truly the words of a Hume child. I am descended from the Dynast King himself. Indeed, then you have but one choice. Seek you the other power Wraithwall left. Does such a thing exist? Journey across the Paramana Rift to the still shrine of Miriam. There rests the gift he entrusted to the Grand Kiltius of his time. Seek it out. 
The Sword of Kings can cut through Nethesite. Why he would entrust the power to destroy Nethesite, the instrument of his greatness, to another and not to his own progeny, I cannot say. Awaken Hashelia Benagan and take up your sword or your dream will remain but a dream. So it is the front of Miriam. And Larson for some reason left. Well, we his father no. just died. Give him some time. I mean, if you go by that logic, then Vaughn's brother died. Like Vaughn's but... brother died two years ago. Still, and people <laughs> are still shitting on him for the way he is. I mean, I, I gotta defend him here, like, come on! Touching the crystal to get the teleport point, and then talking to Gertie to get the chocobo, and then... ...making haste... ...towards the steel shrine of Midian. Yeah. The one difference between... PC and other platforms is that on PC these sprints actually take longer than I used to when I run this on PlayStation 5. Which means you have to use them quicker to make sure you get full use out of them. I actually have no idea why they're longer. I appreciate it, but I just don't know why they're longer. I wonder if it's an FPS bound thing. <clears throat> Also, I've previously equipped the Dawn Shard on Bash. Reason is that this is a, this whole shrine is is related to King Ravel, and you need to have proof that you're sufficiently related to him to be order to uh, progress to this dungeon. So, this next pedestal that I touch, it only properly works if you have the Dawn Shard equipped, which I have. Otherwise, it will spawn some zombies instead of uh, doing the teleport thing like it should do. This pedestal so makes off to continue further. That's a lot of HP Bosch got there. Yep. Lots of HP lies is from the monk job. The monk job really has this license of plus 500 HP license, plus 350 HP license. It really adds up. And I mean, you kinda only need like 2.2k throw to run mostly. Yeah, we do need this HP. He's our he's our tank. He's the one that get is going to take all the hits. Well, sometimes blocks the hits. Also has a shield. Oh, that would explain why you're not fleeing, so you can actually block most of the attacks. Yeah, it differs what I prefer to do per where I am. Because you do have block chance, but you can also get in these loops where you start blocking and therefore not advancing. But we do have quite some block chance. We have the extra shield block uh, licenses and we're using a shield and the main gosh. I guess it's time to explain about statues. 
So yeah, this uh, area, or well, not this area, this dungeon, the Steel Shrine has a, a... Can you call it a mini game? A, okay, I would say so, or a puzzle. Uh, which are these statues? Uh, these statues have to point towards the center of the Steel Shrine of Medium. Because that's where the statue, the big one, that we saw the start when entering Steel Shrine, was located. And you saw Madalon interacting with, like, the big sword of that statue. And after interacting, that opened the door. And that basically activated a couple of doors that you were previously not able to open up. And now you can, with interacting the statues, if you turn them, all three of them, into the right direction, towards the center, um, if you would open the map, you could see how uh, the statues are turned, the ones you've already interacted with. And once they, uh, all three look in, um, face towards the center, the big statue with the sword will actually be activated and will lift the sword up so you can actually get through there and access the place that is basically sealed off. Yeah, I just opened the overlay map and you can actually see the arrows. Usually I don't do that here, but we want to see. There's one more statue behind this boss battle here. And uh, the boss battle that uh, Madeline is about to do is Venuscar. And with Decoy, Reflect and a bunch of Thundara casts. A bunch? It only costs three casts. These fights are so fast, it's really nice to see. Three rounds of casting and uh, also dead because of uh, reflecting back. Mm -hmm. To be honest, though, I think Venuscar might be the easiest boss fight in the entire game. It's definitely easiest of this sequence of reflect casting. Oh, that was boss. Oh yeah, uh, Venuscar has. A little icon during the battle um, that you might saw, like a magnet. This basically means whenever you have uh, heavy armor equipped, which is metallic, whenever you have heavy armor equipped, it will slow you down. Which and for this strategy is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, which is which which is its gimmick, but uh, yeah, I think oh, I'm not sure anymore. I, I could swear I've seen this before in the Ultima fight, as um, when you fight Ultima, the es one of the 13 espers, which is a side content esper. It's one of the last things that Ultima can cycle through. You have like HP drain, MP drain, no attacks, no spells, no techniques, no items. And I think once you're all through of those, the last thing I think is... Uh, the magnet field, if I remember correctly. So, with that, all three uh, statues face towards the center, and thus the sword will be lifted, and access to whatever lies behind the big statue's sword will be granted. Yeah, we now make our way to the next boss, Matthias. Again, we will use this Reflect Sprout. Make sure everyone is Reflect. Bosch is uh, decoy, so he's the target of the enemies. Also, for the next one, this is one where positioning starts to matter. Because the way Reflect works is, is because you're casting on yourself, you're not directly choosing to whom it goes. But it goes to the closest enemy, so we need to make sure that the closest enemy is the actual boss and not the ice azer surrounding it. Mm. 
more than one run has died here because the character was too close to an enemy that was not the boss. And yeah. then and he ran out. So yeah, here's... positioning is very important. Yeah, here it's actually quite doable to get them in a good position. So I already buff up here. And then when I revert, Matei should go forward a bit. Like this. And then should quite easily be the closest. And then it's three rounds of casting again. Yeah, it's good to already have seen that positioning matters here. Because on the next boss we again use Reflex Trots. And there the... Positioning gets more tricky. Um, Bergen, there's these other soldiers as well. Fun fact, in the international version, ICJS, uh, level 1 spells, as in Fire, Blizzard, Thunder, and Cure, are for some reason made AOE, as in they are multi-target spells, for whatever reason, but they reversed that change for the Zodiac Age, which I don't understand, but I think it's better, because Mateus is extremely difficult in IZGS. The reason why, uh, you have, besides Mateus, you have all these Ice Acers casting Blizzard, like five of them, and instead of five Ice Acers casting five different Blizzards only hitting one character, you have five Ice Acers casting five Blizzards, and they all hit every character. So you basically have 15 Blizzard casts for one round of Blizzard casts, which is insane. Um, this strategy, at least I would reflect back. looks like they ignore reflect oh and that's the problem ah that that's that's why in icgs the strat is to actually have what is it use both here cast traveler to get rid of the ice azers and once they're gone you can actually do the regular strat you should try on which is Dawn super shot. super annoying see if you can destroy nethicide or not what he just may be onto something the Dawn Shard's no use to us, after all. The stone bleeds mist. It has been roused. It fears the sword. The stone is quiet. Way to go, Ash. This is the sword. The I mean, it was right destroyer. there. Should it find its mark? Should it find its mark? Buffy was right. Did you see him again? I didn't. Beautiful. Not a thing. Not even my brother. Not... not anything. And now Adalon is on the way back to Mount Promises, trying to, uh, well, meet up with the Grand Keltius again. However, on the way out, the party will realize something. Something is off. 
Something's not good. Debts grow legion. <gasps> there. Smile. What could it mean? Already do need to do the setup here. The last area before the, the next boss, where you're sort of in a area where you know, don't see just a uh, van. So we apply decoy and reflect on Bosch. And the next part includes a boss fight that. Some people consider extremely annoying. Well, and I do agree, boss fight is really annoying. But the boss itself has a really cool sounding speech. And I just want to point towards the localization again and say what a phenomenal job they did with the English localization. Absolutely incredible. Swift as your lust for revenge led you to the Sword of Kings. <sighs> you will surrender it to me. Too late and to their sorrow do those who misplace their trust in gods learn their fate. There it is again. Fran, I don't like the look of that. This mist. He holds a stone. It controls him as it did Mjern. No, no, the power of manufactured netherite is the power of man. A weapon forged by his wisdom who would challenge the gods themselves. A fitting blade for a true dynast king. Wraithwall did but pretend the title, a cur begging netherite scraps from his master's table. Hark! Ivalice hails her true dynast king, Vain Solidor. He shall defy the will of the gods and see the reins of history back in the hands of man. His time is nigh! The new Ivalice holds no place for the name down Masca. The stain of Wraithwall's blood shall be washed clean from history's weave. Now we just need to be careful with the positioning. Okay, that works out well. Because if this fight takes too long, it gets... Uh, if the fight takes a little bit longer than that, you start seeing one of the mages die and uh, it gets out of hand. Let's 
was also our first use of a dispel mode to this debuff the enemy. About with manufactured netherside. The Grand Kiltius? Remove the buff from the enemies. Wait, what about Larsa? Gone. Spirited away by Jutschka Brandt. You okay? <laughs> so he was here. Ah, as for our young lordling, he went along to avoid trouble, you see, but Judge Bergen had other ideas. He flew into a rage, and I was left to fend for myself. Please, Princess, you must permit me to take you back with me to Rosaria. So that you can protect me? I would lay down my life at a single word to be sure, but I harbor no maundering delusions of valiant grandeur. Vain has our war pavilion jumping at shadows. They favor a preemptive strike, but you, you will convince them otherwise. You will see that they do not start this war. This I cannot do. Forgive me, but my errand here is not yet done. I must wield the Sword of Kings, and with it bring an end to the Dusk Shard. <sighs> This stone, do you even know what it is? I can venture a guess. The Draclaw Laboratory in Arcades. The Empire's weapons research begins and ends there. How soon do we leave? At once. As for matters in Rosaria, I bid you luck. <laughs> so you would leave each to fend for his own. Let us hope that you are not disappointed. <sighs> ah, that's right. Larsa left a message. The differences between our two lands will fade before the shared dream of men. <sighs> My leave, I take. How do you propose we reach Arcades? Arcadia's borders will be well guarded for fear of Rosarian invasion. We dare not approach by air. And their navy will see that the coast is watched as well. No, we go afoot. We'll cross into Arcadia in the Salica Wood. We can reach the wood any number of ways. But the easiest is to head north from Nalbana. There is a hunter's camp just beyond the Salika wood. The camp sits within Arcadia's borders, so Imperial patrols there should be sparse. Getting that far should be half the fun. Let's be sure we go prepared. Yeah, again, said Bosch is the only party member because we're just going to be a bunch past a bunch of enemies and better speed to slow, make the enemy slow as well. So we Bosch want to do a little bit of shopping here. So all those yellow liquids we got from the jelly grinding. So now I have a bunch of money. Then we can continue onwards. To the Nobina Fortress, which is a teleport stone we uh, touched way back. Yeah, like four hours ago. Yeah. Bosh, the absolute unit that he is. Carrying us. Yeah. Kind of crazy how the... The captain who was hit and, I don't know, made to believe that he was dead and a kinslayer and whatnot is now taking even more hits for the entire party. Yep. 
And now we got the Berserker Bracers. One out of two. One out of two, indeed. They will be for gun users later on. So Berserker Bracers, as the name might suggest, makes the wearer have the Berserk status. And the Berserk status makes the wearer attack at random, but it also increases uh, the damage they do. Berserk also increases the speed. Oh, speed as well. Yeah. But it's just worth pointing out that ATB does charge faster than Prism. Also, they're always in aggro mode, as in they always have their weapon out. Yeah. That's uh, another small thing. The reason why that's worth noting, when you have two characters with Berserker Bracers on and you, like, flee and they run after you, when you look on the minimap, they will slowly uh, get out of the minimap because they were, they're they not able to keep up with you <laughs> because you're faster without <laughs> your weapon out. Uh -huh. Oh, oops. And this here is the Solid Kabut, which would house uh, entrances to two very high level uh, side content areas, which you're nev never uh, exploring in an any percent setting. But uh, to get to those places, you would first have to be the boss in here, the King Bomb. But uh, since King Bomb isn't part of this, we don't have to fight him either. And now we just checked uh, how to get to the Fawn Coast, and the Fawn Coast is separated by a Mughal Gate. So we talked to the guy working on the Mughal Gate, was like, yeah... My assistants, they're slacking off in the in the huts within uh, Salika Wood. Can you please gather them? So we are made to go back to the Salika Wood and uh, to find his nine assistants. Yeah, the gate is broken. We need to find the people who can fix it. The lovely Moogles of FF12. They look quite different from other games i feel they're still they cute look though different. They, they look good they, they do look better than whatever the heck they did with the moogles in reverb i have not seen those yet i'd be surprised if you if you would think the Moogles and Rebirth look good, I'd be surprised. Or good as in they look adorable, because I don't think they look adorable. <laughs> yeah. They look rather heinous. My introduction to Moogles was FF9, and I kind of that is kind of the look I have in mind when I think of a Moogle, and that's what I tend to compare against. These look very different from FF9 Moogles. Also, what I do like about FF12's Moogles, they all have like their distinctive kind of quirks. Whereas in other FFs, their Moogles, they look exactly the same. Basically all exactly the same. Here we have variants. Yeah. And now entering the Fawn Coast and then running through Fawn Coast. In Fawn Coast, you don't really do anything but uh, go to the Fawn Coast camp, get some story stuff happening there, and then from there, run to the next place. The right choice. Not and much happening in terms of easy, uh, fighting in the Fawn Coast. One of those yeah, there's no battles, but we do some menuing in the Fawn Coast. 
at the American shop. Doorstep now, so we shouldn't have to worry quite so much. But that's no excuse to get sloppy. It is still a long road to the capital. So Volkhouse is actually where we can start upgrading towards Faraga. So far we have uh, cast Tandara. And now we switch over to a, both a higher level spell and a different element with Faraga. And we also be buying some guns for our gun users. Beach. Why the capital? The Nethysite. I must destroy it. Are you sure? You don't want it for yourself? <gasps> Use its power to restore Dalmasca? Something like that? The best intentions invite the worst kind of trouble. Lusting for ever greater power. Blinded by the Nethysite. Is that how you see me? That does sound like someone I know. He was obsessed with Nethysite. It was all he cared about. Come over here. He'd here. babble nonsense, hey! blind to aught but the Watch stone's it. power. Like I said, we talk about some Enna or was it Vena? No matter. Thank you. Everything he did, he did to get closer to the nether side, to understand it. He made airships, weapons, he even made me a judge. You were a judge? Part of a past I'd rather forget. It didn't last long. I ran, I left the judges, and him. Sidolphus Demon Bonanza, Draclo Laboratory's very own Dr. Sid. That's when he lost his heart to Nethysite, lost himself. And I suppose that's when I lost my father. Don't follow in his footsteps. I ran away. I couldn't stand seeing him like that, a slave to the stone. So I ran. Free at last. Considering that the game is 18 years old, it Funny really holds up. Shard. How could I have known that it was Nethysite? And then, of course, I met you. It's a good game. All that running, and I got nowhere. How many more times am I going to say today that this game is 18 it's years time old? To end this. <laughs> I've cut my time to the past. <laughs> It's hard to leave the past behind, I know. To be fair, this is the remastered version of the Zodiac Age, but still. I mean, still... Considering... Even as a remaster, from the visuals, it still holds up like an actual PS4 game that it released alongside of back then, uh, back in 2017. I must admit, I find it. Like when, when, when the re uh, PS4 version came out, you could have sworn that it was like a current gen title from the visuals. The choice is yours to make, but don't give your heart to a stone. You're too strong for that, princess. I... I pray you're right, Balthier. OK, 
Okay, I bounce. Armor. Professor Swine. Remedies. And Faraga. A bit of menuing. This is our final license menu. So for Bosch we get some licenses for any of the future equipment he will still pick up. Wait, this is the last licensing you have to do in the run? Yes. Oh wow. The gun you don't need that many licenses, it's really the tank and the thrusters that need licenses. Yeah. I'm surprised that it's done so soon. Kind of surprised, but I, I mean, I'm not complaining. A uh, bit of extra HP for the mages, and we teach them Firaga. And then Ash also needs to learn oil. And a channeling for her and magic lore because yeah, well. Of extra HP for Pinello. She also needs to learn to use Faraga. Get this magic ore as well. Okay, that's licensing done. Yeah. We do more. Uh, he wears Fezzin Natsuke now, that makes his potions more efficient. Uh, our casters now used to use. Uh, flame stuff because there are no casting flame spells. Uh, Faraga. Uh, Penelo got Sage's Ring, which makes spells cheaper. And yeah, now he also needs to change the gambits to make sure they're casting Faraga. Okay, I bought those remedies so they can actually use that if there's statuses that we want to see cured. Bosch uses Phoenix Downs if someone goes down, and also we don't have potions anymore, it's now fully on high potions. Then we can continue onwards. Says second obligatory hunt. Boy wants to kill this and en enemies that he's thrown this child's picture from. I'll see them soon enough. But we need to accept the hunt because that also gives us the key to progress to the next area, which we need to go through to each of ladies. The Mandragora's quote unquote hunt isn't a hunt per se, but it just looks like a hunt. It just looks it's... like a hunt? Okay, maybe it's not an official hunt. We, we don't get it from the board, we just get it from the boy, but... Yeah, it, it's not an official hunt, that's why when you go to uh, your hunts thingy in the, uh, in the clan primary, you don't see Mandragoras there. Ah, okay, then it's really not an official. Are you sure this rabbit hole's really the way into Arcades? Better a hair because uh, a the a actual trap. hunts have like then again, either good drawings or they look something the the city, like an actual against? enemy. We have a proper drawing, not a child's drawing. <laughs> yeah, because the Mandalorian's thing is just the yeah a child's drawing. Our names may be notorious, but our faces But you can still see it as a hunt because true, after true. you defeated the Mandalorian, you can go back to the kid and you actually get a reward. It's like a thousand kill and three remedies. Yeah. Not that we're going back, we don't have time for that. 
Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's see them under bells. Mandy's, where are you? <coughs> the enemies look so silly. I do like that the Final Fantasy series just sometimes put silly stuff in there. I mean, you can't have like over the top serious stuff all the time. Because if you do, then uh, it just gets hard to enjoy if you don't have like light moments to contract yeah. the dark moments and we try to kill them with fire essentially and hopefully if there's many of them together then the spells will hit multiple enemies ideally we can catch them when they're multiple close together okay and that was wonderful for us with fire shall fire be repaid That was quick. The ghost fell up. It's such a silly enemy. It's great. I love how the Onion Queen or Onion Knight had its eye closed. That's pretty funny. <clears throat> also, I think... I think 12 is one of the very few FF games... ...where you don't always have to have one specific character in the party. In 7, you always have to have Cloud in your party, unless you're in a story point where Cloud is not in your party. But otherwise, you always have to have him in your party. I think same goes for 8, but I'm not entirely sure anymore. But in 12, it doesn't matter. As long as you have enough characters to switch them out the way you like, you can have them the way you like. Yeah. Which was not the case for other games. Which I think feels really good for 12. I mean, in 10 you can also switch freely. And 13 wants it to open up. Okay. Also, st still have enough MP left. And also, I went over an MP regeneration trap, so the mages are back at good. Oh, oops. oh no, I have two of them. I hate it when there's two. I don't think I can properly... So the problem when there's two there is I need to do the setup for the next fight in the area after them. And that's not very well, good to do when there's enemies that are trying to attack you. Uh, do you already have your gunners? Um, they're down. not equipped yet. Do this. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I'm sleeping. Maybe that's the way to approach it right now. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen. Usually there's only one. There's two again. I mean, I can yeah. try it. If, if indeed gunner threats is a thing that works already. Why not? I don't know. I haven't run this. It's okay. something I would test. I mean... Can you see if that actually works? It's not a bad idea. That's what's something that goes already slightly wrong, of course, and they're not in adrenaline. We'll just see how good this works. Okay, it's not bad. It was not a bad suggestion, actually. Okay, now I can properly set up. So, 
problems require modern solutions. I want to do the cast on self strats again. So reflect on everyone. Decoy on Bash. And then go against Arimon. Yeah. Ash starts casting directly so we deal with the copies because Ariman starts making these copies. Oh, of course. I need to throw an elixir on Ash to because she ran out of MP. That's quite normal in this fight that that's necessary. And now should just finish it off. Okay. That was Ariman. So I pick up two elixirs during this run, and one of them is typically used here, because Ash tends to run out of MP. But Bernardo has the Sages, uh, what's it called, thing that, that makes her spells cost less. I think it's just Sages Ring. Sages Ring, yeah. So she takes a bit longer before she runs out, but Ash typically runs out, so you need an elixir for that. Um, so I use a float mode because in the next hallway there's traps, and this way we float over the traps and don't have to deal with that. It does look like Bosch has Doom, but I think we can still get quite far through this next area before Doom actually runs out, which should be fine. It was just a dumb counter reaching zero. I think it did just barely made it. Bosch lives. Let's go. Ooh, smells less like a capital, more like a sewer. Even empires have need of sewers. The runner from Arcades proper pools here. Those who lack papers to live in the city itself. The mighty who have fallen, and the fallen who would be mighty. Their eyes never leave Arcades. I guess it must be a lot nicer than this place. Oh, to be sure. Arcades reeks of a different filth. Let's be off. We can follow our noses to Draclaw. Up to a guy that has 
luckily find a bag of coins somewhere. Which will be relevant soon. Well, the guards don't let us pass. When we talk to the guards, we're getting in contact with a really odd fellow. This odd fellow is called the Jules, <clears throat> and is a quite a peculiar character. As he tries to sell us information, and he's like, Oh yeah, if you give me, let's say, 1500 gil, I think it's 15, yeah, 1500 gil, I will tell you what to do. And you already have information that he would have told you what to do with it, uh, that he would have told you to get. But he already had it, so he just said, hey, find the person who is missing that money. And then make sure that uh, the person who is missing the money gets the information, and then there will be a brawl. He doesn't say the brawl part, but he just says, yeah, let's see what happens then. Yeah, and the guy who missed money was like, hey, that other guy stole my money, so he's upset. And the fight breaks out, oh, and the guards check it out. Yeah. Oh, I look over there, guys! The fighting with the bare hands! And then the, the Imperial soldiers see the fighting and they're like, what is that ruckus? And uh, that is their free pass. Bad. You're gaping like a fish out of water. I'm just checking out the city. <sighs> Even if it is the Empire. You've changed, Vaughn. You were always marching to your own beat. Almost like you were impatient, even. In a good way. Maybe it's because I've seen war now. <laughs> Never imagined I'd ever come this far away from home. Hey, Lars is here in the city, isn't he? He's a tough one. I wonder how he's doing. You always wear a soft touch, Vaughn. You know what's amazing? I always thought I'd go my whole life without meeting people like the Princess or Lord Larsa. And here we are in the capital. I know. It's a little over my head sometimes. Good, Vaughn. You've come to understand the difficulties of serving royalty. Hey, I'm just along for the ride. That wasn't a complaint, was it, Bosch? <clears throat> right. Let's get moving. Hey, don't change the subject. Right. <laughs> Hope your leaves are worth it. Quote unquote, he doesn't really leave the party, but story wise, he leaves the party. It, it, it's, it's a bit weird. I think if you try to leave the tower, it's back, uh, so you don't have to have a fight without him or something like that. Oh, yeah, uh, a quick thing to add here a Zodiac Age uh, specific change that was not even in the International Zodiac job, job System is that you're now only required to get three jobs to uh, take the taxi to Zenoble. Yeah, we have to make this oh, pairs uh, of getting something from one person and bringing it, a message to the right other person. And we have to do that three times to finish this minigame well enough to be allowed to continue. In the original and in the SGS version, you were supposed to get nine, which is uh, just uh, uh, which, which was quite annoying back then because it kind of took you out of the uh, experience. Uh, I am completely. Is it all right over there? There's the avatar. 
I've never seen him over there. What? Yeah, what? why is it so far to what? the right? I was looking at the left what? first. What is he doing there? Yeah. I've never seen him there. No, where's my... I think working up a sweat guy was where the avid reader was. Yeah, was that supposed would... to be. Yeah. Almost like they switched places. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But we got there. It's fine. But they weren't exactly in the place where I suspected them to be. What makes it worse, in the original PS2 version, at this point you're actually on a traveler step count, so you cannot burn too many steps. Whereas here, it doesn't matter that much in terms of burning steps, but on PS2 it does matter. Yeah, here the steps take time to, to do, but otherwise it's fine. Traveler is long behind us. of the Senate have been quelled, Your Honor. Our forces sustain but light casualties. You have leave to withdraw. One detachment will remain here to guard Draglaw. My Lord. Do you think they're on to us? It would seem not. Though this will make our task more difficult still. Yeah, that basically discuss of uh, well, Bofia is like, hey, why, why did you take so long? I did give Jules some jobs to give you, and then they actually found out that, that well, Jules is taking advantage of the situation. I don't think I've read what they, what the two of them discuss in like probably over ten years. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what they're discussing. It's been so long since I've read this. Perfect. And now on our way to the Draclor Laboratories. Yes. Yeah, at least Jules did arrange the taxi ride to that, uh, I believe. See, that I don't even remember. strange. There are supposed to be guards here. Maybe you were just lucky, huh? Maybe you're just optimistic. Something may be afoot. We proceed with caution. No time for caution. Step to it. Sid's chambers are on the top level. Visitors. 
ones lacking manners by the look of it. Someone attributed the sight. The Yacht de Four, was it? Six years, and ever since you got back at this. What madness found you there? Hmm? Ah, uh, I'm up, Max. Drop bulkheads fly the night. Be to it! They found us. These earlier visitors, more like. We should lie low for now. No, we'll use their confusion. We need to find Sid now. So, here there's red and blue doors, and they can't be opened at the same time. So, we have within these little rooms these uh, switches we can press to switch uh, over which of the two is open currently. Also for this area, I prefer to actually also have Arsh and Panetta out, even though it's usually only running with Bosch. And the reason is because I need to activate elevators and open doors a lot. It's uh, Bosch can get busy with either blocking enemies or needing to throw high potions and such, and it can be really nice to have another character you can switch to to do the object interactions for you. Oh, Bosch is too busy with other stuff. Uh, mostly, whenever Bosch gets busy, you switch up to Arsh for a little bit. And I lost a chair. Oh no 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 no! Uh, can someone activate the switch in time? Just okay. No. Well. Yeah. This this portion can be uh, a bit much. There's a lot of soldiers at the same time. At least we have how to save. Let's try that again. See if we can. Yeah, this part is pretty ruthless. Especially because you just get ambushed by so, so many soldiers. And they can all instant attack if they want to. Yeah. Like, you're really getting ganked up again. And you just need to activate the elevator before you die. Which now worked out. Have the next boss soon as well, in which we actually start make use of the gun uh, users, uh, both here and friend for damage, and still bashes the tank. And here we encounter a person that we have heard much about throughout the story, but we have not yet seen. Judge Zekt. Yes, a valuable man, one I'd sooner not lose. Yet he knows too much. I know what I'm doing. Watch for health. Okay. And now I do a little trick with the equipment. 
because uh, from and buff you have the adrenaline ability that makes them deal more damage if they are um, on low HP and you can do a trick with the equipment that because their base HP is so low we have bought equipment for them that increases uh... it's a bit difficult to menu and explain at the same time I, I, I'll, ex I'll explain it uh, so the thing is their base HP, because they're so low level, and because they don't have any licenses but that increase their HP, their HP is so low that once you have their, uh, your equipped, they will have like, I don't know, a thousand, or well, not a thousand, but they will have a lot more max HP, and if you remove the equipment with the extra HP, you will go back to your base HP. But then, if you equip it again, you will your character will be in your uh, base you HP because that was the last time you had max in HP, in and then your max <laughs> HP gets uh, increased again due to the equipment, try. and thus it will automatically be man. put in critical, which is exactly what we want. Pirates, gun of the skies, what brings you here? Yeah, so we just have to do a small equipment menu and then they're back in low HP. That gives them the damage boost from their damage, indeed. I thought you were above this. Hmm? What's that? The Princess of Dalmasca come to visit. Hmm. She's not entirely without merit. A test of sorts for our princess? Huh. You're a babbling fool. A trial for a Shalia Banargan Dalmasca! You lust for the stone's power, do you not? <sighs> Lend him not your ears, my lady. He means to use you. <sighs> <laughs> Manufactured nethersite, like Bergen. How could you do this? How could you fall this far? <laughs> Always hiding behind your toys. Pity if anything were to happen to them. I also want to close, stay close to Sid because after Decoy runs out, runs out now, Sid will attack the closest target. So that way, even after Decoy runs out, the gun users are safe. The gun users are extremely squishy. They they die whenever they get hit by anything. So we just have to prevent them to never get hit. Easy. Vena, you shouldn't have. This creature. No, so this you is your have. Vena. A Shelia Benargan Dalmasca. Just how far will you go for power? Does your lust for nethersite consume you? <laughs> am I right? I am, aren't I? A worthy daughter of the Dynast King. You would do well to go to Giruvagan. Who knows? You may receive a new stone for your trouble. Your words mean nothing to me! The reins of history back in the hands of man. I do make for Giravagan. Give chase if you dare it. Hate it when he does that. Mayhaps you think me remiss, the Lady Ash of Dalmasca? The 
is Sky Pirate Rethos at your employ. The Imperial Senate, powerless to resist House Solidor's brutal purge, was dissolved. Vain Solidor reigned supreme over the Empire. Though this upheaval shook the Imperial Bastion to its foundation, these developments were, to say the least, welcomed by her military. The authoritarian rule of the judges, in tandem with the impending threat of Rosarian invasion, served to foster camaraderie among its ranks. For our part, the resistance mustered strength in the border skies, making ready for the task ahead. A war to decide the doom of Ivalice would soon be upon us. Squads Flame Tongue and Ugrenex are away. All ships reporting in. They're breaking to begin ship to ship maneuvers against us. All hands, full ahead flank. We shall make ready to repel their attacks. Counter air. Track them as though they were the enemy. Counter air, to your stations. A dispatch from Naldoa Command, Excellency. The Sky Pirate has left Arcadian airspace. He makes for Balfenheim with the Lady Ash and her party. It is good to know the Lady still lives. But what of our bid for the stone? Wait the stone or without. Our resistance should prove an even match for the Imperial Army. These weeks of training have honed our edge. I pray it is sharp enough. They choose to supply the resistance, yet raise not a sword in aid. What city could do this? A city of men without countries, pirates of the sea and of the sky. Few are they who would fain lay down their lives for a friend, let alone a king. The Marquis, he is set on war? The time approaches when he must make his position vis-a-vis -vis the Empire clear. When he helped you off the Leviathan, he spited the judges full sore. He cannot sit in idleness and expect to avoid a reckoning. The Marquis shares my distaste for war. Yet, if it comes to it, he will show no quarter. For the time being, we will continue to train the Resistance Army. Enough power on our side, and even Vane may see the appeal of the treaty table. Yet Vane holds the Nethysite. What makes you think he would treat when he holds such power? Power enough to sink the Leviathan. All the more reason for me to support your infiltration of the capital. You said it yourself. The Nethysite is a powerful weapon. I would have you acquire it for me. I have not said I would give you the Midlight Shard. If there is no stone, I would have to look elsewhere for aid. Then you would ally with Rosaria. As I must. Failure is not an option. It's just what Vane wants. He lures the Rosarians and the Resistance to the field, then crushes both with the Nethysite. I think not. Sid has a stone. We grab it and smash it to pieces with the Sword of Kings. Vane will be left holding nary a thing. Time is short. We follow Sid. He's heading towards Giru Vagan. Giru Vagan? It is told of in a song of my people. On the farthest shores of the River of Time, 
shrouded deep in the roiling mist, the Holy Land sleeps, Gurovagan. Who knows the paths, the way to its doors? Then you seek the Yoktifo. Deep within the jungle of Golmor, there is a corner of the Feywood where a mist storm surges and seethes. And that's it. Let's go. Right. <gasps> Not coming, Rivers? Forget your precious nether sight already? Sid's words rang hollow to me. I will follow another course. Ah, another lead then, is it? You're well informed. I could well say the same to you, pirate. Hurry it up, or we'll leave without you. Ah, Vaughn. I've had some of my men check on this Feywood. Let's ask what they found. Okay. Thanks for the help, Brothers. <laughs> Fly first, ask questions later. Your apprentice is more pirate than you. I don't have an apprentice. Princess Ash, I would hear your heart. If Dr. Sid has spoke the truth, you may well be rewarded with more Nethosite in Giruvagan. Tell me, do you still desire the stone? I desire its power. I want, yet I also fear. I must protect Elmasca. I can't afford to fear anything. Do not forget Nabodis. That is my only counsel for you. Yeah, basically Radis is saying weapons of mass destruction bad. We've seen what has done to Nabodis. We don't get to see Nabodis <clears throat> in this run. But uh, in uh, different categories where we go to, uh, where we do side content, we go to a place called Necrohall of Nobodies. And as the name suggests, um, Necrohall means the hollow death of something. Necrohall of Nobodies means the, the em basically the empty husk or the lifeless hollow Nobodies end. It shows the aftermath of what the uh, Midlight Shard was it or Dusk Shard? I, I don't remember which one. I think Midlight. Uh, exactly. I, I think it was Midlight Shard, yeah. Which Red Oz back then, as Judge Zekt used to absolutely Ray Kavik in uh, Nabudis and absolutely destroy everything. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm selling all unused uh, equipment because uh, we want to upgrade our guns. So now we buy the uh, guns we'll use for most of the rest. Buy two Spica, so that's two guns for two gun users. And we also do an armor upgrade for uh, yeah, the headwear upgrade for Bosch. The guns we bought are actually quite powerful, like endgame fights to go by pretty quickly. And we also buy um, Phoenix Lives Goods. Uh, also buy a bunch of explosions because that will soon also be a good way of uh, keeping Bosch healthy. This is the main reason why we need so much money is for both these expensive guns and for all these explosions. And this happens to be the fastest teleport stone location to where we need to go next. Especially as we can get a chocobo here.
And this is as far as the juggler takes us. And because the area gets hazy, I really like to use the overlay map here, which the TTA has. But even though the minimap is hazy, we will just have a good map. Then we have our next boss, Rafflesia. And Rafflesia doesn't like characters that throw Phoenix down, so Bosch will actually use a Phoenix down at the start on himself, which causes Rafflesia to focus on Bosch. And then we bring in the gunners, which we don't want to bring in right away because sometimes can, Rafflesia can do some nasty status stuff. That was Rufflesia. Easy. Here I want to get a chest with the Domain Calvados. Domain Calvados, uh, um, if you throw the Domain Calvados on someone, that person has bravery for a little while, which uh, increases damage that that character does. Can you maybe explain about the shrine navigation? So Feywood has this uh, <coughs> has this navigation thingy where only if you go where the quote unquote oasis pictures are within those shrines, you will be able to successfully get to the entrance of Gidovay. Uh, as Fran foreshadowed in the song or the lullaby or whatever it is about Peter Wagon, she even said something along the lines of you have to seek the entrance uh, of Kiro Wagon by going through the uh, by going through these shrines and see for the correct path and then you will find the entrance and this is what Madame is in right now, seeking the correct path and then Going through this part of Gyrovagan. Yeah, I want to kill a few enemies here because I want to create a safe area where Arsh can summon. Because this door openly opens if you have Elias out. And if Arsh dies before you open the door, then, then the summon gets dismissed. So I want to create a safe area for that. Shoutouts to Belias. This store is the only reason why we ever have to uh, purchase a uh, summon license in the entire game. Yeah, although in this run we also saw him duel up against Vosler earlier. That is true. That is very true.
On the farthest shores of the river of time, shrouded deep in the roiling mist. What is it, Fran? The mist runs thick here. Like on the Leviathan? Do not worry. I will behave myself. The mist here is cold. I sense something like the shadow here. Fena. It appears Sid has yet to arrive. We'll lie in wait for him here. So we're not going inside? Not unless you want to end up twisted. Like the old man. Something there. What is it? She can see him. Let's follow her. Now enter Kilo Vegan. Yeah. Now in Kilo Vegan, before we can enter the actual part of Kilo Vegan, Madalon is going to fight an yet another boss called Daedalus. Daedalus loves to use haste and dark gun. And if I'm not mistaken, you're just using gunners, and uh, that's that. Yeah, it's again gunners, so I. Uh... Want uh, protect and decoy on our tank Bosch, so he's the one that gets attacked and also has protect to well protect him. And otherwise, I need to make sure that uh, Bosch is away from the gun users because these spells that Daedalus cast can can hit multiple characters if they're too close together. And I wanted to hit only Bosch. But yeah, most of the fights right now are just gun users. Which go by pretty quickly. A lot of these fights are even faster than regular any percent, I think. That's how good guns, uh, how much damage guns can do in combination with Adrenaline and then also Berserk. And that's Daedalus. In certain other categories, Daedalus can be quite dangerous, but uh, yeah, this was uh, not really that difficult. It was not dangerous at all, no. Now, despawning. Oh yeah, despawning. Uh, so, Final Fantasy XII has something that has a very interesting despawning mechanism. Um, I think it's mainly because <clears throat> how the game saves memory, or should I say, uh, doesn't use memory uh, quote unquote all the time. So the, what the game does is, um, it only has uh, stuff spawned which are in like close proximity to you like at all times. So anything that's on the minimap and a little bit further um, off the minimap is spawned at all times. And stuff like uh, hunts, those are also on there all times and cannot be despawned. And I think rare games can also not be despawned, if I'm not mistaken. But everything else, like every other normal enemy, as soon as you switch character who's like farther away than that distance I just mentioned, which is like a little bit farther than... Uh, what the minimap border indicates. If you switch between uh, them and the other character, uh, the enemies do despawn. Because that's how the game saves memory, by just not having too many enemies um, visible 
or spawn at the same time. And to do that, Metal uses a too far warp technique. Uh, so the too far warp technique is uh, something that is used in uh, most challenge runs. Or, well, not most challenge runs, but the challenge runs that cannot really use a mobilize. So what is done is you use an item on the character that runs away. And once the item is in action, you use another item. And you make sure that, uh, that the character that runs away runs far enough away. That once the other character tries to use the next item again, in the upper left corner it says, Oh yeah, uh, Ash or whoever you're using tries to cast blah blah blah. But the person she started to cast it on is too far away, and thus is not able to cast it, and yeah, thus does not walk towards the character, and just stands still, and that's exactly what we want. Which yeah. can be tricky. Yeah, I did it with Cure and Ash, so Ash was trying to cast Cure on Bash while he was already too far away, and that made her stand still while trying to failing to cast Cure, basically. And that creates a loss of distance between Bosch and Ash, and then Bosch runs through the area, and then here and there I switch over to Ash and directly it's back, exciting. and that despawns the enemies. Exciting. You are not troubled by the unknown? Who can say what lies ahead? We may encounter the very creator. And the enemies here are quite dangerous, so being able to despawn is very useful. Yeah, I don't know what we'll find. I like it better that way. Especially if they have some of them then inflict the things like stop that's it's just very nasty. I think I'm actually going to touch the crystal because I don't like the sap status on Bosch. I want the fresh why not? Run if she has time for that. Don't forget to put her into uh, critical HP again. Yes, I do need to do that. There's the fresh box as well. Okay, good. Indeed. I will uh, unequip them and then later equip them to get them back in the threshold indeed. So, I want them. Um, picked up two domain Cavaduses now in total and just picked up the second one. We use those on themselves. Marsh should now use explosions for healing himself, especially this next fight is going to do a ton of damage. So explosions is now what we need to keep up. Damage we take. Um So the next fight that we're going to do is uh Tyrant and Tyrant is, I think, it's the very first enemy that reaches 100,000 HP. And something specific or special about Tyrant is that uh, during the fight you cannot use techniques, uh, which doesn't really matter. Uh, Traveler doesn't really do any damage. Uh, you can't steal anything from him anyway, so that doesn't matter either. Um, what's sick? Gary, though, is that Tyrant deals a ton of damage, loves to use Sonic Fangs, uh, which can uh, cause a 5% chance of instant kill, and he loves his instant attacks, which are just really fast, and deal a lot of damage. Yeah, I also, also needed to use a Dispel Mode to double my max HP, because I really need the extra HP on this fight that I get from that. <clears throat> It was Tyrant. Well, I need, really need to be buffed up a lot, especially for the dead damage. So I also got the previous from the Domain Calvados on top of all the other stuff. Uh, the Berserk going on, the Adrenaline, the good guns. And then a Dispel mode also to get rid of his buffs. And having Bubble and Protect on Bosch to make sure he can actually handle these attacks and throw X potions now.
yeah, and that was Tyrant. And next up is everyone's absolute favorite dungeon in the entire game, by far. <laughs> it is the Great Crystal. Yeah, I've done it enough times that I know pretty well where I need to go. Well, it can be a base one when you first encounter it. Also, the girls can be dangerous. The girls were the nice. Are a nightmare. The curls are a nightmare with their hell blasters and mind lashes. Yeah, only one disabled that was actually pretty nice. Can't complain about that. Like, have you been experimenting by having Arsh out? Because sometimes so much nasty stuff gets done to Bash that it can be nice to have someone else to quickly switch over to. But there it wasn't actually needed. Yeah, you have to activate the right switches to get rid of some barriers, and I just know which one I should be activating. And these ones I actually like to just kill with the gunners. Especially once I want to start picking up some chests. The chests are for money. To buy more explosions, basically. Make sure we have enough stock to have uh, stuff for the final dungeons. Never have enough explosions. So the gimmick of this part of Great Crystal is uh, there are these Capricorn gates, which seal off the way where we actually have to go. So the idea is to just find those like pedestals where you can disable those gates. And then run back where you actually have to go. And that's basically the entire extent of what you have to do in the mandatory part of Great Crystal. Yeah. Also, pick up one optional chest here. That's the ninja gear. This is armor that we'll use on Bosch. It gets a bit of an upgrade there. So the other day, I was a little bit bored, and uh, since I was sick, I wasn't like not sure what to do, couldn't really practice or anything. So I just booted up Zodiac Cage and uh, did a bunch of trials. And with the money I got from trials, the, the thing is, you can have an equipment on Are called right? Cat of Your Hood. I'm fine. And Thank you. When you have that equipped, all the license points get is turned into money. Side? I and wonder. with that, I went through Trials like 10 to 15 times to Trials 95, I think. Or, no, 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 Trials 97. <clears throat> and every time it. I did that, I had like 15 million gil at the end. Like, you get an absurd amount of money if you go through Trials. With six characters having cat ear hooded on. Okay, and uh, we're now going to uh, Shemazai. <clears throat> yep. This one will be pretty quick as well. The gunner strats are really fast. So, again, I want to off some bush. Those as well. So, I want to get the ninja gear I just picked up and also the bubble belt now. I now, bubble belt will now all double the max HP for these next fights. I should be reapplying Bacchus' wine to front as well, it looks like. We'll do that at the start of the fight. 1000 HP sure will come in handy. This is fine. There. So I want to pick up the chests in this fight, which is a haste cam mode and a reverse mode. Oh, that was from. That's probably because this fight was slowly, slightly slower because I'm supposed to try to box mine before the fight rather than during. 
Oh, that's fine. Oh. I mean, they don't... The gunners don't really need LP anyway, do they? No. No one needs I mean, LP no. anymore. Yeah. So LP is not really an issue anymore. Yeah, if, if a character works... is dead at the end of the fight, it's fine. We just want to win the fight and then it's all good. I think if it were any other category, I think this would be a problem. But since you said the last thing you did was Fawn Coast, it doesn't really matter. The gunners are fully set up in the, the menu in uh, Jahara after we spend all the trials license. That's how lo loose their requirements are. Like the main LP stuff is really for getting the mages and the tank set up. If, if not for having to have good enough mages and tank, we could probably do with less trials, I guess. But yeah, I did also pick up two chests during that fight. The haste can modes cost haste on everyone, which makes them faster. But that will be good to use during a, at some point. And the reverse mode, which reverses the effects of healing and damage on the character. Which uh, I will at some point use in Bash during one fight. Which essentially renders him invulnerable for a short time while that, that effect is active. Fear not, Princess of Dalmasca. We, Ocuria, have chosen you, and you alone. Ashalia Benarg and Dalmasca, we see your heart desires power, and power most holy shall we grant. Seek you the sun Christ, slumbering star. In tower on distant shore, it dreams. The mother of all Nethysite, the source of its unending power. The Dynast King, his fellow shards coarse trinkets cut from sun Christ's light. Such power exists? In times that are long passed away, we sought to save this Ivalice, and chose Wraithwall, the Dynast King. He took the sword, and cut the crist. Three shards he took from its gilt grasp, and so became the Dynast King. His words and deeds run through your veins. That's why I was given it, the Sword of Kings. The treaty held with kings of old is but a memory, cold and still. With you, we now shall treat of you, to cut a run for history's flow. Now take this sword, this treaty blade, a curian seal, mark of your worth. Cut deep the crest, and seize your shards. Wield Dynast King's power. Destroy Vanar. But Vanar? Vanar's an Acurian, a being like you. Vanar is a heretic! Uh. The Nethersite is ours to give to chosen bearer, or to none. The heretic trespassed and set the rose of knowledge in man's hand. With imitations they profane. It is anathema to us. We give you now the stone and task. Administer judgment. Destroy them all. Judgment? <gasps> Destroy them all. The Empire? The hues ever skew. Histories weave. With haste, they move through two short lives. Driven to there by base desires. Toward waste and wasting. On they run. 
Undying, we are Kyrian like the path for wayward sons of man. Oft did we pass judgment on them, so that Ivalice might endure. Eternal, we are history's stewards, to set the course and keep it true. The Chosen is our hand, our fist, to let live some and crush the rest. Princess, you have been chosen. Take revenge against those who stole your kingdom. Fulfill your role as savior. Attain to your birthright. What's with these Akuria? What gives them the right to tell you what to do? Will you take revenge, as they ask? Huh? We could not see them, but we heard the Akuria speak. They may be gods, but we are the arbiters of our destiny. Your Highness, I am against this. The Empire must pay, but destruction... Um... Does anyone know what happened to Dr. Sid? Wasn't he saying he'd be here? He should have arrived by now. And I should have realized by now. He's not coming. He laid out the bait and we bit. Remember what he said? He wanted Ash to get the stone. He wanted that all along. That's why he flaunted his nethersite and reeled us in with his stories about Gitta Vagan, all to bring Ash to the Arcuria. But wait, if we got a hold of the Nethysite, wouldn't that be bad for the Empire? Maybe he wants to see what happens when foes with Nethysite collide. That'd be just like Dr. Sid. I will search out the Sun Crist. History is built by our hands. That's his favorite line. He'd never stand by and watch the Acurious Stones shape things. So, he was talking to Venar all along. He wasn't mad at all then, was he? Restore Dalmasca's sovereignty and make our amends with Lady Ash. It's the only way to avert war. It is a war of necessity. Your Lady Ash herself is bent on it. She desires it above all else. She will not rest until her revenge is full wrought. I fear you misread her intent. She would sooner shun war than embrace it. You are young, Larsa. And you presume beyond your ken. Then let us look closer. Judge Gabranth. I would have you seek after the Lady Ash and judge whether she makes overtures of peace or war. Yours shall be the eyes of the Empire. And should I espy war, I am to put her to the sword. Is that your wish, Excellency? It will not come to that, I am sure. I have faith in her, faith in you both. On you, Gabranth, shall I wager all our fortunes. As you will. That so sweet a child could be your brother is hard to believe. Larsa is as he should be. What's that, Vanna? Ah, taken the bait already, have they? Splendid. The Ocuria have given the princess her treaty blade. The gods have chosen their scribe to write history as they deem fit. Yes, and she with fresh nethersite to aid her. 
Bah, to hell with the Acuria and their stones. What good? A power that cannot be harnessed. Warbles best suited for study, no more. <sighs> we conquered two kingdoms that you might study these baubles. Oh, I am grateful for the sacrifice. Without it, manufactured Nethersite would have eluded us. An unrivaled weapon, I warrant you. <sighs> Tell me, Venar, have I not been an apt pupil? My counsel did but guide your able hand. Through power of man, the stones did you perfect. Yes. So much accomplished in six fleeting years. Man's fervor or all obstacles prevailing. Our lives are much too short. You undying might waste long centuries away, but we, I fear, cannot. Just so. Had we more time, we might have availed ourselves of more prudent measures. Your greatest work still lies before you. Not lightly will the Acuria allow you to wrest the reins of history from their grasp back into the hands of men. Indeed. What claim does Garen have on history's reins? Seated on throne immortal, rent from time. For your ascendance, vain, I offer prayer. May you attain all that which is your due. Attain it I shall. For too long have my deeds gone unrewarded. In tower on distant shore dreams the sun, Christ. Do these words mean aught to you? Didn't Redda say he was going to follow some other course? Maybe you found out something that can help. I'd rather stay out of that Sky Pirate's debt, thank you. What's wrong with Redis? I mean, if you can't trust your own kind, who can you trust? You're an expert on pirating now, are you? Okay, time to go back to Balthenheim. Back to Balthenheim and talk to Redos. I don't think we or we get to know that he's Judge Zekt until I think the top of Pharaohs? Yes. Phoenix Downs, check in on Phoenix Downs, explosions. Sure, I have plenty of items for the upcoming dungeon. 20, 27 Phoenix Downs and 50 explosions should be more than enough. Yes. Ships in the water. Send fishing dories if need be, I care not. Glossair engines are as good to us as sky to a fish. Leave what boats have founded. I want souls saved, not driftwood. Our armada ran afoul of bad water near the Ridderana Cataract. All engines stopped a sudden. Becalmed. Trouble with a mist thick as death, it seems. Those seas are yarked. I expected airship trouble, not a fleet foundering midst the waves. Tell me of what happened in Giruvagon. From the lay of your eyes, I measure all did not go well. Sid, was he false as I feared? Yes, but we may have caught a glimpse of his true intent. We may now know what it is that Sid searches for.
So the day-affected Nithocyte was only a fragment? And these Ocuria I know not and care to know even less. If we strike the Suncrist with the Sword of Kings, no new stone may be born. We say the Suncrist is the source of all Nethesite's power. If we might break it, the Dusk Shard would be as a thing lifeless. As for the manufactured Nethesite, who can say? There is another way. We use the Treaty Blade to cut a new stone from the Crist. Use that to fight the Dusk Shard and the manufactured stones. Would you like to know the best use of Nethesite? Will or nil, I'll tell you. You pick it up and throw it away. Either way, we have to find the Sun Chris first, right? Don't we? Across the sea, and a tower on a distant shore. Redis? Familiar words, Vaughn. I saw something of the sort written in some documents I chanced upon during my visit to Draclaw. The Naldoan Sea, the Ridrana Cataract, and the Pharos Lighthouse. I sent my fleet to fish out the truth behind these words, and caught trouble. Then proof is ours. This lighthouse on the Naldoan Sea is the tower on the distant shore. The strong mist that becalmed your ships is a grimmer yet clearer sign than any we might hope for. The Suncrist is there. All well and good, but how do we get there? Those seas are in Yacht, as I recall. Try putting this one in your ship. It is a sky stone made to resist Yacht. More spoils from the Draclaw labs, is it? Why not use it yourself? That's just the thing. My ship's a Bergerpen model. It will not work. But should it fit the Strahl, she'll fly in Yacht. Lady Ash, I would accompany your highness, if you do not object. I am in your care. But tell me one thing. Why do so much for us? The Nabudis Deadlands. Nabudis was your home? Nay, but a memory forever burned in my heart. And I was struck on track to yet. When he has installed. I think Redos knew exactly what he was doing, but he didn't know what kind of damage it would create when he brought the Nethesite. Yeah, I just had orders to use it, but it was the first time that such a weapon of mass destruction was actually used, and he clearly regrets um, it. Because where weapons of we mass where destruction are bad, actually. Where have we heard that before? <laughs> memory forever burned into my mind. A tower on distant shore, and about its peak a piercing mist. And in that mist, the sun crist waits. My lady, your words still sound of doubt. Pray you reach your answer ere we the sun crist. 
And? Should I choose revenge, what then? Then your woe shall be your own. Vaughn, a word. If something untoward should happen to me, you're taking the straw. Untoward? What's this about? I am the leading man. Might need to do something heroic. Don't worry, I'll show you how to fly her. I just wonder when in the story he's showing how to fly her. I mean, I guess they give some destruction, some a few instructions near the end of the game, I mean, but I mean, it happens quite quickly after the events of Pharaohs, and he yeah is really able to fly the ship like it's nothing. I think what the game tries to tell us is just, yeah, yeah it happens, it happens, you just don't see it. Don't worry about it. Okay, I'll to next buff up for the next fight. fight. Oh, and Berserker Bracers immediately spawn, which is good. Nice. Yeah, it's the standard setup, with, but now also with some extra buff items. So we also have the domain Covados for bravery and the haste can mode for haste on everyone. Otherwise, it's a fairly standard setup of protect and decoy on the tank barge. Make sure that the gunners are in adrenaline. They have door circle on. What's good about Hydro is the Hydro is very, very slow. And that's really useful. So when Hydro attacks or tries to charge us with a regular attack, we're up really. No. To make Hydro run around the, the NPCs uh, or, or the yes. other characters. Can I? Oh. I was tricked pressing pause on the difference. Maybe I could have revived, but then also I have to apply. I'm losing all those buffs again. That was a horrible start. That immediate confuse. Alright, that was of course the dark side of that. Oh, yeah. Wait. It triggered it too early, right? Triggered it when I brought out the other ones. It wasn't supposed to... Uh... <laughs> a little bit too close when I still wanted to do... Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that, that's... oops. How bad is that? Probably bad. Uh, um, now I'm not allowed to take them out, that's wonderful. So I can want to uh, hopefully this is fine. Yeah, this dying is fine. Okay, now it's fine. Is there a problem in the comment now? Oh, so, so. Whose sound is wrong? Mine or Harvey's? Or both?
Pro commentator is echo him almost got it. Yeah, I have headphones on, so it shouldn't be echoing on my side. Hey, friend. Oh, oh something quick. Yes. Okay, then I am not quite old. Lo, seeker in days unborn, God blade bearer, know you, this tower. Because that would be the obvious thing to ask with echoing. The, the ward of the three weights, soul hungry, unsated. He without power, want it not. He with power, trust it not. He with sight, heed it not. Rend illusion, cut the true path. In blood, wraith wall. The dynast king? <laughs> Does it startle you? The dynast king took his sword from the Ocuria. It was here he claimed the Nethysite. He must have known he was not the last the Ocuria would choose. He left this for you. Rend illusion, cut the true path. Words of much mystery, yet his blood runs in your veins. Perhaps it whispers to you the truth. I think I did once uh, uh, take the uh, uh, box to the roof box better than I know, hopefully. I really, really hope that one's in the dropping tire. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, also I should equip the Berserker Bracers that we just got luckily on the first try, because that's a random chest and we will just respawn that area until we get the chest but this time we immediately got it first try so that was pretty nice also black orbs okay so the uh, well brain brain which is the first, first, first area here um that ball ball if you really run uh oh 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 really run our fire close um you could use the black orbs to activate those all doors and after you can activate the whole all the cars, the door opens into the guardian for the first floor, you can say, say, for the first ascent. And that boss will be the main guardian. And the guardian will be the main guardian. Oh. Strange. But yeah, we have to still collect the third orb for the third altar and then we're allowed to progress to the boss of this level, basically. Because this is a big tower and each tower, each, each level of the tower has its own gimmick that you need to do in here. It's this collecting black orbs that drop when you kill an enemy. 
and activate them at the altars. I'm not sure if it's really on your end the uh, sound issues if I hear you normally. Okay, okay. I replug everything several times. Um, if it's still not working, then it might be a uh, issue that I myself cannot resolve. Yeah, it might be on my end recording the Discord or something, but also I'm not very tech savvy in that regard. Madelon's not only streams the game, but also plays the game and also Discord. And doing both at the same time, plus or four times speed, uh, is extremely CPU intense. And if I'm not mistaken, all the stuff on Discord is also really CPU intense. And I guess there's just gonna be one thing that takes the hit, and I think at this point, the Discord is gonna take the biggest hit. I ran out of Okay, anyway, this boss um, at some point uh, cast this perfect fencing that makes him temporarily invulnerable, and for some reason, uh, casting a rise on it works well to make him lift that sooner, which is a thing that Redis can do, so that's why we make them do. And we even make use of a second elixir to make him have enough uh, MP2. Well. Yes, I know, but I. Wait, second thingy, okay. And now, yeah, now again. Yeah, I needed to use the elixir on Redis to make him do a second cast, and then... Fine. So, for the most part, Redis will not be that useful. But he does have a rise, so he does... He's helpful in making lift the perfect defense of this enemy. Otherwise, but Redis does does not do a whole lot of damage, so compared to the gunners, it's nothing what Redis does. And that's Pandemonium. The perfect offense can be annoying, but if you know your workarounds, it's not that bad. When it gets worse, would be would be interested to know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to keep Redis dead because he he was useful for the pan pandemonium fight, but right now he will not be much much use. And next up is going to be a very special uh, part of the run, which has become in. Couple of in uh, one of the categories, one of the hardest parts of the entire run, solely because it went from a really simple and straightforward kind of uh, part of the game to one of the most difficult, because everything is time or uh, space specific, and you have very 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 small room of error. And if you lose, you lose a lot of time. Yeah. Anyway, bring pants. 
So the brain pans themselves are just these green heads that spawn parts of a bridge. And once you have enough parts of a bridge, you can cross that bridge. Later on, you will find uh, red heads, and those are called Daydars, and they will take away the green parts of the bridge. There are a few places where you can create bridges with Daydar heads, and they will create, instead of green part, a green part of bridges, they will create red parts. And once you have enough red parts, you can go through those, but Brain pants are the ones needed for the main content, for the for the story progression bridges. So we never want to fight here. But if you would do the side content stuff, if you want to do the side content stuff, is that's where you would have to uh, defeat the Daydars to uh, get to the side stuff. Like uh, I think Holy is hidden behind, or was it Arise? No, it was it was Holy. Holy and some other spell, if I remember correctly. I think it's Guminia that is also hidden uh, behind a uh, Dagar Bridge. But yeah, just going through uh, Pharaohs using the gunners to defeat the Brain Pans and the uh, Chimera Brains. There's the brain pants that we want to go and sometimes characters will die. I try to be careful with positioning to have push away from the rest because sometimes these brain pants cast spells. I don't want the gunners hit. Also, I will do a slight despawning trick here again. We have Vanos despawn uh, beacon this time. Uh, because other normally you would also have some enemy with a green flame, uh, with a red flame here, which now wasn't here because I despawned it. And here there's a very long bridge part. We need to find enough for them of, uh, to get the long bridge going. Which just means that we have to run around here until we have enough dead enemies. That long bridge there. Uh, oh, it was the um, Doom, of course. The fact that some enemies will inflict Doom also means it's quite likely that at some point, sometimes a character dies here. Which is why we stocked up a Phoenix Downs. Uh, we might already have enough to run. Yeah. Oh, and that there uh, are the gunners again. We only need one more of these brain pen scales, and that will be one that I will do much later. Otherwise, I will just keep the covers out now. Here's the last one coming up. And that's the brain pen section. And that is Brent Pen's done. But we touch the crystal to make sure everyone is in good health and such. Let's fight. The next boss. I don't think you need to pick up any more extra chests for uh, 
money, do you? No, I don't need any more money. I just need items, so I need the, the reflect commode there. And the haste commode later on. Yes, exactly. And this fight will actually use magic again. This fight is uh, slit is weak to fire, I believe. And Ash will also be applying oil for the extra boost that that gives for fire damage. Whoops, it was Penelo. Make sure Bosch remains inside so it doesn't get ideas about other characters. And that was lit. Oh, Ash doesn't even have flame stuff equipped and still does like 10,000 damage. Yeah, honestly, I don't bother with equipping the flame stuff on her. She has the blade because um, the optimize uh, thingy tends to prioritize these extra blades, it sort of brings in the treaty blade over other stuff. So I need to get them out of the way, and one of them is on Vaan because Vaan doesn't matter. And one of them is in Ash right now because if I don't have them out of the way, then whenever I want to do optimizes for the, for like the gunners, which I use a lot, then the blade gets in the way. And like if I want to have Ash to have the flame stuff here, then I would have to manually equip the flame stuff and after the fight equip uh, this blade again to have it out of the way again. So that's two extra equipment menus for not a lot of not. And I don't think it speed up the fight enough to be worth it. Also, the first thing that Ash does anyways is casting oil. Okay, next gimmick. You need to choose a thing to give up. You choose this one because this is the shortest path through, but this is one gives up the mini map. And it's completely irrelevant because we have the overlay map anyway. As the devs thought, hey, if you paid attention and you know about the overlay map, then getting rid of the mini map is the absolute minimum uh, thing to get rid of. Why have I still have these out? Be like this. We're in fleeing past enemy state. So only bash out, battle speed slow. I am quite glad that we have the overlay map for this part because it can be quite a maze. I honestly, if I would try and uh, if I would use the overlay map, I don't even think I would find the way. I actually now need the actual layout in front of me, N not the mini map. If I have the map, I don't, f I cannot find myself through. But if I know in which zone I am, and I see like the layout, I can immediately say, "Okay, we just went through this door. From here, you have to do this, that, and then you're at the end." Like, I've practiced so often without a map. If I would have a map, I think I would be more confused than without. Yeah, it's just what you use, so I guess. It's, yeah, you can probably learn to do it without a map, but I've completely learned to do it with a map. I mean, I, uh, I remember a time before TZA released, I've seen so many runs die to uh, people getting lost here. And I swore to myself, I will not have a run die on PB Pace. Because I forgot where to go. Okay, this is a fight where we also will be fully buffing up with our extra items, the Domain Cavalus. Domain Cavalus is actually something Radus brought along with him, so we have a bunch of those. Which is why we have a lot of those. Also, protect and decoy on Bosch as usual, and now uh, we're fully buffed up. Also, the haste can mode again. And I want to enter the fight with Bosch alone, 
because this next enemy will start with an attack called the whale and otherwise it, if I have the gunners out as well that will immediately kill the gunners. So I want to use the Dispel mode to get rid of his buffs. That was the whale. Now I can bring in the gunners. And now I lure Fenrir away to this corner. That way when the next whale hits, um, it won't hit the gunners because they're far away. We apply decoy because it tends to not last until the complete fight. And that's Fenrir. Also, a good thing about fully buffing up for this fight is that the fight is over quickly enough that I still have some duration left on the buffs, so I can still use the buffs for the next fight as well because they're still on. And that's the third out of actually only three, but there is a fourth one that comes unexpected. And with what I mean with uh, three, I mean it's the three watchers of the lighthouse, or protectors, or whatever you want to call it. Get the minimap back. Now we're getting to the third ascent. Yeah, and here is you need to uh, touch the correct color sigils, make it true. You make too many mistakes, then you get sent to an annoying area with lots of enemies. But of course, I know which colors I should be uh, doing. Fun fact: one of the spells that you need to get all the spells um, is behind the green teleporter that Madelon takes. And it's right behind you when after you teleport. Yeah, I also picked up the Antares in the chest for the green teleporter. It's a gun, it's a gun upgrade, so one of the gun users will now be using a better gun. I mean, more damage is a no-brainer. Yes, better gun. More gun, more fun! <laughs> this is the actually the fight where I will use the reverse mode. So, we'll actually not be taking damage this fight. And, uh, oh. Those out again. Get better gun on Fran. And you should 
Ik ga ze zoeken again. And we still have the buffs up from previous fight on uh, the gunners. So they're still quite on the fully buffed side now. Oh. Wait. Why do you equip the Feast Natsuke? Uh, well, for this fight I don't think it matters much, but it is what we use for late game to have the potions still be good. I guess. And con considering if you would have had Bubble Belt equipped, uh, he had no chance to put you uh, to give you disease. Since, yeah, but uh, Bubble doesn't uh, makes you immune to disease. Yeah, but that's, that's fine. fine. He has the reverse mode. He's not taking damage. <clears throat> reverse mode means all the damage will heal instead, so he won't be taking damage. So the disease is fine. Marshmallow. I do want to throw Dispel Mode also in this one to get rid of the buffs. And I want to use Phoenix Down. Oh, we haven't explained that yet. That delays. Uh, cinematic attacks cannot take place at the same time as other sort of animations that certain items do. And that means that if I throw a Phoenix Down before that. It's uh, Harshmal starts casting, wants to start casting Quikasha. The Quikasha has to wait for the Phoenix Down animation to be done before it can happen. And that way you can actually deliberately delay these sorts of cinematic attacks. So a lot of times when you see me throw a Phoenix Down into fights, it tends to, like, I was reviving Radis, I don't care about Radis. But the, the Phoenix not... Down is purely for delaying the cinematic attack and not because of the healing effect. This strat will be used again for the uh, first Cabron fight. Yes. And not only for Cabron, but uh, <clears throat> I think for Vo Novus as well. Bane also. First one. Hmm. Yeah, and second and first for both. Both. The din of the mist grows greater. The sun, Chris, must be near. Yeah, last month I think it's pretty cool that 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 gets skipped because from any percent I'm used to, yeah, you need to have float on so you don't take damage from an attack and such. And here we just completely skip it. Against the Empire. I mean. I know how she must feel. It's hard losing someone you care about. Something we all got in common. But you know, no matter how hard we try, we can't change the past. There's nothing that can bring them back. Still, sometimes when I close my eyes, I can see them so clearly. The illusions of the past. You think to have cast them off, only to find them years later, unwearying, unrelenting. The past can bind a man as surely as irons. Cut the true path. But will she? I want to touch this crystal, mostly because I want to have make sure or major it's or casters have enough MP for this next fight. Now those to throw me the main battles and then And upcoming are some of the best cutscenes in the entire game. You know what? I think we deserve to see the full dialogue. Yes. But normally I enter the fight with Van to, to skip part of the dialogue you will see between Grubanf and uh, Bash. We want to see the full thing, I think, for the run like this. I, so this disdain was Sun mine Christ. to bear, but I bear it willingly, knowing that I did all that I could. 
for hope. King Wraithwall stood here. With this sword, he cut the Sun Crest and took its power in his hand. But you're going to use the sword to destroy the Sun Crest. Aren't you, Ash? <sighs> Don't interrupt me, Vaughn. You want revenge? You would have me use the stone? You would have me destroy the Empire? Is this my duty? Is this what you want? I cannot. Why do you hesitate? Take what is yours. The Christ is a blade. It was meant for you. Wield it. Avenge your father. Yes, it was I who wore Bashi's face, who cut down the life of Delmasca. Lady Ash, your father's murderer is here. You and Rex! I slew your king. I slew your country. Do these deeds not demand vengeance? <laughs> yes, good. Find your wrath. Take up your sword, fight, and serve those who die before you! <clears throat> A judge magister there was. Two years passed. He took in his hand the Midlight Shard, stolen from Navratia, and used it not knowing what he did. And Nabudis was blown away. Sid ordered this of him, to learn the Nethosite's true power. That man swore never to let such terrible power be used again. He forsook his Judas's plate and his name. Judge Sect. It's been too long, Gabranth. Reach out your hand, Lady Ash. But remember, that which you must grasp is something beyond revenge, something greater than despair. Something beyond our reach. Try as we might, Gabranth. History's chains bind us too tightly. No, we cannot escape the past. This man is living proof. What is your past, daughter of Damasca? Did you not swear revenge? Do the dead not demand it? My prince, our time was short. Yet I know this. You are not the kind to take base revenge! The wrestler I knew is gone. You are our saint, Ashelia Banagan. 
You must use the Nethersite. You must be the one to straighten history's weave. I am no false saint for you to use. Ash. In all Dalmasca's long history, not once did we rely on the Dusk Shard. Our people resolved never to use it, though their need might be dire. That was the Dalmasca I wanted back. To use the stone now would be to betray that. I will destroy the Sun Crist. I will discard the stone. You claim no need of power? What of your broken kingdom's shame? The dead demand justice! You're wrong. Huh? What would change? I can't help my brother now. My brother's gone. He's dead. Even with power, we cannot change what is past. What is done, is done. Yet without power, what future can you claim? What good a kingdom you cannot defend? Then I will defend queen and kingdom both. <sighs> ha! Defend! You! You who failed Landis and Almaska! What can shame hope to keep safe? Your shield is shattered! Your oaths poison those you would protect! <laughs> Hear me, boss. Do not think killing the Kingslayer will win you back your honor. This is just peak cinema. Yeah. This dialogue, we, well, we only see the first part during normal runs. Because we typically don't have Bashin to prevent this talking back. I will bear it willingly, knowing that I did all that I could for hope. Green and strut as you like. In the end, we are the same. Bloodthirsting carrion birds. Hellbent on revenge. Now we do a phoenix down at the laser and attack again. So we don't even see the next cinematic attack because we delayed enough to have the fight before it. So you too would leave your debts unpaid. Enough of this! I can bear no more. You disappoint me, Gabranth. He trusted you. When you bared steel against the princess, you forswore your obligations to your emperor. You shame yourself, and make mockery of Lord Lars's trust. You are unfit to serve him a sword or shield, and so I release you from that service. Your presence is neither required nor welcome. Gabranth! You are only a tool of this Venar. How quaint. We are allies. The Acuria give men power as a master feeds his dog. It is meant to tame us. How well you've resisted their wile. By turning your back on their stones, you give us free hand to write our own history. And at what price? Damascus freedom for your Nethersite? I shall not suffer you to have it. The sun crisp be damned! <laughs> be sure that it is! For what other purpose do you think you brought us here? But, my lady, I would have you stay your Acurian sword. The sun crisp is glutted with mist, and so precious a thing must not be squandered. Let us use the stone! Finish this for now! Cocoon of the Sun Crest! Spill forth your mist upon this evil east! Let's see it sky be awash in it that Bahamut may come and drink his fill! Brightly burn 
their lanthorn. Casts it back the shadow of a Curian design. Testament that man's history shall be his alone. You made your nether site for this. You mimic the Acuria Stone for what? To become a god yourself? On whose shoulders better to stand than those of the would-be gods? Ah, such high hopes I once had, but you ran and ran and they with you. Alas, the hour of your return is late. Come, family, revel in the glory of my triumph! Dat was een end naar our Phoenix down to delay the next cinematic attack that Sid would do. See what the stone of man is capable of. Witness its power with your eyes. Sound free to me. It's to throw Phoenix down because the animation cannot uh take place at the same time. The full cinematic attack and the Phoenix Down cinematic attack and Fit Cinema cannot take place at the same time, so if I throw Phoenix Down it has to the next cinematic attack has to wait for the Phoenix Down has fully done its animation. And that gives us enough time to end the first phase. So now it's Fanfred time. So Fanfred is uh Sid's summon. And since Sid is creating those uh, netherite, which are just base, quote unquote, base imitations, uh, so they're not actual netherite created by the Ocurian, but uh, netherite created by Sid himself. <clears throat> so he created his own summon, which is kind of insane. And uh, Thumbfreed is a special case because Thumbfreed uh, is a water based summon. And in any percent, this guy would be a little bit more scary. But here you just use oil in Faraga and he's gone. Yeah, and for Fanfit, we actually use magic and we again use the strat of. I draw a reflector mode so everyone has to reflect again and we did again do the strat of casting on yourself, having it reflect back and that way having more copies of the spell hit the enemy. And now also on sit and that ends the fight. That was a full sit fight. And that's it? Yeah, it's a pretty quick fight overall. It's a fight that I really like in speedrun. Because it's a lot of details that you have to do well, so it's a very precise fight. If you make a small mistake, it goes really horribly wrong. So it's a very precise fight, but it also has all these different strategies coming together very nicely and fitting well together. And it's a great fight. You all use all, all your characters have a role to play in how you beat Sid and Funfleet. It's really nice.
The sun crisp bursts. You must run as far as you can. Easy, friend. Hadn't you best be off? That's what a sky pirate does. You fly, don't you? I suppose you'd better hang on then. Ash, the sword! We had to stop it! <sighs> This place. It's reacting. I've not seen its like before. Nay, never this large. Never such threat impendent. For Nabodis. Redis. Or Redis. Quite like Redis's character. Probably get enormous amount of hate for this, but I thought this death was sadder than Eris' death in 7. <laughs> also, uh, I kind of want to mention this. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think from here until the end of all the cutscenes, it'll take an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, just yeah. so the next runner is informed. Might have to inform the next runner that the, yeah, the run is happening a bit sooner than an hour and 40. Because, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah, there's still some lengthy cutscenes, but it's, in terms of yeah, gameplay, it's, it's close to the end. It's not this long, indeed. Yeah, We're going to be very underestimate, yeah. I, I would say the run is most likely like 30 minutes underestimate, is my guess. There are some lengthy cutscenes, yes. Yeah, but, but not this lengthy. If, 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 we, if we would look at an any percent run, it would be like well, seven minutes from right. now this until the end. Until the final hit, I mean. How yeah. Where we were? And it's slightly faster in New Game Minus. The New Game Minus is actually faster in, in Endgame fights. <clears throat> My lady, the war begins now. Then you were unsuccessful in stopping the Rosarian fleet? I used a variety of methods. All went according to plan until it came time to request withdrawal of our most devoted generals. In their enthusiasm for war, our great military leaders went behind my back straight to Marquis Sandor's resistance. The resistance? During training, a division of the resistance ignored their orders and disappeared. They were next found exchanging broadsides with the Imperials over old Nabradia. Why would they go there? They were asking to be found. You misunderstand. Those ships must surely belong to Rosarian division. They may have joined Ondor's resistance forces as patriots or even mercenaries, but in reality they are regulars of the Rosarian army, under direct command of our war pavilion. These fifth column has invaded the Imperial airspace and provoked a response. Unable to abandon them, His Excellency the Marquis was obliged to give his main fleet the order to attack. And the battleground is the Lamasca. Should this fight drag on, Rosaria will enter the fray. The defense of Dalmasca is their excuse, and we will have a war between empires. 
Correct. They will bide their time waiting to strike until the Empire has spent itself against the Marquis. But then he will crush them and the Marquis both between his hands. Vane holds the Dusk Shard no longer. His advantage is lost. Vane has advantages enough. He stands on higher grounds, and my birds tell me he has awoken something quite large. Bahamut, Lord of the Sky. There was a stirring in the mist, in the direction of Ridorana, I am told. Bahamut awoke soon after this. It is the mist that came before the Christ was undone. It breathed life into this Bahamut. If Rathus had not stopped it when he did, how much more mist might it have drunk? All went according to Dr. Sid's designs. Yes, the man's last great accomplishment, I fear. And so it falls to me to put an end to the thing. Vane commands Bahamut himself? He comes to Rabanasta. Then I will defend Delmask and stop this Bahamut. This is my charge. That's our charge, actually. It's our home. It belongs to us all. And my charge is to hinder and delay this Rosarian invasion for as long as is possible. I will do what I can. Ah, yes. When this unpleasantness is done, you must come to Rosaria. I will take you to the Amber Vale of Clan Margrace. Such things I will show you. Until then, I will be waiting. Wonder what kind of things he's talking about. I mean, he's hitting on even, Ash, but I don't think Ash is very. Even Balthier is disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh God, come on, man! El Cid is great. I like El Cid. Let's make our way to the Bahamut. I think 12 would absolutely be one of those games where a prequel would do so much. I think it would just add so much. Like seeing how the entire thing with Nabradia and Nabudis went down with Judge Sect. Oh my god. Sid, slain by his son. Hmm. A common tale of late. Firing solution complete. Siding is good. Release valves open. The nether sighted are critical. Show clear. Put an end to this. They have already surrendered. Let us make of this an offering. One he might see even now. The knock. What say you? The main battery stands ready. 
I beg you. Fire. this once they see that there can be no surrender the resistance must needs come at us with all they have we will answer their attack head-on and destroy them before the eyes of all Rabanaster. if you do this the people will only grow to hate you the more and should i pardon them they will only rise up yet again i do not believe they would in cooperation lies our hope. You are mistaken. You are wrong, brother. And if I am? You would best find the strength you need to correct me then. Ship sighted ahead! A score or more! The resistance fleet, my lord! Hear this! Today we write the first page of a new history. Our history. Each of you must play his part. Put down this rebellion. For Arcadia, we fight! For Arcadia! Ready on fire. Ship from above. Could it be? Uncle, it is I. I'm crossing to the Bahamu to stop Bane. What are you saying? You are too rash. Your duties come after the battle is over. If we allow them to destroy us here, there will be no after. You must assist our charge. Stop. You must pull back. Stop the stall! Hold it! I mean, wait! This is Marta Solador. I'm going in with her, so... We're fine. I got the princess covered. 
Larsa Solidor? So you hold him as a hostage? No, Uncle. He will fight with us against Vane. Leave it to us! Understood. Our fate is in your hands. <sighs> yes. I got the princess covered. Well, I should say that. We're relying on you for fire support. Give them something to think about. We'll pick our moment and make our move. I do like bounce running is best to think about what Larsa would have said. But also his conviction of being like Larsa would say that. <laughs> I don't know, it just adds that somehow so funny to me. Yeah. But also when you watch it back and already know it's it's fun. He's he's like we're watching for what like the, the, the hold on slash weights that they is like, oh what would what words would Larsa use? But yeah, for those in chat, uh, I have Unicorn Overload like literally sitting on the shelf, like behind me. But I haven't gotten around to play it. I really wanted to come back to speedrunning. Uh, then like a huge, a, a many amount of things were announced. Now my brain is like, okay, what the heck should I do? What should I do next? What should I run? What should I play? And then my mind goes back, hmm, I still have... Four FFs I still need to play from the mainline games, which are not MMOs, that I still have to play. Four, uh, eh, no, five, six, nine, and ten. And then I still have Unicorn Overload, Overlord sitting right there that wants to be played as well. Vane will be in the fortress's command tower. I saw something of the like on our way in here. I mean, of course, Unicorn right Overlord is good. It's from the same devs that made 13 no Sentinels Ages Rim. And that's one of the best if stories I've ever Vane, witnessed in my entire life. And I'm, yes, I'm going that far. Let's get going then. Find Vane wherever he's perched and knock him off. Oh. Uh, I guess I know what I forgot to do. Oh, menu? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, let's revive them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I forget that, and they stay after their guns to be cussed. That's, that's, <laughs> that's on themselves. That's, that's something that would happen to me. <laughs> that's something that would definitely happen to me. That's it has happened to me though. before. I thought I got him better at remembering, but today... The thing is, that's exactly <laughs> something that would definitely happen to me. That's why I think it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, happens to everyone. Yeah. Happens to everyone. I mean, yeah. They want to cast themselves when they have a flex on, but yeah, after all this cutscene and all this stuff, they no longer have that. Oh yeah, let's... <sighs> oh yeah, let's stop vain for Raga self. Okay, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an easy menu to forget. But it's fine now. Resistance fights their battle well. We dare not fail them. We dare not falter. Stop worrying. We just have to clean up here, and then Ash will be the queen. It's kind of hard to believe. I can't even imagine trying to rule a whole kingdom. 
A queen might always run away with the help of a sky pirate looking to raise his bounty a peg. Hmm. I doubt our queen would need the help of any sky pirates. Do you really think me as strong as all that? Who said anything about strong? You'll make it. You got good friends. Okay, next fight coming up soon. And that's the entirety of Bahamut. Okay, and the gunners again, Domenico Vados buff them up. F bravery. So you have lived. I am Judge Magister. Even in disgrace, my just reward for aiding the Empire that destroyed my homeland. Gabranth, do not blame yourself anymore. You confound me, brother. You failed Landis. You failed Damaska. All you were to protect. Yet you still hold on to your honor. How? I had someone more important to defend. And defender I have. How is it that you have survived? Is it not because you defend Lord Larsa? Silence! All was stripped from me. Only hatred for the brother who fled our homeland remains mine. Tell me, why do you forsake that which you must hold most precious? I do as I must, brother. Or is that not answer enough? <laughs> Long have I walked in hatred's company. As long so we will be using a reflector mode on the Bronf. Reason is he will soon be casting renew on himself, and if he ever if he has reflect, then that reflects off of him, and he can't be a heal on himself that way. So we prevent the heal that way. Ah. Couldn't skip the innocence. I did delay it again with a Phoenix down, this cinematic attack, but I couldn't kill him quickly enough, so you still get to see it. Same. Let this end, Noah. I have no right to be called by that name. Then live and reclaim it. Buff a bush before final bosses. Oh. Oh. Oops. Yeah, they had accidentally disabled the decoy as well. Yes, I will just do that at the start of this next fight. You want decoy on bush? I bid you welcome to my sky fortress, the Bahamut. I must apologize for my delay in welcoming you aboard my ship. Permit me to ask... 
Who are you? An angel of vengeance? Or perchance a saint of salvation? I am simply myself. No more and no less. And I want only to be free. Such a woman is not fit to bear the burden of rule. Weep for Dalmasca, for she is lost. Observe well, Larsa. Watch and mark you, the suffering of one who must rule, yet lacks the power. No. No, brother. I will not. Though I lack your power, I will still persist. <laughs> Bold words, child. So on to use the haste mode. Cards are final, fully buffed up uh, for this fight. Your lives are forfeit, and your insurgents with them. And now with haste. Alaska will again know order. For good and all, I shall bring your futile attempts at rebellion to an end. And immediately after this, like half a cutscene thing, I want to use a phoenix down to delay the next cinematic attack, and then. That ends the fight before it can do any more cinematic attacks. But that was the first train fight. Lord Brother! Larsa! Cena. Okay, no, John Cena actually doesn't have a disgusting face, and John Cena doesn't have hair. You will have much need in the hell to follow. Hmm. Yes, I will defend Lord Larsa. The hound strays. Treason bears a price. One I gladly pay. Okay. Voice acting is just peak. Okay, I need to also throw Domain Calvados on the gun users again to have them fully buffed up if not a cost of bravery. And then I also Okay, that worked out. You have to be careful because these spells go around um, 
You don't want them to hit the gunner, so you want to be careful about Bosch's positioning. But the gunners are alive, so that went well. So the special thing about Vaynovus is he has these <coughs> Sephira swords, and together with those Sephira swords, he can use specific FPV attacks. Um, <coughs> If one of them is alive, he uses a spell called Azor Wars, Azor Wardis to get all the swords close to him together. But if you end up killing all the swords, he doesn't have to use Azor Wardis, and he straight up just immediately casts the FB attacks. In this case, it's Invoilable Will. And uh, later on, he will use or try to use a. Uh, <clears throat> he will try to use a, uh, what should we call it? Uh, FMV attack called uh, Tree of Sephira, but uh, yeah, that alone, thanks with the Phoenix Down tech that we uh, used earlier, we have an effect effect used before. Uh, the Tree of Sephiroth can go off, and <clears throat> since this, since an effect was still playing, and the effect of F the FMV attack was charged later, the game has to wait until the effect that was cast earlier has to completely dissipate, until the FMV can actually go through. Yeah, it was also after this halfway cutscene thingy, the cinematic attack that. That I can prevent, but I make sure the gunners are out of the party for that one. And I make sure to reapply decoy. I had to actually bring Ash for that because things didn't line up exactly like I wanted, but he does now have decoy on again. And also Van Kass now reflect on Bash as well, which will be relevant for the final battle coming up after this cutscene. Because actually the behavior of the last boss, but what spells he cast depends on whether you have reflect or not. And we uh, want to... Also we... for the next runner, just want to add it right now, uh, it's about 15 to 20 minutes until the end screen is coming up. And the final boss is going to be done in around, I don't know, 5-ish minutes, so uh, be ready to prepare for the run. Yeah, I think we will also want to watch all the cutscenes after the boss to be complete, but... Yeah, yeah, sure, that's why I said 20 minutes. Yeah. But just so they know what they can prepare. Yeah. Bush, tell me. Next boss will be, if it goes well, very boss. quick. The idea is that you want to make sure that the gunners stay alive and try to position yourself so that the Mega Flare attack only has Bush and not the gunners. If that goes well, then it should be very fast. And if it does not go well, I have to revive the gunners. It will be slightly less fast, but still. I have failed us both. I am no dynast king. You must find another, one who might realize your ambitions. They are fulfilled beyond your knowing. The Christ is sundered. Age of stones complete. From the undying ones, the world is freed. You shall not tread this path alone. Together we go. Come. Sid be eager to learn what has happened here. 
History begins anew. Okay, one donor got hit. <laughs> and that is uh, final boss, that's time. GG. Well, no, not time. Time is at the end. Okay, I guess we can also do time after all the cutscenes, but this, uh, this is the point where I can lay down the controller and just enjoy the ending. That is the case. <clears throat> From here to the credits is like, not sure, like six to eight minutes, and then the credits themselves are ni like nine minutes. Yeah, okay. final bosses go pretty quickly. It didn't even win perfectly because Fren went down. But it's still quite quick. Congrats on the run, Madalon, from uh, my part. Thank you. Hmm. So thanks everyone for watching. It's been great to do. So enjoy, of course, the end of uh, the story. But it was uh, pretty fun to do. It actually has been a couple of years since I've watched all the cutscenes. <clears throat> and uh, since my English kind of sucked the last time I've watched all the cutscenes, I do understand certain plot points a lot better now that I didn't really understand before due to the, uh, the lack of vocabulary. Yeah, it's been a couple of years ago that I lost it a playthrough which I did uh, watch all the cutscenes. Still pretty nice. It'll just get muted in the VOD app. It'll just get muted. But only that part. Uh, both, actually. <clears throat> That they just get muted. So let's just not talk about uh, interesting stuff during uh, either of the two. Right, Fran, with me. For anyone who wants to watch at another point. Look, Bahamut's glass and rings are stopping.
This is the one cutscene the most people who run any percent of any category watch. You can fly Havan. It's so, the, the, the cutscene directly after ending the thing, so you can skip it, but why would you? Yeah, but it's it's like the one that is most known. Like almost every runner can possibly recite it at this point. They've seen it so much. Look after Lasso, will you? I mean probably the cutscenes I know better are things like the one you after Mimic Queen, because that's unskippable. You have to see that. I think I finally realized what the problem is with uh, Gabron. I think it's a mix between him actually catching the plague and getting absolutely destroyed by Sid and Vayne. I think it's a combination of both. Sir, it's this drone. She's left Bahamut. She's moving away. The drone. They made it. At last, the Bahamut has fallen. The final test is upon us. The judges shall rule us no more. Main cannon on the Alexander. What is your hand? This is Judge Magister Gabon. All forces cease fire. I repeat. Your hand is not, at least not the song before the credits. That plays in the vote. battle. Is I over. think you mean kiss me goodbye. As of this moment, we have signed a ceasefire Unless with the Shelly of an Argandel Masca. I got something Royal mixed Majesty. up. Oh, yeah. This is Larsa. But again, we completed the full game without ever getting any experience or leveling up. But it's pretty cool that we can still do this without needing the experience and without losing much time compared to any percent. Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, FF12 without taking any experience to level up. I confirm what Judge Magister Gabranth and Larsa Solidor have said here. Please stand down your attack. The war is over. But I would say this one is easier just because, well, you can defeat any enemy at any point and you don't have to worry about leveling up. I mean, compared to original, definitely. Compared to PS2, you mean? Yeah. But it's still difficult. I would never underestimate this category, never. Yeah. I mean, it's still... more difficult compared to regular new game, I'd say. But yeah, of course, still... TCA runs are much easier than PS2 runs in general. Still dusty for license points? Uh, I think you didn't, right? Hmm? You didn't do dusty for license points. No, no. I think this is the first time that Dusty has not been done. Because I think every other category that I know uses Dusty. Literally every single one. But when you don't get... There's trial mode, and trial mode is way better to get license points. So for license points you won't do it, for money you won't do it, because there's also better ways for that. Yeah, but it, it, it's still it's it, it's still funny to me that this is the only category that I know so far that doesn't do Dusty because it's not worth it. Every other category I know it does Dusty at least once at some point. Sounds like made it out. I think. Straws a fine airship, eh? What does he think he's doing? Both here. Would something like New Game Plus do Dusty? Yeah, would it expect also that there that the experience doesn't matter, so you don't do it? Almost done. I honestly don't know about Nugan Plus, but Nugan Plus is whatever, because it's Nugan Plus. Yeah. I mean, in Nugan Plus, I kind of expect it to not happen, but I mean, in an any percent esque kind of run. Dusty gives you around 980 to 1020 EXP, <clears throat> something along those lines, and three license points per kill. Yeah. It's very good for grinding levels, but in a run where you cannot grind levels, it's worthless. That's not worthless if you don't have a better option of trial mode, I guess. Mm. Because that's, I think, why PS2 would still do Dustia farming. They have to have trial mode, so you still need to get money and license points some way. Sayer 
I'm more of a... Both of you, you mustn't die. Friend. Yeah. A spoiler alert. Ash doesn't Both care here. about friend, just Both here. Or friend. She probably sees her as a rival. I mean, I mean, you know. I do like Fran. Most of us do. At least I hope most of us do. I'd be surprised if that was not the case. They barely even talk to each other. That's what I mean. Because they understand each other, they don't even have to talk to each other because they already know everything. I mean, who are not barely talking to each other? Fred and Osh? I mean, I don't think those are much talking together, but you know, you, you've been through all these fights together. You have a connection. I, I thought, for a second, I thought Phantom Knight meant a Bothier and Fran. I mean, they, they, they clearly have talked already a lot of each other, between each other, like for their right village thingy. It's hard to you meant Ash in front? When you meant Ash and Fran, well, in that case, my point is even more clear. Right, Ash probably hates Fran, but she's taking away the leading man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean... I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's another thing that I wanted to point out at Vossler, uh, which I, I didn't realize until now, but what Bothier said, yeah, uh, he didn't know that, uh, uh, like, he know, uh, something about, like, yeah, he, he didn't know that Fran doesn't like being tied up, like, wait, what did you do to her? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's some uh, really interesting information you got there, both of you. Where do you have that from? I definitely do like Buffy and friends together. I am looking forward to seeing you at the ceremony. I mean, why would you do anything else but them? And yes, Bosch is now quote unquote Gebrandt in the lore. I know he went with you to Arcades to further the cause of peace. And he's <laughs> now serving Still, as the I judge magister. And Ash soon. Which is kind of funny. So because at the start of the story, Gebrandt pretended to be Bosch. And now Bosch pretends to be Gebrandt. How the turns of table. I will keep him from harm. I promise you. For the Empire and for Damasca. You would put me at ease, brother. Sorry to leave you. Told you the most important part. Vaughn and I had been taking care of the straw, but it was stolen. We had just finished having her tuned up, too. Also, remember the scene a couple of hours ago when Balthia requested the ring from Ash? And she will, uh, he will give it back if uh, he will find something more valuable. Actually, stolen might not be the right word. If her owner wants That's her back, the ring. Not much the ring, yep. It, and the straw is gone. There's 
still plenty of time before the coronation. So Vaughn's going to pay the two of them a visit. <laughs> you should see him. He can hardly wait. I'll be going too, of course. Every good sky pirate needs a partner, right? And now the credits happen. Okay, if my memory serves me right, this should be an <clears throat> should be an eight fifty two forty I don't know forty nine or something. Yep. Let me some pictures of young characters. You get to see baby buff here. I don't know if those are concept arts, uh, art, or just things they wanted to implement at some point, but couldn't. Even though I don't think baby buff here would have been uh, something they could have shown in the span of this game. No, I don't think they ever meant to show that in game. That's just it's nice pictures they have of, of the credits of oh look when the characters were young. Mm -hmm. like we also see like a young friend with her sisters and things like that, I think. So Hab, I heard you want to submit Revenant Wings for the Final Fantasy relay, yeah? How is that going? Yeah. I hope TGA New Game Minus makes it in the relay. It's a really fun run. It's incredible to me that Yoshitaka Amano worked on this game for character design and on Nier. Automata. I still have to play near Automata, speaking of. That is an excellent game, you should play it. If there is one thing I would ever request Yoshitaka Amano if you want to see him in person and I could like any artist request, I would wish or would ask him to draw Judge Sect in his Judge armor. I don't know, that's like a, such a specific detail, and I, I just would love to see that. Yeah, a young Ash with a chocobo. Hot scene. I did not know there were two words, but makes sense. I mean, like, I see the same pictures as the people in chat. I just mind it to appreciate what I think it is, but I think it's just the characters when they're young. Both here in front and together. Young yeah. Young both here and young from. Yeah, they don't look that young here, I guess. I mean, Fran looks definitely young, in my opinion. I think the way she has her hair. Yeah, but, I mean... I think she is already over 50 in this picture. I think both here doesn't really care.
I'll sit the player, goddamn. I have no idea who those two are. Are those maybe tactics characters? Or maybe young Vossler and young Rassler, maybe? Right one could be Vossler, left one from our view could be Rassler. <coughs> They didn't look like Bosch and the Brahms at all. At least to me, they didn't. <clears throat> Is it? I'm not sure which picture you were on when you were saying this, so... The one before uh, Vane and Larsa. That, that makes sense to me if that would be uh, Bosch and Grof. Bosch and Noah. Here, in, this is, I think, friend and sisters. And they're younger. Friend Jote and Muron. She probably was already 50 in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think she was 50 in this picture. <laughs> I do not know how, how Vera age, but I do think she's younger than 50 here. <laughs> this actual young friend. I mean, you know, I mean, you know. Baby buff here. Look how cute he is. Look how Sid, look at how proud Sid is. Yeah, but then he was still good father. Yeah, he wasn't uh, consumed by the power that uh, Bna wanted. He was an apt pupil. My name is Status here. Vera again. I would think the one with the tail is probably supposed to be friend. The one with the tail? Oh, yeah, the, pony the ponytail, ah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I was about to say, wait, what? Since when do Viera have, have tails? That would be news to me. Also, in, in their case, it would be buns. Yeah. Well, they have a thingy on the armor that you have a thingy there. prequel game just give us a prequel of ff12 in general like not just friend prequel i think there is a prequel to be had with bosh and gabron like let's be all or red us the entire thing with nobodies being blown into absolute smithereens like tell me that wouldn't be insane The end. And that is that. Final Fantasy XII, lowest levels, with watching all the cutscenes in under nine hours. And now we could start a new game plus run. We're not going to do that. E G. 
Nee, dat was zo heel gek. Weer voor de cutscenes. Het was 48 minutes underestimate. Yes. I guess this is where we would really have been time. Yeah, time is basically when the end pops up. <clears throat> yes. So yeah. Thanks for the organizers for having me. This was great. Thanks Harvey for the help with the commentary. Thank you for having me. Uh, I hope I was able to uh, add uh, some commentary to it. Uh, sorry for the frequent coughing. I think uh, it was alright. I had to uh, listen to. And uh, I hope you enjoyed FF12. Um, if anyone is interested in Final Fantasy XII, we have a Discord uh, eager for new players who want to join and or learn the speedrun. So if any of you are interested in the run, not even in running, but just learning more about the game in general and want to know uh, what is up with the community and being up to date with everything, you can join the Discord. Uh, there should be a link on the SRC server. Uh, but if you can't find anything, you can whisper me, uh, even on Twitch. I will make sure that you will get access to it. I'm just trying to share the love for this game as much as possible, uh, like the next one. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I hope you all enjoy, um, and I hope to see those who are interested, um, speedrunning this, uh, the game soon alongside with us. Yes, also there is in fact a guide both for this and for the regular and a percent available of people who would, in, would be interested in uh, running the Zodiac Age. Or running PS2 version of FF12, there's stuff for that as well available. Very cool too, if someone would be interested. Can someone was me the link to the light, uh, at least for look, if possible? Of course. Yeah. And I think we probably uh, soon head it over to Top Blue and Robson Run after this. I, I guess the next runner should be ready. But yeah, thanks everyone, this was great. Thank you all for watching and uh, have a good rest of really, really long a -thon. <clears throat> Thank you.